Well, good morning, everybody, and welcome to live coverage of the second day of competition here at Nuts Corner for the 2020 Irish Karts GP. My name's Andrew Mather from Double Dash Motorsport Media. Absolutely fantastic to be with you once again here on your Alpha Live stream for today's event. And a, and a new event for us here at Alpha Live around this fantastic circuit near Belfast in Northern Ireland. Uh, two formats that we're running today, the short course and the long course. Real plethora of competition here today. Uh, but there is the circuit uh, for you, the short course. A classic kart circuit, lots of technical corners and opportunities to overtake the long course, which we'll see the super karts on later. A uh, really different challenge, but all very good. Uh, nonetheless, 300, uh, 1,320 metres for uh, one of the formats 1254 the gearbox and as i say real real big mix of classes here today we've got 11 categories racing in the 2022 irish kart gp weather uh, is looking pretty good here at nuts corner so stick around we're going to have coverage throughout the whole day uh, for what will be for all of our classes two heats and then the all important final all uh, drivers here competing for the IGP plates and uh, at the last count we have over 115 entries uh, for this year's event uh, fantastically supported by the karting community uh, in this region and uh, great to see as many returning faces uh, as I say a real mix you've got everything from some of the youngest drivers that you'll have uh, in Northern Ireland and, and around the rest of the British Isles and the Bambino categories all the way up to our senior categories uh, of both the short course non-gearbox entries the F100s the senior categories for Rotax 177 being great examples and our supercarts as well all to look forward to here today from Nuts Corner let's get ready for our first race of the day though that's coming right up So our first race of the day here at Nuts Corner on the Sunday of the 40th anniversary Irish Kart GP. It is Rotax Max going out for their first race of the day. Carl Price will have pole position. Philip Maguire alongside on the front row. Jason Hetherington and Keith Biggerstaff form up row two. And we find Aaron Walker and Johnny Clyde on row number three. Row four. We'll have Nathan Glenn and Neville Bell on it. Gary Turkington, who had a very strong day yesterday, starts this race from row five alongside uh, Pierce Murta and Zach Rogers and Ben McFall there on row six. Moving on to uh, the row seven, Gary Blair and Zach Lecky, uh, Dylan Tweete and Shane O'Leary there on row eight, Simon Allen and Daniel Conlon on row number nine. And this being one of our biggest categories in terms of entries, here's row 10, James Gilliland and Connor Smith on that one, Eamon Faulkner and Tim Clark. Forming up the 22 cart field here in Senior Rotax Max, let's have a little bit of a recap and uh, look over the results from yesterday's action here at Nuts Corner. As we say, Gary Turkington leads in the point standings at the moment, 25 points for uh, a race victory here. Uh, this weekend, 20 for second, 18 for third, 16 for fourth, and then one point off for each descending position. So it's Gary Turkington currently leading in Senior Rotax Max with 54 points acquired from three heats held yesterday. James Gilland is in second place. Dylan Tweete is there in third place. Daniel Conlon, Conlon in fourth. Ben McFall fifth. But this really is a very competitive category, and with so many entries... And a mixed grid, a random grid format across all of the heats. It's very much putting the emphasis on the drivers to race well and race clean. Uh, it's not necessarily about dominating and winning every single race that you can. But if you can keep those good scores rolling in, you know, those top tens, those top fives especially uh, across this format, you will do very, very well indeed and be in a good position for the Irish Kart GP final that we will see later on. Uh, this afternoon can get in contact with us here at nuts corner let us know who you're supporting in the uh, youtube comments that we're keeping an eye on uh hello to uh bill who's at the track right now and hello to michael burke as well a regular viewer here 
on Alpha Live, who's watching from Bathurst in Australia. It's just coming up to 7 p.m. for uh, Michael there in Australia on the other side of the world. And thank you uh, to you wherever you're watching the coverage from here today. Great to have you uh, on board. There were a couple of minutes away from the rollout of the first heat of the day. As you can say, as you can see rather, uh, the conditions very good for racing here today. Not too hot, nice and dry, few clouds in the sky. Absolutely uh, what we want. Big thanks to our sponsors of this event as well. Uh, Pit Stop NI. So, uh, do go check out Pit Stop Motors NI for their approved used cars in uh, in Lisbon. And uh, I'd say all of our classes are sponsored uh, here today by uh, a variety of supporters. So your senior Rotax uh, Max category sponsored by Nuts Corner Circuit themselves. Big thanks to them and the hosting of this event. And we should say as well, there are driver of the meeting events uh, sponsored by Keith Wilkinson of Wilkinson Design. So I'll be keeping an eye out for that for both the senior driver of the meeting and the junior driver of the meeting. A bit more housekeeping as well. Format. Heats form of six minutes plus one lap. Each category has five of them across the course of the weekend. Uh, the only exception being Bambinos. They had a time qualifying in place of one of their heats yesterday. We'll uh, bridge that when we get to it. Finals, when we get to them later on, will be nine minutes plus one lap. And you can see the carts forming up in the pit lane. Number 24 there of Jason Hetherington. 17 years of old from Glen Gormy. Started racing uh, last year, uh, did Jason. And uh, one of the things as I was doing my preparations for this event that I think is absolutely fantastic is the number uh, of stories around the paddock this weekend. A lot of drivers returning, especially for this 40th running. Uh, of the Irish Kart GP, a very special year here at Nuts Corner. Uh, but also a lot of drivers across the categories as well, not just, you know, our Bambino or Cadet categories with the younger drivers. Uh, as I say, uh, drivers such as J Jason Hetherington there, uh, starting racing only quite recently, even in those senior categories. And as I say, this first race of the day will be Senior Rotax Max. Uh, let's also run through. This will be the continuous order throughout the day. So if you've tuned in for a particular category, uh, open those ears early on a Sunday morning. This is the order that will be used for each of the three, what I like to call, rotations uh, of the day's order. So Senior Ma Rotax Max will always be first. Junior X30 will be second. Uh, Junior Rotax Max will be third. Rotax 177 will be fourth. Uh, then we go into a, some of our younger categories. IARMY Cadet will be fifth. Minimax will be sixth. Honda Cadet seventh. Uh, the F100 category, which I am really, really looking forward to seeing uh, those drivers race. F100 uh, will be eighth out there. Then the Bambinos, our youngest drivers out there, will be ninth. Then we will switch formats or of circuit. So that's all of your non-gearbox categories that race on the short course, uh, the, the tighter course, uh, to the east of the circuit. Then we go to our two gearbox categories. So 10th on the order will be the 125 supercarts. 11th will be the 250 supercarts. And once we've gone around that full rotation, we go back to the start. Unless it's, of course, the finals, because then we'll be done for the day. So keep that in mind. Jot it down. We'll keep reminding us uh, as we go through, as you see, the uh, senior Rotax Max category uh, forming up in Dummy Crit. There's number 61 of Gary Turkington, as you say, our leader after day one and three categories. Uh, the 41-year-old from Portadown. He's been racing for nearly 30 years. Took a, a, a bit of a break, uh, but from a very famous racing family, of course. And... Uh, third in the iArmy World Finals back in 2015. So very much Turkington at the front of the order so far this weekend here at Nuts Corner. We'll be looking to continue that good form across the two remaining heats for Senior Rotax Max. Uh, points from those heats will set the grid for the final. Uh, hello to Tom Corbett, who's cheering on uh, Shane. And Tom Butterworth as well, one of our 
uh, fellow commentators on Alpha Live events. Uh, morning all, sorry couldn't be there this weekend. Family duty had to call. Hope you're all sending, uh, hope you're all well. Sending much love uh, from sunny Glasgow. I don't believe you, Butters. I don't believe you. Glasgow doesn't see sun. Uh, hello to Kathleen Ferns, who's uh, cheering on Shane O'Leary as well. Keep your comments coming in, everybody. As I say, we're a couple of minutes, or not, not even a couple of minutes away from uh, the first race of the day here uh, at Nuts Corner at Alpha Live LTD across your social media networks. Uh, do give them your support and subscribe to the YouTube channel if you haven't done so already. Uh, and at Double Dash MM as well. Uh, if you join the commentary, say the commentary, we haven't had racing yet. So, uh, so we'll leave that one for now. Uh, just looking through some of the other stories in this senior Rotax uh, category for you to uh, look out for. I'm particularly interested in uh, Dylan Tuite the number 10, 20 years of age from Dundalk. Uh, very good form around here in previous years of the Irish Kart GP. He was third in uh, the last two editions. The Kart's now out for their formation laps. Just to remind you, if you're tuning in, six minutes plus one lap uh, for all of the heats here today. Be a relevant start for the drivers as well. Very picturesque circuit this, one that will test the drivers no doubt. It's got that wonderful mix of fast corners where you've got to have that commitment but also more technical parts of the course. I'll test both the, uh, the driver's psyches and also cart setup as well. So there you see at the front of the order, cart number 24, Jason Hetherington on the front row alongside Philip Maguire, the number 11 he'll be looking for. This is a good opportunity to try and gain some points. He's had a difficult weekend so far as Philip Maguire. No points on the board after three events. Looks like we are about ready to go then for the first race of the day here at Nuts Corner. Turn one tight right-hander. Whole field has made it through. That's a good start for the senior Rotax category and straight away we're sweeping into turn two. This is the part of the course. Oh, there's a bit of a spin there and off. Two carts off. Uh, I think one of them may have been maybe the 56 of Connor Smith. We'll uh, count that through when we get an update on the timing. An unfortunate start for a couple of drivers there in this first race of the day. The fourth heat of the weekend for senior Rotax Max. Good start for those at the front of the order. Maguire, Hedrington, Aaron Walker's in there in the number 31. Nathan Glenn as well in the number 95. And it's not that it has been problems as well for Kyle Price and Zach Leckie because the number 15 and the 20 are off the back of the field already. Coming round to complete lap number one then. Good start here for Philip Maguire. This is what he needs to get some... Uh, scores going, improved on the weekend so far. As you see the number 84 there of Keith Biggerstaff, 38-year-old from Newtown Abbey. End of lap number one, it's Maguire from Glenn, Hetherington, Biggerstaff, Bell, Walker, Blair, Rogers, Tuite and Murta. That is your top ten. Quite short heats these as well particularly if you're racing from the back of the field, and that's uh, what we talked about earlier. Don't necessarily need to go out all out to try and win one of these heats, as there is a change for the lead at the front of the field. Looks like Nathan Glenn, perhaps, in the number 95, has got past uh, the number 11 of Philip Maguire. The number 24 uh, of Jason Hedrington is still there as well. Indeed, Glenn leads the end of lap number two by half a second from Philip Maguire. Jason Hevington still there in third. Good progress as well by Neville Bell. In the number 36 card, he's at the fourth place. Gary Blair looking down the inside now, going for a move. Beautiful move by Gary Blair in cart number 32. The, uh, the Ellen cart. What a new piece of kit, of course. Backed by Lando Norris and worked with the OTK group. 
with number 43 of Ben McFall trying to gain positions as well. Uh, Gary Turgenton at the moment has gone backwards. The current event leader, number 61, is down to 11th place at the end of lap number two. So on time, we're about halfway through this first heat of the day. And it's coming up to the end of three minutes. Nathan Glenn really stamping his authority on this race. 1.1 seconds is now the lead for Glenn. Glenn currently in seventh place in points. His best result uh, yesterday. Lead was a third place. Well, I've got the points correct. It's good move down the inside there by cart number 36. That's Neville Bell going for second place and getting second place from Philip Maguire. Drivers jostling for position, trying to maximise as many opportunities through the course of this race as they can. Uh, just to mention, I think actually the, it was the number 23 uh, that had issues on the first lap. So that's Tin and Clark. Uh, Johnny Clyde, I think, has had some challenges in this race as well. And 12 is off the back of the order. But Nathan Glenn continuing to lead by 1.4 seconds. The defensive work being put in there. And I think Daniel Conlon is down the inside. Harry Turkington in there as well in cart number 61. Jason Hedrickson losing some positions there in the black suit and black helmet. It's through goes Turkington. Oh, it's off there is Maguire. Philip Maguire off, was running in fourth place. There's damage clearly to the front of the cart. The uh, Nassau panel, oh, another driver nearly joins the incident. Well, that's not good news at all for Philip Maguire. Was looking for a good result in this heat. Having started from the front, it's a great opportunity, but has not been able to take it. And uh, sadly, that, that is a real blow for Maguire. No points so far this weekend. And that may remain to be the case at the end of this penultimate heat for Senior Rotax Max. Not long to go then. Just saw on the clock there to drivers left, just over a minute on time. Still Nathan Glenn leading. 1.5 seconds ahead of Neville Bell. Down the inside there, looked to be uh, James Gilliland, who's currently the fastest driver out on circuit, the number 35, gaining another position. And Gilliland up to uh, 12th place. He's currently in second place in points, but this is how these... Uh, Mixed grids can work over a long competition like this. It'll ebb and flow as drivers have their starts from the front, middle and back of the order. It's a format to do like them, uh, if I'm being perfectly honest. It looks like there'll be two more laps of this particular heat. A bit more time uh, to be run through, about 10 seconds or so. And they will see, drivers will see the last lap board. And here comes the number 26 down the inside. Good move there by Daniel Conlon. Good scrap going on with the 61 of Gary Turkington and the 141 of Zach Rogers in there as well. And Conlon has got ahead uh, of both of them. And Zach Rogers loses two positions there. It's down to ninth place. Conlon to seventh. Turkington up to eighth. Ben McFall is finishing this race quickly. He's just set the fastest lap of the race in fifth. So by my measuring, we've gone past six minutes now. Last lap. Messages will be going to the leader. Still Nathan Glenn. This is going to be a really good boost for Nathan Glenn. Turkington trying to line up a move on Conlon there. It's a sweep through turn number one. Number 10 there of Philip Tweete. And away late on past Gary Blair there, and the number 32. Once again, these would be good points. Finishing in the top five, really crucial across these heats. Plenty of opportunities for drivers uh, later on in the day. That looked like Tweete was going for a move on Dylan Blair, but we're coming to the end of this race. Nathan Glenn looking comfortable. Really good start to his Sunday. 2.4 seconds clear of the rest of the field. 
Neverwell's going to get good points in this as well. Still raging on this battle for third place. Ben McFall in there as well has got ahead of Blair and Trite across the start finish line. Take the checkered flag. Good win there for uh, Nathan Glenn. 25 points for Glenn, 22 Neville Bell. Uh, and then it will be Trite for four, Blair wrapping up the top five, Murta in sixth, Turkington seventh, Conlon eight, Rogers ninth, Gillard tenth. So a good number of the drivers that we've seen so far this weekend coming to the four once again. That completes heat number four uh, for the senior Rotax Max category. Enjoy that race. First race of the day to give the stream uh, a like down below. And we'll uh, see the Senior Rotax Max category out again uh, later on in the day. We'll get ready for our second race on the order here at Nuts Corner for day two of the Irish Kart GP 2022, the 40th anniversary event. Uh, X30 Junior is next. Here we go then for the first appearance of the day for Junior X30. Cody Keogh is due on the front row. James Wood there as well. CJ Bennett and Nadine Kavanagh uh, set to go from row number two. Connor Grant and Holly Dunyon uh, on row number three. We've got Luke Agnew and Adam Holmes completing the eight uh, cart entry for Junior X30. Let's do a recap of the day of the weekend. So far for Junior X33 heats held yesterday, James Wood is currently your points leader. Two wins in the second place yesterday for Wood. Uh, took heat two and heat number three. 70 points on the board. A nine-point lead at the moment over Luke Agnew. And then a further five points back is Connor Grant. Still all to play for. Two heats for this category to go, which is uh, kindly sponsored by James Irvin. Uh, monumental sculptors. Looks like we are ready to go then for X30 action in the junior category. Eight carts lining up on the grid, ready to go for six minutes plus one lap, and away they go. All looking clean at the moment. Number 13 there, We're getting a bit tight. That was Adam Holmes. He's just about got through. The first couple of corners there. So far, Wood from Bennett, Grant, Kavanagh, Dunyon, Agnew, Holmes. Uh, and I mentioned Cody Keogh was due to start in the front row. Hasn't, I think, competed in any races so far this weekend. And he's not registering on time. So it looks like we're down to seven uh, here for Junior X30. James Wood looking for another opportunity here to get another win on the scorecard move for second there that may have been the number 44 of Luke Agnew yes it was so Luke Agnew uh, second in points at the moment after day one already stamping his authority on this race and trying to change chase uh, James Woods down here end of lap number one then it is Wood from Agnew Connor Grant is in third place the number 54 CJ Bennett in fourth place, the number 35, Adam Holmes has had a good start. He's up to fifth place, the number 13. And now at the number 25 of Holly Dunyon, running in sixth place. I mean, Kavanagh just behind in the number 74. So already 90 seconds of this race gone. And it's the one, two, three in the points from yesterday. One, two, three uh, in this heat. End of lap number two then. James Wood continuing, continuing to lead. Uh, is three tenths clear. Which is less than three tenths ahead of Luke Agnew. Half a second back, Connor Grant. 
as they're really starting to stretch their legs now. Battle going on for fourth place between CJ Bennett and Adam Holmes. Luke Agnew uh, took the first heat of this weekend's competition. And solidly up towards the front uh, throughout the competition so far. But would love to make it two all against James Wood uh, for heat wins so far this weekend. He's one of the uh, younger drivers in this category, he's 12 years of age. He was the IAMI Cadet Class winner at the RGP 12 months ago. Also went to the IAMI World Finals in Adria. A uh, very strong driver indeed in IAMI provided uh, equipment. By comparison, James Wood, this is his second appearance at the Irish Kart GP. Uh, previously raced BMXs, only started karting last year. Very interesting this battle, two different backgrounds in terms of how they've come into karting. But equally matched indeed, still James Wood leading ahead of Luke Agnew. They're just pulling away now from Conor Grant there in third place. I'll just remote, uh, that's the monitor here in the commentary box, but we can tell you that they're coming to the end uh, of lap number three. Point two of a second between uh, Wood and Agnew. And now 1.2 seconds ahead of Connor Grant. CJ Bennett has started to uh, firm up fourth place now. Seven tenths clear of Adam Holmes. There's now apologies for any slight technical hiccups there. They haven't missed anything. Still Wood ahead of Agnew. Conor Grant in third place still. Uh, Nadine Kavanagh has also got past Holly Dunyon. Uh, it's up into sixth place. You could see Conor Grant running well in third place, just in the back of shot there. Uh, raced at the uh, Cartmasters British Grand Prix a number of weeks ago. Finished 11th in the Junior X30 category for that event, which you can watch back if you missed it. All the uh, action across the weekend, a bumper weekend uh, of content here on Alpha Live. Don't go watch it now, though. Enjoy the content here in the racing at Ulster Karting Club, Nuts Corner. As this battle between Wood and Agnew continues. James Wood showing that form that we've seen throughout the weekend so far. Good speed, not getting uh, too rattled at the moment with Luke Agnew just behind. Quick check over the shoulder there. There is a yellow flag out. Uh, I think it might be for CJ Bennett. I think CJ Bennett's had a problem out there in the number 35. Has fallen off the lead lap. Yeah, so that's a, a shame for CJ Bennett. Was running up in fourth place, but something has gone wrong uh, for CJ. And CJ's out of this race. Two laps to go then. It's around 15 seconds on the clock. Flat into turn one they go then, sweeping through turn two. Slightly wider initial line in there from James Wood. He's been holding that gap, he's actually grown it ever so slightly. Now out to nearly four tenths of a second. Here's the battle for what is now sixth place. Uh, apologies, no, fifth place. The Dean Kavanagh in the number 74, Holly Dunyon in the number 25. Probably the closest battle out in the circuit at the moment. Dunyan trying to find a way back through past Kavanagh. And he's got a good run there. He's going to be up the inside perhaps. No, has to just duck in. Thinks better of it. Leaders coming round to start their final lap. James Wood closes in on the third heat victory of the weekend so far. I can all score good points again. Consolidate that spot in second place in the points with one more heat to go before the final. Adam Holmes still running in fourth place as well. We've not talked about Adam too much, but he's running well. Equaling a best score so far this weekend. 
uh, is Adam. The leaders around two thirds of the way through this final lap of heat number four for the Junior X30 category here for the 2022 Irish Kart GP. James Wood still holding the lead as he has since the end of lap number one. And he's going to take a third win of the weekend. James Wood wins the fourth heat for Junior X30 by just over a quarter of a second ahead of Luke Agnew. Connor Grant finishes there in third place. Uh, it will be Adam Holmes across the line in fourth place. A solid fourth place there for Holmes. And then fifth and sixth, the last of the finishers. It was indeed the deep cabinet ahead of Holly Dunyon. One retirement from that race, CJ Bennett, Cody Keogh. Uh, was a non-starter. Well, the good form for James Wood, the 15-year-old, continues here at Nuts Corner this weekend. We'll see the Junior X30s out for their final heat later on uh, in the early afternoon. We're going to get ready, though, for our next race out on circuit, first appearance of the day for Junior Rotax Max. <laughs> Time for another junior category to head out on circuit, this time for the Rotax runners. Joseph McMahon has a pole position for this first heat of the day. Uh, Adam, Adam McGiven is there alongside the front row. James Greer and Joe Gardner on row two. Jack Murta and James Robinson on the third row of the grid. And then we find Carter Kelly and Peter Gilliland on row four. Gavin Dewitt and Bobby Joe McFall complete the 10 cart entry uh, here in Junior Rotax Max. And uh, recap of the weekend so far, Joseph McMahon has the points lead at the moment uh, ahead of Jack Murta. Gavin Dewitt is in third, Joe Gardner in fourth, Bobby Joe McFall in fifth. Cards there in dummy grid. I suppose at the moment this will be a slight pause just to recover uh, CJ Bennett's um, cart from the previous race. Big thanks to our sponsors for this category KKC uh, Cart Components and our event sponsor as well, Pit Stop Motors NI. Do go check them out. So you say 10 carts in this category. There's the number 14 of uh, Carter Kelly. Number 34 of Peter Gilliland. Engines firing up there. Bobby Joe McFall at the back there. 2017 North of Ireland uh, Honda Cadets champion. Another driver who knows this circuit. Well, a few problems there for the number 72. That's uh, Gavin Dewitt. 14-year-old, former uh, Ulster Honda Cadet champion and IGP winner. we see his dad later on in the day as well. Racing in the 250 Supercarts category. But out of circuit now for the formation lap. And once again, it'll be six minutes plus uh, one lap. Can Joseph McMahon continue this good form? Another driver to have two heat wins from yesterday already on their scorecard. Oh, just warming their tyres. Good chance this for Adam McGiven. The number 19, currently bottom of the points tally, but a good result here. Could promote him further up the order. Try and get in to the top half and number 33 Joseph McMahon though has got to be the favourite in this race we're ready for six minutes plus one lap in Junior Rotax Max away we go flat to the square right there through turn number one really good start for Joseph McMahon just the kind of start that he would have wanted he will try and bolt away on this first lap of this heat and control the pace from then on as everybody else fights for second place you can see the uh, number 40 Six there, Bobby Joe McFall trying to get involved. It's a good start for the Junior Rotax drivers. 
good clean start. That's what we want to see. Looks like there's a challenge there uh, on McGiven for second place. Jesse Oman, how about that start? Good move down the inside there. I think that was Peter Gilliland uh, trying to make some improvements in the number 34 and Joe Gardner as well in the number 36. Joe Gardner currently in fourth place in the points after day one. The number 20 of Jack Mertz has had a good start. Also has got up to second place. So end of lap number one. But, uh, McMahon leads by just under a second ahead of Murta, Greer in third, but Fall in fourth place, Gilliland up to fifth. Fortunately for our uh, front row sitter, Adam McGiven, and down to ninth place at the end of lap number one. And there's an issue, a small issue for James Robinson as well, who's currently uh, three seconds off the back of the pack at the end of that first lap. 90 seconds of the heat gone so far. Field coming through at the end of lap number two. There's number 72 of Gavin Dewitt. Got up to sixth place on this last lap. So progress there for Dewitt. New fastest lap of the race goes in by the race leader. But the pace is pretty even between McMahon and uh, Murta at the front of the order. A bit wide there, the number 46 of Bobby Joe McFall, the 34 Peter Gillen looking around the outside. I don't think he's going to have any uh, success there though. Going into the left hand hairpin, it's down the inside now. Has he got it done? Uh, it's, oh, a bit of uh, contact there off the corner, but indeed, yes, Peter Gillen has got this good progress from Peter Gillen, but McFall's going to try and fight back here. Here comes. Gavin Dewitt as well, and the number 72 is going to go down the inside of McFall there into the right hand. A great battle this here in Junior Rotax. Carter Kelly's in there as well, and the number 14 just waiting for all of this to uh, boil over, perhaps. And then get a few positions for uh, relatively little work. It's a good tactic to play in one of these heats. Things get a little bit too boisterous, but at the moment, this is good stuff. Down the inside there goes Gavin Dewitt. Brilliant move there into turn number one. And it looks like Carter Kelly is going to now try and make some moves. That's a good move there on Joe Gardner. Meanwhile, front of the order, still McMahon and Murta. Very similar pace, side by side there as uh, Bobby Joe McFall. He's having lots of great battles in this race. Unfortunately, he's lost a position there to Carter Kelly in the number 14. Uh, James Robinson, I believe, has had further problems. Has uh, fallen further off the back of the pack. This is the battle for third place. James Greer, the number 11, and Peter Gilliland. Really good performance there from Peter Gilliland. Missed the, uh, or didn't get a score in the first race of the weekend is now down the inside for third place and easy as that through into turn one up to third peter gilliland as i say missed the first race or didn't get a score in the first race that's why he's down in ninth place at the moment in points he's fighting back here and we'll definitely move up the order with this kind of performance and this kind of result with just under two minutes on the timer to go. And the 34 has been followed through by the 72 of Gavin Dewitt. So we saw Gavin Dewitt there getting past James Greer in the middle part of the circuit. Gavin Dewitt is in, well, was in third place in points after day number one. And it's now the number 14 of Carter Kelly all over the back of James Greer there, trying to find a way through. Number 36 of Joe Gardner coming in as well. Joe Gardner maybe having a think about a move into turn one there. One minute to go on the timer. The number 14 looking to the outside. That would be a really brave move around the outside. He's going to get forced out wide. It's going to be 3-1 now with Joe Gardner sticking up the inside. Oh, very good racing. Good racecraft from all drivers. Looks like Bobby Joe McFall's now coming back into this one. Down the inside of Kelly again. Gains two positions. Through all of that, all changed yet again. It's been a very entertaining first appearance of the day from the Junior Rotax Max drivers. 
couldn't call this one at the moment. It's gone back and forth all the time. Gardner now ahead of McFall in this fight just outside the top three. Uh, two laps of the race to go. Penultimate lap has started. And the 36 of Joe Gardner confirmed there up to uh, fifth place. Carter Kelly, the number 14. 1.1 second is the uh, is the gap at the moment between the first and second carts in this race, McMahon and Murta. That battle for fifth, just looking like it's calming down now. Gardner ahead of McFall, Kelly and Greer. Adam McGiven still out there as well, running in ninth place. So there is your leader, Joseph McMahon, cart number 33. We'll see the last lap board over start finish now. The 13-year-old uh, in his fourth appearance in the IGP. Looking serene at the moment. In control. All good on the crop promotions cart there. 1.3 seconds clear of Jack Merton now. I think it's uh, booked in second place. There's not going to be an opportunity in this particular heat, but uh, wants to keep things fresh for later on in the day. And it was the Ulster Kart Club most improved driver last year. He's previously raced in Honda and Minimax as uh, Jack Mertens. 20 years of age, uh, sorry, tw uh, 16 years of age in the number 20. Rather, well, would be 20, he'd be way too old for a junior. Anyway, here comes Joseph McMahon. Two heat victory so far this weekend this is going to be number three and is really stamping his authority on this category in junior rotax max joseph mcmahon takes the win in heat four of the weekend jack murter in second great drive from peter gilliland into third place there fourth for gavin jewett and that very entertaining battle for fifth place is won out by joe gardner ahead of carter kelly bobby joe mcfall james greer Adam McGibbon crossed the line there in ninth place. James Robinson was a retirement. Well, very entertaining race there for Junior Rotax Max, the most entertaining race of the day. We we'll look forward to seeing this group of drivers back out on circuit for their fifth and final heat of the weekend later on. We're going to swiftly move on, though. Very short break here on the commentary from Double Dash Race Sport Media. Next up out on circuit, first appearance of the day for Rotax 177. Rotax 177, sponsored by Ray Sawmills. Here is your grid for uh, the fourth heat of uh, this weekend, the first heat of today. Kevin Shine has pole position. Alongside him on the front row is Brian Cherry, cart number 56. Very good number, that. Uh, Richard Malcolmson is on the second row of the grid and is joined by Daniel Burgoyne. Gareth Greer and Samuel Allen are there on the third row of the grid. Johnny McCarthy and Ben McDowell on row number four. Sean Spratt and Mark Fazy complete the 10 cart entry for Rotax 177. Uh, category, uh, well, if you're new to Rotax 177, you're wondering what's the 177 about? It's the minimum weight category of cart and driver for these competitors. Away we go then for six minutes plus one lap. Everybody through. The first corner safely. Ben McDowell is currently your points leader in this. Very close with him, between him and Daniel Burgoyne. Those have been the two drivers in form, good form so far this weekend. Just look at that round the outside. Beautiful uh, driving there in the midfield. Number 71 taking advantage of that. That is Daniel Burgoyne. Field whipping through the mid part of the circuit. Be interested to see how Gareth Greer does in this race as well. Cart number 21 is currently third in points. Sean Pratt, uh, Spratt has uh, work to do as well. Fourth in points at the moment, but this is the race where Sean Spratt starts from the back of the grid. And the black number one then, Kevin Shine, has taken that opportunity of starting at the front of the order. He's got a three tenth 
lead over Brian Cherry down the inside there. Good move by and that was uh, that was Vasey going for the overtake there. Kevin Shine missed the first race or didn't get any points in the first race. So another driver uh, who's fighting back. Oh, look at that down the inside. I think that was Malcolmson. Richard Malcolmson, who's also another driver, looking to recover, having not scored in the first heat of the weekend, uh, which was yesterday. So you do feel with this category that especially the mid-pack is not set in stone at all. Here comes the number 55 of Ben McDowell. That's the kind of form that we've seen so far this weekend, getting past Brian Cherry there for second place. Daniel Burgoyne on the back of this trio as well. So those two drivers who've shared the top two positions so far this weekend. Burgoyne's looking down the inside with respectful racing there. Room gave by Brian Cherry. And Burgoyne is up to third place now. Now the two drivers at the top of the point standings will set about your race leader, Kevin Shine. You had a six-tenth lead at the end of that last lap, so lap number two. Best points tally for Shine so far uh, this weekend is 16 points. He's gained 16 points in uh, the two heats that he has scored in so far. So uh, they've been fourth places. Good opportunity to improve on that here. Just keep the eyes forward. Third place at least, I'd say, is on offer based on form so far this weekend. He's holding good pace as well relative to uh, McDowell and Burgoyne behind. Four tenths is the gap. He's making two championship or event leaders I should say work hard for their points here in uh, race number four Looking a little bit further down the order Richard Malcolmson is up to fifth place Gareth Greer holding in sixth at the moment Johnny McCarthy is seventh Dow closing in now it's been a good lap so far from the event leader is he shaping up for a move perhaps into turn one we've seen that a couple of times already from Ben McDowell in this race and Daniel Burgoyne will be looking to take advantage as well try and hook on to the rear bumper but I don't think he's going to be there it's going to be a good run for McDowell slightly tighter line through the final corner is the opportunity going to be there for going down the inside into turn one yes there is textbook brilliant move by McDowell but Shine's going to try and fight back here into turn two Burgoyne just holding off for the moment That was a really, really nice move. As, oh, down the inside goes Daniel Burgoyne, takes second place. So it's back with McDowell and Burgoyne at the front of the order. Kevin Shine will look to just stay on the rear bumper now. He's got a, a good gap out to uh, third place. I think there has been a problem for Brian Cherry because Brian Cherry has fallen down to 10th place. That's a real shame uh, for Brian. It was a mistake or a temporary car issue. The car is still running, number 56, but unfortunately now 11 seconds off the lead. Just over a minute on time to go then, three more laps. Daniel Burgoyne now starting to put Ben McDowell under pressure. Kevin China is still there as well in third place. A bit wide there from Ben McDowell. Burgoyne's going to be down the inside in just as he did to Kevin Shine takes the lead there but McDowell's going to fight back brilliant racing here in Rotax 177 so for about what would you say three quarters of a corner Daniel Burgoyne had the lead there that seems to be where he's strong the uh, long technical left hander he's got down the inside on two occasions now at least uh, in this race kind of started from Ben McDowell running a touch wide through the uh, left hand head of turn number three. Two laps to go. Still McDowell ahead of Burgoyne. Burgoyne's very much going for it there. Shuts the door does Ben McDowell. Great racing between these two. A little bit of switch back. Burgoyne down the inside. Brilliant move. Takes the lead. Doesn't wait for his preferred corner. 
One win so far this weekend for Daniel Burgoyne. Can he even it up in terms of heat victories against Ben McDowell? He's got half a lap to hold on here for this one. McDowell's going back down the inside though. He's retaking the lead. Really brave move there. Well, this is definitely wetting the appetite for the rest of this Irish Kart GP in this category. This is going to be one to watch. Can Ben McDowell close this one out? He's had to have worked really, really hard, but he's going to take a third win of the weekend. Ben McDowell. Uh, apologies. No, this is the final lap. No, we've got one more lap of it to go. That was the uh, remainder on time. So we continue. Very good news. As all round the outside. What happened there? McDowell just seemed to bog down. Burgoyne went round the outside. Very easy pickings for Daniel McDowell, uh, Daniel Burgoyne rather. Is there a slight problem there for Ben McDowell? Is he nursing a problem? Is that why uh, he's not able to gather away? He's going to go down the inside. Burgoyne gives him room. Oh, there's contact. And both of them are off. Both of them are off. Hands up to apologise there. And, uh, the, oh, is the problem there? No, McDowell is in trouble. McDowell is in trouble. Apologies. No, it's Kevin Shine who's got up into second place. Well, there may be some discussions about that in the paddock afterwards, but round the final corner, this time they should see the checker flag. There it is. It is Burgoyne from Shine. McDowell is going to finish in third. So at least it is points on the board for McDowell. Fourth for McCarthy. Fifth for Malcolm from Greer in sixth. Uh, recovery there from Sean Spratt to 7th place. Brian Cherry with his mid-race problem finishes in 8th place. ninth for Samuel Allen and 10th for Mark Racy. Well, a very close race there uh, for Rotax 177. That's their penultimate heat of the weekend done. We'll see them again later on. Next out on circuit, we're going to switch to our Army Cadet. So heading out on circuit now should uh, be I Army Cadet. Here is their grid. James Logan has pole position. Kenzie McNally alongside on the front row. Andy Stewart and Chad Lemon uh, on the second row of the grid. Sophie Campbell and Brogan McDonald are there on the third row of the grid. Jason Park and Johnston Stewart are on row four. Charlie Blair completes the nine cart field. This uh, category is sponsored by KKC cart components and the story of the weekend so far Kenzie McNally two wins from three five-point lead uh, over Chad uh, Lamont Jason Park in third place in the points James Logan in fourth it'll be six minutes plus one lap we've seen a couple of drivers so far in the categories take three from four it's a good opportunity for Kenzie McNally to join that list and I think is that going to be a false start yes it is so we'll go around for another formation lap the drivers here between the ages of uh, 8 and 12 across the order so far uh, this weekend we have got in the shape of Kenzie McNally, last year's North of Ireland I Army Cadet uh, champion. Event held here at Nuts Corner. So knows this place very, very well. Looking out from there, the cart number 77, cart number 94 of James Logan. Good chance this for James Logan to improve on a best result so far this weekend across three heats run uh, of fourth place. Yeah, for Chad Lemon as well from row number two. Took a heat win uh, in the opening salvo yesterday. This time I think we're good to go for the fourth heat of the I Army Cadet program for this weekend. Nine carts formed up then for Iami Cadet heat number four, and away we go. Much better start that time.
early leader then. Good start there for Kenzie McNally and for James Logan. Clean so far. Jay, uh, Brogan McDonald there in the number 27. With, uh, Sophie Campbell just ahead in the number 90. And 31 of Jason Park already trying to make some overtakes and gets one in there uh, past the 193 of Andy Stewart. And Andy Stewart looking to improve ninth place in the points so far. Through goes the number 14 of Chad Lamon as well. As Oh, bit of a moment there. Is that for uh, McNally there? Not quite sure if that was a moment under braking and just snatching the rear brake or whether there's a touch involved. Uh, apologies, no, it wasn't uh, McNally. It was the number 94. That's McNally. That is the number 77 out of the race. Well, that is a big development in the story of this IAMI Cadet Championship. So apologies, it was James Logan who had the moment uh, into the right-hander, but a much bigger problem for our event leader, Kenzie McNally, is out of this four feet. Well, a huge opportunity now for the rest of the order. Who is going to take advantage and take a heat victory in this one? There's the number 10 of Charlie Blair looking down the inside. They're trying to get past Sophie Campbell. We'll have the inside line for the next corner. Good stuff there for Charlie Blair. Gains a position. Currently running in eighth place in points. First year in cadets. Uh, races in the Motorsport Island Championships uh, as well. The eight-year-old from Ballyclare. This has really, really opened this one up. And a change for the lead as well. Looks like Chad Lamon has got through past Jason Park. First and second there. Can they work together? Break away from the rest or continue this breakaway, I should say, from the rest of the order. James Logan's still there as well in third place. Recovered from that moment uh, that we saw on lap number one. And he's own a little bit at the moment in third place. Often a hard thing to do in cadet racing. Cadet racing, irrespective of which engine formula it is, typified by uh, racecraft. Keeping that momentum up. Which, when you're in a pack of carts, is sometimes easier. It's down the inside. That was a good move there by Sophie Campbell, getting past Andy Stewart. There's two leaders, Chad Lamon, away ahead of Jason Park. Uh, looks like James Logan in the uh, the green livery, number 94, has been caught by uh, Brogan McDonald and Charlie Blair. That shouldn't be too much of a worry, though. This group of three, if they play this smartly, have got enough time on their hands to pull this one back. Race leader and fastest driver out there, Chad Lamon. 1.2 seconds clear of Jason Park now. Chad, 10 years of age, from Jonesboro. And he's currently winning at fourth in the Irish Championship points. So that's side once again. Blair and the number 90. Oh, that's a beautiful move by Sophie Campbell round the outside. Through the left-hander of turn number three. Got on the power. Brave there to hold that outside. Maybe we've been thinking about being squeezed out there, but kept the foot in and gained the position out of it against Charlie Blair. So if you're just joining us, this is the fourth heat of the weekend, first heat of the day for the I Army Cadet category for the 2022 Irish Kart GP. The leader is Chad Lamon, Kart number 14 ahead of Jason Park and then it's this battle here for third place James Logan in the number 94 Logan McDonald in cart number 27 they did have a delayed start for this one to be for a second formation lap so I reckon we were about three minutes the way uh, through this particular race we just saw on the outside there the stricken number 77 of Kenzie McNally will score I should score some points at least because number 77 did take the start of the race. But that is not uh, what Kenzie would have wanted. Down the inside once again. Sophie Campbell going for one, going for two. Great stuff from Sophie Campbell. 
another really brave piece of driving went down the inside of McDonald and then also to, uh, took Logan by surprise as well there up to third place then best result so far this weekend for Sophie Campbell uh, a fourth place in the last heat yesterday heat number three could that be improved on here there's the number 27 and the number 10 coming over start finish then in this one to go confirm Campbell up to third place uh, James Logan it's not been a good race for those who started on the front row James Logan down into sixth place but still some time to recover touch wide there from Brogan McDonald maybe under attack here from Charlie Blair in the number 10 who's kept at it is back up to fifth place uh, with a few minutes of this category race to go keep an eye out for the last lap board just in case any time was taken off uh, due to the false start on uh, attempt number one I think we will be carrying on for at least another lap or so with this one. Two seconds is the lead for the number 14 of Chad Lamont. A very, very good run so far ahead of Jason Park. This will be an uh, 11 year old who should mention happy birthday to Jason Park's younger sister, who's five this weekend. That's just watching. Happy birthday. There is your race leader, Chad Lamont. Looking calm, looking composed at the moment in the lead of this race. And uh, with event rival Kenzie McNally at the side of the track and out of this one. Uh, on my early maths on a Sunday morning, this will put Chad Lamont in the lead of the I Army Cadet competition after four heats with one remaining. It could be a really decisive uh, race in the story of this category for the 2022 Irish Kart GP. But here comes Mad Lamon. See whether the checkered flag is out on this lap or whether we go for another one. Okay, go for no, that is the checkered flag. So there it is. Chad Lamon takes the race victory uh, quite comfortably in the end. Some battles still going on out there. Jason Park finishes in second place. Best results of the weekend so far for Jason. Likewise for Sophie Campbell there in third place, uh, which after a difficult start to the race, grew and grew through uh, that heat. That is a brilliant result for Sophie Campbell. Fourth place for Brogan uh, McDonald. Fifth for Charlie Blair. James Logan uh, in sixth. Seventh for Andy Stewart. Eighth uh, for Johnson Stewart. And one time for Chris Pantelli on lap number one. We'll see the I Army Cadets out later on for their fifth and final heat of the weekend. Next up out on circuit, it's the fourth heat of the weekend, first one of day for Minimax. Time for Minimax to join the fray here at Nuts Corner. Let's have a look at the grid for their first heat of the day, fourth of the weekend. Uh, Lewis Arthur has pole position for this one, and it's you and jo uh, Evan Johnston joining on the front row of the grid. Charlie Gardner and Jamie Kidney are there on row number two. John O'Neill and Evan Purcell are on the third row of the grid. Scott Riley and Daniel K uh, Kilpatrick are there on row number four. And then it's Cole McFadden, Biggerstaff and Scott McGibbon completing the 10 cart entry for Minimax sponsored by Gardner Farm Equipment here for the 2022 Irish Cart GP and let's have a recap very quickly before this race gets underway Charlie Gardner your points leader after three heats so far this weekend ahead of Scott Riley and Daniel Kilpatrick looks like we are good to go though for this one and away we do go for six minutes plus one lap for the fourth heat of the weekend for Minimax very strong start for those at the front of the field Johnston and Kidney it's like the number 10 of Daniel Kilpatrick was looking for an overtake there into turn number three wasn't quite able to pull it off 
A clean start once again here at Nuts Corner. It's good work by the Minimax drivers. Number 85 of Scott Riley there, second in points at the moment. But as we said, this is part of the game in uh, these heat formats where the average grid positions are the same across the five heats. But it means that as an individual, you've got to do some racing from the front, racing from the middle, racing from the back. It's about testing the racecraft and the overtaking skill of the drivers. But that one is often a good chance to make up some spots if you're starting from the rear. Good move down the inside. That's Charlie Gardner, number 66, points leader so far after three heats. Down the inside, past the number 36 of Evan Johnston for second place. Now try and set about catching Jamie Kidney there in the number 21. And to say setting about it, it's doing a very good job with that indeed. It's already closed that gap of around three or four tenths at the start of lap number two. This is quite a statement from Charlie Gardner in the opening points of this race. He's 12 years old from Larne. Uh, he's quite experienced here at the Irish Kart GP. This is his sixth appearance, I believe. He's raced through a number of the younger categories. Going to try and set up a move here on Jamie Kidney into turn number one. Jamie Kidney currently in seventh place in points. It's a good opportunity for him to move up the order. Down the inside goes Gardner. Has he got it done on the overrun? Yes, he has. So that's a good move from Charlie Gardner. He's got one win so far this weekend, which was the second heat yesterday. Very competitive category. This Scott Riley and Daniel Kilpatrick have also had heat wins so far, or at least through the uh, the Saturday running. Where are they at the moment? Well, Kilpatrick is in fifth place, and uh, Scott Riley just behind there in sixth. Good scrap going on for third place at the moment between the two Evans. Evan Johnston ahead of Evan Purcell. Cart number 36 and 46. Looks like they've been joined by the number 10 of Daniel Kilpatrick and the 85 of Scott Riley. And the final corner and of the third lap. Number 10 off Kilpatrick looks down the inside and gets through with, with well, sweeps through. That's all oh, big, bold move down the inside from Scott Riley there. Takes fifth place. And is currently the fastest driver on circuit as well as Scott Riley. Kilpatrick looking down the inside now, going for third place. Good hold around the outside there, but in the end. Evan Shonston just can't hold on to that position and may be under attack here from Riley now as they sweep to the top of the hill. And the 46 of Evan Purcell's trying to get involved as well. Down the inside goes Scott Riley. That's Scott Riley gaining two positions so far on this lap. Up to fourth place. Continues this chase of Daniel Kilpatrick uh, for third at this stage of the race. And I've got to say, that uh, this quartet... Even though they've been scrapping and battling for positions, at least at the moment, are not losing time to the front two. Let's check the lap times as we go through here. Yeah, they've only dropped a couple of tenths. It's good work uh, from both Kilpatrick and Riley. It's an interesting phase of a race like this. Right now, I think if you're both Kilpatrick and Riley, you know you've both got speed work together I say that Riley's trying to look for a way through past Kilpatrick now working together the good goes in on Jamie Kidney who last count was a second clear down the road there he is and maybe a, is there a back marker perhaps ahead as well so through here Evan Purcell and Evan Johnston, 36 and 46. This is the squabble for fifth place in the race. Five minutes of the six gone on the clock. But I'm not quite having the straight line speed. It's down the inside. Well, that's uh, Kidney being overtaken by both Kilpatrick and Riley, so they have worked together, they have closed that gap very efficiently, and now down the inside goes Scott Riley. 
Maybe thinking that the gap up to Gardner is just a little bit too much to close in the remaining time. And second place is as good as it's going to get. And he wants it now. It's a very good move by Scott Riley. As, uh, I think that was Purcell down the inside of Johnston as well. So lots of overtaking going on in the Minimaxes so far in this heat. Uh, just looking through the rest of the order. Cole McFadden, uh, bigger staff. Maybe taking a bit of hit on, on points here. Because he's currently in seventh place. The driver who was uh, fourth in the standings overnight. Charlie Gardner continues to lead at the moment. 1.9 seconds uh, is the gap for Char uh, Charlie Gardner. Just going through turn three. Apologies, didn't quite clock. Uh, whether Gardner got over the line before the six minutes was up. So this may be the final lap. We'll know when we get round to it whether the checkered flag comes out or not. But at the moment, this is looking very good for Charlie Gardner, even with the pace of Riley and Kilpatrick behind, which is strong. just don't think they've got enough time remaining in this race. At most, they've got one more lap after this. The gap was 1.9 seconds. Just Scott Riley just being conscious of Daniel Kilpatrick there, looking over the shoulder. No, we do now go on to the final lap and look at how hard Riley defends into turn one there. Does not want to let Kilpatrick get back through. These two drivers tied on points uh, overnight, both on 63 points. And now down the inside, well, Riley left the door open there and Kilpatrick took the invitation. Riley to the outside now will try and switch back to now kick up through the and over the hill. Kilpatrick defends, He's more or less securing the victory for Charlie Gardner. Down back down the inside goes Scott Riley, retakes second place. Great racing once again here at Nuts Corner. Charlie Gardner though is going to take a further lead in this tight in this uh, event so far this weekend. It's going to take his second heat win of the weekend. It's going to be a one two three across the line, one two three in points as well. Gardner wins it. Second heat victory of the weekend so far. Scott Riley just holds on to second place ahead of Daniel Kilpatrick in the very entertaining tussle there. Jamie Kidney finishes in fourth. That's a great result for Jamie. Best result so far this weekend. Evan Purcell uh, fought well there to finish in fifth. Sixth for Evan Johnston. Seventh for Cole McFadden. Bigger staff. Eighth uh, for Lewis Arthur. Ninth for John O'Neill. And 10th for Scott McGiven. A very good performance there by Charlie Gardner. That will boost the confidence uh, ahead of the fifth and final uh, heat of the weekend, which we'll see later on. We're going to move on, though, to one of my favourite categories uh, in all kart racing, heading out to the circuit next. Their fourth heat of the weekend, it's Honda Cadet. Time for Honda Cadets to take to the circuit for the first time here today uh, at Nuts Corner. Here is the grid. Conan Warnock has pole position. Uh, Max Colbert alongside on the front row. Ewan House and Harry Montgomery are there on row two. Harry McDowell and Ryan Arthur start on the third row of the grid. Archie Condy and Travis Bailey start on row four. Charlie Condy and Noah McFarlane complete the top ten. Declan Noble and Gareth Winning start on row six. There's 12 carts in the entry. This Honda Cadet uh, event and category sponsored by RPM Racing Engines. And uh, the scores so far uh, this weekend for Honda Cadets. Leading is Ewan House, the Scottish champion, denoted by the S-plate. Declan Noble second, Archie Condy in third, Charlie Condy in fourth. Are we good for a start, I think we are, and away we go for heat number four for Honda Cadets here this weekend. This is a good start for Warnock through turn two and dipping down into turn number three. Honda Cadet racing very much determined by uh, working together as groups. 
driver will look to get themselves organised and into good position on this first lap. Slight problem there. Uh, I think that was the number uh, 35 of uh, Harry Montgomery losing out there. The early stages, Max Colbert looking good in the number 54. Coming downhill now into the last couple of corners of this first lap of the race. Number 32 there of Harry McDowell. Good opportunity this for McDowell. Currently in eighth place in points. It's coming through at the end of the first lap then. As the number 18 of Archie Condy looking for an overtake into turn one. It is Ewan House, uh, S-plate holder. Event leader so far took two. Oh, was round there and off the circuit. I think that was the was that number 18. Yes, it was. So Archie Condy, third place in points overnight. Not a good heat, this one. Spins out uh, just going through turn two. In the, in the early stages on lap two. That is not what Archie would have wanted at all. Uh, thankfully got going again. To look at that again if we can to see whether there was a bit of contact or whether it was just a driver error. But either way, the race continuing here. Colin Warnock uh, continue to have a good start here. We'll be looking to move up through uh, those standings. Was sixth in sixth place overnight. That's number 29 on your screens, Noah McFarlane. Uh, very interesting to watch how McFarlane does. Uh, heat three was not a good one for McFarlane. No points uh, for knowing that one. But even though that was the case, runs wide there through turn number two and gets overtaken by Charlie Condy. Uh, despite that, McFarlane was fifth place in the standings overnight. So that just shows you how strong the car has been running well. Uh, things have, have been progressing for Noah McFarlane. Took a heat win in heat number one ahead of uh, Ewan House's two in heats two and three and here is Ewan House being challenged by Conan Warnock now again the tactical side of this would lead me to believe that these two drivers keep working together don't battle too hard Max Colwell is not too far behind but is isolated Similarly, this group here, 4th, 5th and 6th. McDowell, uh, McFarlane and uh, Condy, Charlie Condy. They won't look to start fighting at the moment. So I'll say that looking down the inside uh, is no McFarlane. And oh, actually running a little bit wide there across the bumps. Side by side between uh, Condy and McDowell. So, whilst it's good fun, it's entertaining to watch. They will be losing time with this. They will be allowing Max Colbert to gallop away. And also, look at uh, Travis Bailey, not too far behind in seventh place in the nine. He will be closing in and hoping that this fight continues on. Condy defends to the inside then. Group closing in also includes Declan Noble and Ryan Arthur. Down the inside now goes McFarlane. In the number 29, gets through. Good move there by Noah McFarlane. Noah will look to start to pull away now. Needs to assert uh, a position in this battle that uh, he's the driver to lead. Here's the number 36 of Declan Noble ahead of Ryan Arthur. And it looks like they have both got past Travis Bailey on that last lap. So, uh, yes, that is Noble up to seventh place. Arthur eighth and uh, Bailey now down into ninth new fastest half of the race, Ewan House. Well, Ewan House has just taken off at the front of the order. My goodness me. He's got uh, nearly four tenths as a lead now over Colin Warnock. That's a great bit of work by uh, the S-plate holder. 66.656. Where has that come from? From Ewan House. Trying to become another driver to have had uh, take three heat wins so far this weekend. Not long to go in this race as well. 40 seconds.
remaining on the clock. Ooh, bit of a moment there for McDowell. It's going to be under attack here from Condy down the inside. Good response from Charlie Condy. Saw the opportunity there. McDowell ran a, ran a touch wide. Charlie Condy needed no further invitation. But here coming back now is McFarlane in the number 29. Retakes the position into turn one. Good respectful racing between uh, these three drivers at the moment. Long may that continue. More big laps coming in uh, from Ewan House. Four tenths is now the lead for Ewan House. 12 years of age from Dunblane. We're here, the number 29 of Noah McFarlane, still ahead of Charlie Condy, was last year's best newcomer in the uh, NIKA Championship. He's currently leading uh, the NIKA Championship and has had success at, uh, in the Celtic Cup so far this year at uh, Lark Hall. But here is your race leader, Ewan House, proudly running that S plate with another. Uh, special event plate coming towards the young driver from Dunblane this weekend on this form. Couldn't argue against that. It's another fastest lap of the race so far. 66.639. Last lap board has been shown to the leader then. Conan Warnock. Conan Warnock will be happy with this though. This is a really good run from Conan Warnock. And uh, will definitely gain at least one position, I think, in the point standings. Go from, a, from sixth to fifth and maybe further. Uh, or at least close the point gap to No McFarlane and uh, both of the Condies. We'll go past Archie Condy. Archie Condy has got going again, as we saw, and uh, is fast. Currently the fastest driver out on circuit, 66.445. He's down in 10th place. But here comes your race leader, Ewan House. Did the job in the early stages. Had a bit of pressure from Conan Warnock that he absorbed and then went further to take the race victory. Gives us a little wave. Very good driving there from Ewan House. A third uh, race victory of the weekend. Conan Warnock very happy with that in second place. Third place for uh, Max Colbert who ran well there. A quiet race but good points for Max. Fourth for No McFarlane. Fifth for Charlie Condley, uh, Condy. Sixth for... Harry McDowell, 7th Declan Noble, 8th Ryan Arthur, ninth Archie Condy. Uh, at least with that pace, we can watch Archie later on. It's uh, at least with five uh, heats across these categories. There are chances to race back if you do have a problem. Travis Bailey completed the top 10, and then it was uh, Harry Montgomery in 11th and Gareth winning there across the line in 12th. Very good stuff there from the uh, Honda Cadet class. We'll see them out again later on for heat number five. We're going to move on to something a little bit different now, heading out on circuit next. It's F100. Time to step back in time for the first appearance of the day for F100. Donald Regan starts on pole position. Chris Hughes joins him on the front row. Mark Nugent and Noel Brennan on row two. Martin Brackenberry and Francis Stewart on row number three. Darren Mayer and Drew Stewart start on row four. And then we've got Robert Key and Gary Turkington on row five. Alex Kobe completing the 11 runners uh, in this category, which is two heats, uh, two, two classes in one. If uh, you're not aware or you're new to F100, uh, these are all machines uh, from, some say, the glory days of karting, the uh, the early 90s uh, and mid-90s era. These machines, the, the likes of Jensen Button and Dario Franchitti and Dan Weldon would have raced back in their uh, younger days. Fantastic racing, if you've never seen it before. Fantastic to have it here. Uh, this is also uh, a big part of this weekend's... Uh, uh, festivities as our drivers here are competing for the Frank Stewart Memorial Cup. Frank Stewart, of course, the uh, original founder of the Irish Kart GP. Uh, son Francis uh, is due to race this weekend here. And uh, big thanks to the whole Stewart family uh, for their 
time and their efforts and uh, everything that they do here for the Irish Kart GP. This is a very coveted uh, trophy across the different categories that we've got here so far this uh, weekend. As we say, we've got two categories. We've got the pre-1995 and the pre-2000 category. Uh, two runners in the pre-1995. Chris Hughes currently leading uh, Robert Key in that part of the competition. The pre-2000, Francis Stewart leading it ahead of Drew Stewart and Gary Turkington. That's the one, two, three. That will be six minutes plus one lap. We're going to go around again for at least one more formation lap. How about F100? Do a lot of racing across the UK. As I say, fantastic championship. And uh, great to see these carts running. Lots and lots of uh, care and attention given to these carts. Sound absolutely fantastic as well. The number 48 there. Chris Hughes, Tony Kart chassis uh, for Chris. Pre 95s have the white backgrounds, the pre 2000s slightly uh, later machines. The generation following have the yellow number boards. Double Regan at the front there also. Uh, we're running on the zip cart chassis, here's Donald. Looking to get these drivers into position and then we'll be good for six minutes uh, plus one lap. There's number 96. There are, there's our other pre-1995 entry in this uh, in this part of the competition, Robert Key. I think we are good to go then. Four, six minutes plus one lap in the F100 category. So away they go, down into turn one, screeching, sounding absolutely fantastic. Through into turn two, they go. At the moment, all looking good. And the 48 there will be expected to perhaps fall down the order a little bit against the uh, slightly newer machines. His head come down the inside, goes the number 99. That's Alex Kobe. Alex Kobe's had a fantastic start there uh, in his CRG machine. Uh, one of three CRG uh, chassis carts in this category. It's the number 22 early on in this one. Donald Regan taking advantage of that grid slot to lead at the front of the order. Look to build a gap. Hold it out from the front. It's just the sound of these. I just absolutely love these carts. The sound and look quite different to the more modern machinery. We've got a proper heart and a proper soul. Really are going to be a highlight of today's racing. There's the number 14 of Noel Brennan closing in. And a good second lap here, really closing in on Donald Regan here. So the number 14 with the classic Tony Kart livery as well and the suit. Really is like taking uh, a step back in time. Alex Kobe there in third place. Oh, uh, going round the outside there. Having a look and through uh, goes Noel Brennan. So Noel Brennan to the lead of the race then. Donald Regan there in second place. Number 93 of Drew, uh, Drew Stewart trying to find a way past Chris Hughes there. These are the two different categories, the pre-95 and the pre-2000. So you'd think the number 93 is going to have a run down the inside here in turn one. No, nope, just pushing along. And there's a, oh, there's a mechanical out for Mark Nugent. So, unfortunately, Mark Nugent, the 173, is going to have to pull off the circuit here because there's some form of safety issue with the 173. Uh, 173 it means it cannot continue in this race. Back at the front of the order. Change for second place. Oh, it's back down the inside. Goes Donald Regan, who had lost that position to Alex Kobe. And forces his way back through there through turn number four. Chris Hughes leading comfortably in the pre-95. Here comes Kobe again down the inside. Comfortable move there for Alex Kobe. It's good news for Noel Brennan, though, because Noel Brennan is running away with this at the moment. Number 14. That was a round winner in the F100 UK Championship at Kimbolton 
uh, last year. Knows how to lead one of these races. Knows how to compete. And there's down there in the number 41. Under three minutes of this race to go. Chris Hughes competing well here against the younger machines. He's got a comfortable gap over uh, Robert Key as through goes down there in the uh, the number 41. Martin Brackenbury uh, not too far behind as well. We have, I should mention, we have had two do not starts or did not starts in this race. Unfortunately, it is Gary Turkington and Francis Stewart. So I hope that whatever's happened to their carts be repaired. Francis Stewart who took the race win in the heat yesterday. Just the one heat's held so far uh, for the F100s here at Nuts Corner so far this weekend. Uh, so there goes Brackenbury. That's the 48 of, of Chris Hughes. Two minutes to go on the clock then for F100 and their second heat of the weekend. Old Brennan leading the race still. 1.8 seconds is the gap back to Alex Kobe. And they're looking in good form at the moment. Pulling away from Donald Regan. Drew Stewart. Uh, Drew Stewart will be looking to perhaps lead the category after this second heat. There is Alex Kobe. Up in the 99. Is the fastest cart out there at the moment? Uh, best lap times so far of a 50.385. And uh, in fact, he's just improved that. Uh, yeah, so that's 57.385 following for 57.394. So the pace consistent at the moment for there will be in a bit of time still remaining. This race isn't done for Noel Brennan. 1.5 seconds is the lead. If Kobe starts to get a bit of a whiff of the uh, slipstream make it a quite tight finish here's your battle for third place Donald Regan the number 22 just ahead of Drew Stewart in number 93 Drew Stewart's having a think about going down the inside there pulls out of it though this time goes down the inside or oh, Kobe holds around uh, sorry Regan holds around the outside there this category is sponsored by Stewart's painting uh, and decorating putting on a show as expected here at Nuts Corner for the 40th anniversary Irish Kart GP. Two laps to go. This time Stewart goes down the inside of Regan and uh, takes third place. Regan sees if there's an opportunity to go down back down the inside into turn two which there isn't. Have to, uh, for now at least uh, be content with fourth position. Hope we continuing to close in, by the way. 1.2 seconds now, the gap uh, up to Noel Brennan at the front of the field. And while just to report in for pre-95 class, Chris Hughes, 30 seconds clear of Robert Key. There is your race leader, Noel Brennan. You'll see the last lap board in a few moments. Continuing to close in is Alex Coe, but is Alex... Going to run out of time here. I think that might be the case for this one. There is Chris Hughes. Leading in pre-95. Looking good. Having a great weekend so far is Chris Hughes. That lead gap that we've been talking about is down to less than a second now. But the drivers will... Uh, have been shown the last lap board. They have gone past six minutes now. Just reporting the confirmed on timing. Drew, uh, Drew Stewart ahead of Donald Regan. That move that we saw. Fourth, third place. Noel Brennan still looking like he's going to hold on to this race victory ahead of Alex Kobe. And it's going to be a real turn of fortunes for Noel Brennan. Uh, finished bottom of the pile yesterday in the first heat. It's the perfect response, just what you would want as a race driver. Noel Brennan takes the win ahead of Alex Kobe by half a second. 
Uh, Drew Stewart finishes in third. It's going to be fourth place for Donald Regan, fifth for Dan Mayer. Uh, sixth will be Martin Brackenbury. Chris Hughes comes across the line in seventh place overall, takes the win in pre-95. Uh, then it'll be Mark Nugent across the line in eighth overall, seventh in pre-2000. Robert King will be the last of the drivers over the line in a, in a visceral event there for the F100s. That wonderful sound we will uh, sample again later on this afternoon for the second heat uh, of the day. Very good stuff indeed. And now we're going to go really to completely something something completely different from F100. We're going to move to uh, from machines from the mid-90s to drivers who weren't even around in the mid-90s. The Bambinos are out next. Here we go then for the first appearance of the day for our youngest category and the last of our non-gearbox categories here today. It is the Bambino competition. Uh, these grids based off a timed qualifying from yesterday. So Jack Harney has pole position. Lewis Hazlitt alongside on the front row. Callum McVeigh and Ethan Robinson are there on row two. And then we find Amelia Dial and Ryan Armstrong on row three. Seven carts in this field completed by Miles Purcell. So our youngest set of drivers heading out on circuit, as I say, uh, the uh, the F100s will be something completely different to uh, to what they've experienced in their uh, young karting careers. All on Coma C50 engines. And uh, the story of the weekend so far: uh, Jack Harney leading with 70 points so far. This weekend, uh, Lewis Hazlitt is there in second place in points, five points back. Callum McVay third on uh, 52, so 70, 65, 52 so far for those three. Ethan Robinson is fourth on 50 points. Amelia Dial fifth on 43. Ryan Armstrong sixth on 42. And Miles Purcell seventh on 41. And it will be a standing start. Seeing the uh, start boards out at four. This category sponsored by Unit Design Quality Kitchens and Bedrooms. Big thanks to them for their support of these young drivers. And uh, big thanks as well to Pitstop Motors NI, our uh, overall event sponsors. And the drivers completing their formation lap then. Uh, all the lifetime, by the way, you can check out on the Speed Hive app. All the results from the weekend so far here at Ulster Karting Club. Nuts Corner. Two more races in this rotation after uh, this particular heat. We'll be switching to the supercarts after this one. I say such a, a great mix. Different categories here this weekend at Nuts Corner. There is the number 42 of Jack Harney. With black suit and the white helmet, red, white, and blue uh, livery on the bodywork there. Lewis Hazlitt, the number 33 on the outside. Amelia Dial there is the number 27 driver uh, who the, our viewers from the Super One Karting Championships here on Alpha Live will be familiar with. And watch the final round of that championship at Shennington. Uh, next weekend but for now here at Nuts Corner we're ready for this heat for the Bambinos for six minutes plus one lap from their standing start eyes on the lights then and away we go for this heat in the Bambinos good start for both of those on the front row they're a great start as well for Ethan Robinson looking to the outside I think he's already gone up into second place he's going for the lead perhaps no not quite yet but that's a good start from the even side of the grid for uh, Lewis Hazlitt. So Lewis Hazlitt has the lead then. Jack Harney, our pole sitter, back down into third place with plenty of time to race back. All clean, all running well. And uh, heading now up to turn number four. Hazlitt leads. Robinson second. Harney in third place. See the number 75 there of Callum McVeigh, just behind the 47 of 
miles per cell. So miles per cell has had a good start as well uh, here in the Bambinos. Amelia Dial looking to close in as well. Down the back straight they go. Looking through that right hander. So the heat victories so far this weekend have gone to two drivers. Jack Harney for uh, the time to qualify, which acts as a, as a point heat and uh, the second racing heat the weekend so far. That was yesterday. So two on the board for Jack Harney and uh, Lewis Hazlitt uh, has one as well. Look at this, down the pit straight to go. Ethan Robinson continuing this great start. Number 42 of Jack Harney's to the inside. He's going to go for second place on Lewis Hazlitt. Good amount of racing room given by all the drivers here. But through goes Robinson. Really good start to the race so far from Ethan Robinson. That's what we uh, like to see. And number 42 there of Jack Harney. And then the 33 of Lewis Hazlitt. He's currently the uh, Ulster Championship leader. Uh, he's had wins in the Northwest Plate and the Celtic Cup so far this year. Also raced uh, across in England. Took second place in the Mighty e, uh, Mighty Bambino Winter Cup uh, last year at Wilton Mill. Number 42 looking down the inside. Jack Harney going for the lead of the race on Ethan Robinson. Ethan Robinson will try and fight back. Mentioning Wilton Mill, we have got coverage here on Alpha Live of the British Kart Championships round at Wilton Mill today. So uh, also wrapped up here at Nuts Corner. Do go check that out. Some great uh, racing going on there, I'm sure. All the content here on Alpha Live you can watch back for free. Do make sure that you've Click that subscribe button and the notification bell as well so you don't miss uh, a single broadcast. Plenty of uh, racing and sporting action coming up across the uh, course of the rest of August and into September. Midway point of this race then for the Bambinos. Jack Harney leading by half a second ahead of Ethan Robinson. Lewis Hazlitt uh, forming the third part of this trio at the front of the order. Three seconds clear of Callum McVeigh just behind. Uh, Ryan Armstrong, Amelia Dial, and Miles Purcell, the seven runners uh, out there for the Bambinos at the moment. Good scrap actually going on between Armstrong and Dial over fifth place. Uh, less than two tenths between them uh, when they last came over the line. Ethan Robinson, I've really been impressed by this race so far from Ethan Robinson taking a step up from yesterday and he's hassling the back of Jack Harney's number 42 here and not letting him gallop away uh, with this race victory. Just kind of find the time. He's going to try and go through the outside. Harney will hold that inside line. Is there a run underneath for Robinson? Not quite this time. The new fastest lap of the race so far from Ethan Robinson. A minute 18.969. Armstrong and Dial still very close together as well for fifth place. And a tenth between them as they came over the line there. A minute 23.01, minute 23.1 being run by Armstrong and Dial uh, at this precise moment. Callum McVeigh still running strongly also in fourth place. Bit on his on his own. Not to matter. Good points being scored for the seven-year-old on his debut here in his first competitive, uh, full competitive year. Won a couple of races so far. Would love to uh, win the IGP. I'm very much keeping uh, that dream alive at the moment with these performances in the number 75. Here's this battle that we've been talking about between Ryan Armstrong and Amelia Dial. This is over fifth place. Dial looking strong there as they come off the hill. Five minutes and 20 seconds of this race gone by. So I reckon there's going to be two more laps here. Yes, the leader's just come over the line. Jack Harney still ahead of Ethan Robinson. The gap is 0.7 of a second. Dial to the inside. Here's Amelia Dial going to have the speed down the straight, trying to get in as much an aerodynamic position as possible. Good strength there from 
Ryan Armstrong towards turn number one. That's what it's looking like at the moment. The number 27 car to Familia Dial. The way it's been driven. A bit stronger in the corners. Ryan Armstrong's got the speed down the straights. Hold on to this position at the moment. Miles Purcell uh, running around as well. He's there in seventh place, picking up some more points. Time up then. So the next time the leaders come over, start finish, the last lap board will come out. Jack Harney looking in control of this race now. And uh, in fact, Lewis Hazlitt is now giving Ethan Robinson something to think about. Number 33, the uh, Lewis Hamilton replica helmet there, closing in, really has closed in on uh, Ethan Robinson, pushing the number 36 down the straight. Maybe just thinking it's not all over yet in terms of trying to catch up to Jack Harney. 1.1 seconds is the gap uh, as they go on to the final lap. Good thinking there from Lewis Hazlitt, and they have closed. Look at how much. Oh, spin! Off goes Ethan Robinson. Off goes Ethan Robinson trying to get it. Circuit does a full 360 in turning circle. Uh, I think he has held on to third place because Callum McVeigh was 10 seconds behind. That was very strange. I think Jack Harney just a little bit of speed off of turn number three. It caught Robinson out. So he did very well to avoid, but had that moment into the grass. There is the number 33 of Lewis Hazlitt. And I'm just looking, where is the number 42? I think the 33 has got through into the lead. So Lewis Hazlitt was right to push on. Yes, he has. So Lewis Hazlitt is going to come round here, take another heat victory. A slightly strange finish to this race, but Lewis Hazlitt pushed on. Didn't give it up. He's going to come around the final corner. And after six minutes plus one lap, it's going to take the third heat of the weekend in the Bambinos. Very good result there for Lewis Hazlitt. And the provisional re result will read like this. Lewis Hazlitt from Jack Harney. Third will be Ethan Robinson uh, across the line. Fourth for Callum Bay. And then fifth place, I think he's going to be held on to by Ryan Armstrong. Maybe Dial there in sixth place and then Mars Purcell will be the last of the drivers over the line to finish in seventh place. What drama there on the last lap of the Bambinos. And uh, we'll see them once again uh, later on this afternoon. And that is the last of, uh, in this first rotation of the day, of the non-gearbox cars. And we said it earlier, we're switching from one thing to something completely different, and we're going to do that again uh, as we get ready for the first appearance of the day for the Gearbox Supercarts. 125 Supercarts, they are out next. Well, hold on to your hats, ladies and gentlemen, because it's Supercar time here at Nuts Corner. Here is your grid uh, for the fourth heat of the weekend. Uh, for the 125cc gearbox starts. Dara Cormick has pole position uh, for this one. Ross with row alongside on the front row. Scott Greenaway and Mick Dunyon start on row number two. Kevin Shine and uh, Brian McGinnis start there on the third row of the grid. Ian Walsh and Danny Highland on row number four. The three heats held so far this weekend for the 125cc Supercarts. Their point standings overnight look like this. Dara Cormick leads uh, with three from three. Uh, 75 points scored so far for Cormick. Ian Walsh in second place in the number 39. Uh, he's on 52 points. One point ahead of Danny Highland, the number 19, uh, who's three points ahead of the number 24 of Ryan McGinnis. One point ahead of Ross Ritherow in the number 55, Kevin Shine, McDunion, Scott Greenaway complete those who've scored points. Peter Crossan uh, has not taken the start of any race so far in the number 54, but there is Peter Crossan. So they're looking to get some points on the board. Is the driver in the number 54. Very close, you've got to say, though. Run from second down to uh, eighth. 
11 points covering uh, Ian Walsh down to Scott Greenaway. And you'll now notice that we are on the different layout now. The outer ring here at Nuts Corner. Thanks to our sponsors for this category, Kennedy's uh, Nisa in Ballyboggy. And drivers in this category as well, racing for the Terry Wilkinson Memorial Trophy. Thanks once again for, uh, that goes to Keith Wilkinson of Wilkinson Design. Response for both the junior and senior driver of the awards. And if you've never watched Supercarts before, well, as I say, I think you're in for a bit of a treat here. These machines are fast. These drivers are very brave. Uh, I think I'd need a fair amount of talking to to uh, get in one of these myself. But they are a lot of fun to watch race, particularly here uh, at Nuts Corner. The grid forming up, it will be six minutes plus one lap once again. So we are ready to go on this path. I think we are. Uh, no, we're not, because the green lights uh, are not on there. Plenty of content coming up here on Alpha Live over the uh, the coming weeks. And so we've got the British Car Championships at Wilton Mill uh, today. All racing to come in uh, across the day. Hello to Declan Whelan. Cheering on Jack Harley in that uh, previous race that we saw. Keep comments uh, coming in. Hello to uh, Annie Kilgannon. He's cheering on Kevin Shine, who's uh, due to be out in this one. Look out for cart number 22. Right there, right on cue. Thank you, guys. Uh, Kevin Shine there in the blue suit. Uh, oh dear, I think there's a problem for Scott Greenaway there. That's the number 17. Appears to have lost drive and I think he's out of this race before it's even started. So that is not good news for Scott Greenaway. I think now we are ready to go for this one in the 125cc category. Green light and away we go for six minutes plus one lap. Looks like there's a problem straight away there for... Ryan Maginis, the number 24, has not got up to speed. Out they go, onto the far side of the circuit, up over the hill. Out onto the back straight they go. And over the top of the hill they come. Look at the sheer speed that these carts have. Our oh, cameramen are going to have to do very well to keep up. With these but uh, end of lap number one then here they all come it's seven of them still remaining in this race it is the 55 of ross witherow who leads at the end of lap number one dara cormick the event leader so far is there in second place cart number 49. We also have noted the uh the different styles of bodywork on these cars some of them running uh, aerodynamic devices Moving down the back straight past the race control buildings, they go. And this high speed right hand corner, lots of commitment. Uh, so, it's a very brave set of drivers uh, who pilot these machines. Along the straight they go. Still with a row ahead of Cormick. Cross on in third. Ian Walsh in fourth place. Kevin Shine is currently the fastest driver out there in fifth place. You see him once again there in the blue suit. Trying to break away from Mick Dunyon behind and uh, Danny Highland. 1.2 seconds, whole 1.2 seconds covering the field at the moment. One and a half minutes gone. Let's see Withrow there. Still leading the race, number 55. Blue bodywork, red suit and white helmet. This time, look at Cormick going to the outside. Thinks he's got a run on the race lead. They're going to go side by side through turn number one into the big breaking zone of turn number two. Well defended by Witherow there. And Peter Crossan not too far behind as well in the number 54. Crossan is currently the fastest driver out on circuit. Holds the fastest lap of 36.962. This is a great response from Peter Crossan, who we mentioned earlier, hasn't had any point score so far. And he's got second place. He's got through past Dara Cormick. So Dara Cormick... Uh, having things not his own way at the moment. First time we've said that this weekend. 
And we start finish the O once again. Still with row leading. And oh, round goes with row. Round goes with row out the lead. Can he get going again? I think he's lost the engine. Now I'm not sure whether there was a touch of contact there. It was very close between Witherow, Crossan and Cormick as they headed into the braking zone. Well, that is a real shame for Ross Witherow. Out of the race, was leading, was looking pretty comfortable with the close pack behind. But that incident takes him out of contention. Yellow flag out then for Witherow. Dara Cormick is your new leader. Ian Walsh has got through into second place in all of that. In cart number 39, Peter Crossan still holding in third place. Kevin Shine and Danny Highland both gained a position up to fourth and fifth places respectively. Danny Highland is now the fastest driver out there on circuit in the number 19. Ian Walsh has had two second places so far this weekend, but here once again, Comes Peter Crossan, or at least has a think about it. Darts one way, then darts the other. He's going through, I think, in two second place. He's going to be on the outside now. Uh, Witherow's cart has been cleared. I think it has got going again. As he's circulating on timing. And he's now down in seventh position. Four minutes of this race gone. So much has happened in it already, and we've still got time remaining. As, oh, big massive moment there for the number 22 of Kevin Shine. It was deep on the brake, squirrelling around. Did very well to hold on to that. Peter Crossan just ahead. Uh, I just see a technical warning flag. I didn't quite see who it was going out to. The boards were being uh, replaced there. There's a cart ahead. I think it might be Mick Dunyon who's had a problem. And yet yeah, he's got his hand in the air to say... Got a problem. Good driving there from McDunion just to keep out of the way of the race leaders. Just over a minute on time to go. Still Dara Cormick leading after the, the uh, change of lead. The demise of Ross Witherow that we saw earlier on in this race. Ross Witherow has now got back up to speed and is the fastest driver in the field. 36.63. I mean, he will argue that based on that pace, he... You know, he could have won this race had he not had that incident. As Oh dear, round there, is that Kevin Shine? Kevin Shine has spun, coming on to the back straight. So Kevin Shine is going to be out of this one as well. Didn't quite catch what the cause of that was, but the distinctive blue suit of Shine uh, facing the wrong way there. Near laps of this one to go. He's going to change for the lead. It's to the front goes Ian Walsh. So Ian Walsh through in cart number 39. Crossan has got through as well. The yellow flag out, I presume, for Kevin Shine and his cart. So I don't think he's got going again. That is a shame for Kevin Shine. Was on for some good points. You can see him off there uh, behind the Armco barrier to the right. And change for the lead again as Peter Crossan goes around the outside. So Crossan takes the lead then. And uh, this may well be the final lap. The time is up. We've had six minutes on the clock. Well, this will be some return. As all oh, down the inside goes Cormick. Dara Cormick got brave on the brakes. Retakes the lead. Before they get to the yellow flag zone as well. That was a crucial move. I think Ian Walsh has slipped through as well. It's been a fascinating first race of the day in the supercarts. That camera shot just gives you an idea of the speed of these machines over the brow of the hill. Can it be another win for Dara Cormick? We'll wait to see whether it is the chequered flag on this lap. Across the line they go. And there indeed, Dara Cormick takes the race victory by less than quarter of a second ahead of Ian Walsh. Pisa Crossan points on the board for Crossan in third. Fourth for Danny Highland. Ross Witherow will be somewhat disappointed. Had some great pace in that race. But that incident down uh, going into the first braking zone was the really, really big one. That put him there in fifth place. Mick Dunyan comes home in sixth place and then two retirements. Kevin Shine span out there in seventh place and Ross, uh, Ryan McGinnis 
in eighth. Scott Greenaway was a did not start. We're going to move swiftly on because we've got the 250ccs lined up on the grid. They're up next. Two fifty CC supercarts out next, and the last race of this uh, uh, of this rotation. Peter Deary has pole position, and with a row alongside on the front row, Richard uh, Richard Dewitt and Liam Fox on row two, Warren Deary and Com uh, Byrne there on row number three, and then we have Brian Jones and Colin Maneri on row number four. Colin Armstrong completing the carts running in this category uh, situation so far this weekend alan witherow has had two wins from three so far and leads with 70 points colin mineri uh, is in second place 11 points back on 59 liam fox uh, is in third place on 52 and then uh colin burn is in fourth place on 43 points actually tied on 43 points with warren deary in the number 18 there he is uh, sixth place for brian jones at the moment in the number 43 on 34 points but didn't score any points in the first race of the weekend likewise for colin armstrong on 29 points in seventh peter deary uh, in eighth point uh, eighth place on 16 points similarly uh did not Competing one of the heats that was heat number two, and Richard Dewitt in ninth place has only had one point score so far this weekend. So, the fastest carts that we've got here this weekend the 250cc super carts, bigger machines than what we've seen before. A lot of work on the aerodynamics of these carts as well, and uh, quite a few drivers in this race. Uh, returning as well, particularly Colin Byrne, uh, three-time Irish 125cc champion. And, uh, back in racing action here in 2020, after a few years away. After this race, we'll go back to the start of our rotation program for the second set of heats here today. But we don't want to quite get there yet, because we've got a very... Uh, anticipated 250cc running here. I was just going to get their tyres up to temperature. Number 16 of Peter Deary there in the uh, red and yellow. It looks like we are away in racing. Yep, green flag in the air. Time ticking. Away we go for six minutes plus one lap. Up the hill they go then. I think it's been a good start for Alan Witherow, current points leader. On the top of the hill, they go, and already two streaking out at the front of the order. Number 43 of Brian Jones has had a good start as well there. Brian Jones, who you mentioned, had a retirement and not score in the first race. Just looking to gain points back through. There's Liam Fox in the number three, multiple Irish uh, champion and GP winner, the 54-year-old from Moira. So Witherow leads the IGP plate holder. Quarter of a second ahead of Brian Jones in number 43. Number three of Liam Fox, then ahead of Peter Deary, Colin Maneri. And there in fifth place, Colin Deary completing the top six at the moment. And the sound of these cards again, similar to the F100s, high revving, High power, high performance here in the 250ccs. Brian Jones and uh, Alan Witherow. In the early stages of this race, don't want to fight too much. They've got a good gap to those behind. 3.5 seconds back to uh, Liam Fox, who is dropping Colin Maneri. But in fact, Brian Jones, is he looking down the inside, going for the lead of the race, thinks about it as they come down the back straight. Witherow holds that challenge off. And of uh, lap number three, Steve Witherow, the IGP plate, uh, number 27 uh, in your programs at the circuit. 
Still leading this race ahead of Brian Jones. Look at how hard the tyres are having to work there, particularly as they sweep uphill onto the back straight through that right-hander. Uh, Liam Fox is coming into this, though. That's a very good lap last time around from Liam Fox. 35. Oh, it's off! Off goes Witherow! Oh, and into the gravel! My goodness me! Alan Witherow, the event leader, the race leader, makes the mistake. And, uh, well, that is well and truly his chances of winning this particular heat done. A very surprising development in this, the uh, fourth heat of the weekend. Brian Jones inherits the lead of the race. 3.1 seconds clear of Liam Fox and has also just set the fastest lap of the heat so far. Uh, first driver to dip into the 34s, but my goodness me, that is not what I was expecting from Alan Witherow, who is looking Again, comfortable, looking in control, was aware of, of Brian Jones being there, but all in all, looking good, makes the mistake. And this circuit, oh, that just shows that he's still trying to get the cart going. He's fallen the whole lap down. Two minutes and 40 seconds on the clock remaining. That really throws open point standings across the five heats. Uh, for the 250cc supercarts, an 11-point lead is uh, is what Alan Witherow had at the start of this race. That is definitely going to diminish now. Uh, his closest challenger before this race, Colin Maneri, is now up into third place. Some seven seconds behind Liam Fox. The pace of the front two uh, looking very well matched. Side by side here go the number 42 and the 18. Uh, this is over fifth place, and Colin Byrne has got through there. Good speed from Byrne. Goes past Deary before they get to the first braking zone. Colin Byrne, the 42-year-old from County Kildare. Loving being back here in the supercarts racing once again. Ian Fox closing in, though, and still time... Remaining in this race, end of lap number seven, the gap is down to 2.7 seconds, and Fox once again has set the fastest lap of the race. Talking tenths here and there, we've already seen one leader uh, lose it whilst racing on the edge. You never know in supercarts. Drama is never too far uh, away there. Well, so we've not talked about in a while. Uh, Peter Deary is still running well in fourth place at the moment. Part number 16. Now you see Alan Witherow has got going again, but he's, he's now two laps down on, on Brian Jones. So Brian Jones still your leader, number 43. There he is. And Fox 2.6 seconds behind. And I think there will be... Oh, uh, Jones just ran over a piece of debris there. Hope that doesn't cause him any trouble. Three more laps by my reckoning, because at the moment they're doing 34s and 35s. They will come round uh, with a few seconds on the clock next time around. There is, once again, uh, your race leader in the back of shot. Number 16 of Peter Deary, running in fourth place. Race leader checking over the shoulder. Then Liam Fox is closing here. Is faster. 1.9 last time around. Now 1.8. But again, I think there's just not enough time. Unless Brian Jones makes a mistake for Liam Fox to close in uh, and press that victory away from Brian Jones. Brian Jones will see the last lap board next time around. There is the uh, recovering IGP plate of Alan Witherow. Brian Jones' best results so far uh, this weekend. Scored 18 points in uh, in the second heat. It's for third place. We'll be very, very pleased uh, with this race so far. But Liam Fox, that's a big lap from Liam Fox. 1.2 seconds. And in fact, there's a bit of traffic coming into play here. We are on the final lap of the race. Brian Jones has still got work to do here in the number 43 to try and win this race. Liam Fox in the number three. It's there in second place. Going round over the top now. I believe this is the, fast, uh, the last lap for 
Brian Jones, and that is how close it is. Yes, they have had to deal with traffic, but I think this time Brian Jones is going to come across the line, take the race victory, a first race victory of the weekend, and he takes it by 0.9 of a second ahead of Liam Fox. Colin Maneri is going to finish in third place. Good point there for Colin, and uh, a big boost as well with the demise of Alan Witherow midway through that race whilst in the lead. Uh, Colin Maneri will close in that point gap that we had at the start of this race. Fourth place for Peter Deary. Uh, fifth place will be going to Colin Byrne. Alan Witherow, I reckon, will be classified in sixth place. Might be kicking himself after that error. Thinking what might have been having led that race in the early stages. Uh, Warren Deary, I believe, was a retirement. Finishing and classified seven laps down. Colin Armstrong was a did not start. Well, after that frantic 250cc supercarts race, that is the first rotation of heats uh, done for uh, the morning, early afternoon session here at Nuts Corner. And we're going to go and start uh, the second one, I believe, straight away. So back to the start of the order that we uh, read through earlier. Uh, so actually, no, just before we do that, we'll read through. So if you are tuning in and wondering when your category or category that you're interested in is coming up this will be the order for the second rotation senior rotax followed by junior x30 junior rotax rotax 177 iarmy cadet minimax honda cadet f100 and bino that will complete the non-gearbox runners and then 125 cc's and 250 cc's in the same order as we've had so far today Without further ado, as the 250cc's come into post-race scrutineering, let's head to our next race, the final heat uh, of the weekend, ahead of the final for Senior Rotax. So here we go then for the final heat of the day, final six minute plus one lap race uh, for senior Rotax Max. James Gilliland has pole position for this race. Daniel Conlon joins him on the front row. Simon Allen and Shane O'Leary on row two. And then we've got Dylan Tweete and Zach Lecky on row number three. Gary Blair and Ben McFall start on row four. Zach Rogers and uh, Pierce uh, Murta there on row number five. Gary Turkington and Neville Bell start on row number six. Nathan Glenn and Johnny Clyde on row seven. Aaron Walker and Keith Biggerstaff on row eight. Jason Hetherington and Philip Maguire start on the ninth row of the grid. And then we find Kyle Price and Eamon Faulkner on row 10, Tin and Clark, and Connor Smith uh, on row 11. This category sponsored by Nuts Corner Circuit. And our biggest field of the day. And I'm just going to scroll through to remind myself how we're looking so far. Okay, we've not had the updates of the points uh, from uh, race number four earlier. Uh, but uh, I say very good stuff here so far this weekend from uh, the senior Rotax drivers. If you're enjoying the content so far and you're enjoying the racing, do leave the stream uh, with a, uh, pressing that like button. I say don't leave the stream. Stay with us. Stay with us here as uh, we run through this second course uh, of heats here today. And a reminder as well, these will again all be six minutes plus one lap. And then when we get on to the finals, it will be nine minutes plus one lap. So the carts and the drivers getting ready there for this next race. And you see the number 26 of Daniel Conlon is being placed down onto the ground there. He's been racing for over 10 years, 29 year old from Donnerstown. He's never won uh, an Irish Carts Grand Prix. It's looking to change that here this weekend. It's been racing pretty well so far. Uh, has Conlon. Just fourth place in points overnight. OK, 
out for Gary Blair as well. You should see him in the background, cart number 32, uh, running on the LN cart. Lando Norris livery there as the number 27 uh, as well of Simon Allen. Currently running in third place in the uh, NIKA Championship. The 36-year-old uh, based in Kesh. Zach Leckie as well. And his second year of racing, number 20. The cart of Ben McFall just being put into position there. Yep, number 43. One for one of Zach Rogers uh, as well. Other stories that we've got here this weekend uh, in this category. Johnny Clyde, look out for Johnny in the number 12. Uh, the uh, winner of this event in junior T TKM back in 2003 uh, was also uh, an NIKA senior max champion in the mid to late 2000s, twice in 2007 and 2008 and uh, returned in 2000 for a 12 year break away. So there's quite a few stories like that in, in this category which is really really cool to see. We mentioned Gary Blair earlier, another driver who'd uh, been away from karting for 13 years, the two time uh, Irish Kart GP winner. The field looking like they're about ready to go then for this one. There's the number 10 of uh, Dylan Tuite. It's raced in uh, this category since 2019's edition of the Irish Kart Grand Prix. For one of Zach Rogers there as well. The drivers are looking calm though. This heat, very important. It's the last opportunity for these drivers to get points on the board. Maybe they're trying to defend a holding position on the grid high up the order. Maybe they're trying to recover, gain themselves up a couple of rows ahead of that all-important final later on today. There's a the number 11 of Philip Maguire who had a spin uh, in the first heat that we saw earlier on today. The number 54 of Eamon Faulkner as well. A couple of novices that you will note at the back of the order. Those with the black background uh, on their number board. This driver's out on their formation lap then. Final heat of the weekend ahead of the final later on this afternoon for Senior Rotax Max, sponsored by Nuts Corner Circuit Propel 2 our event sponsors uh, Pitstop Motors, NI and uh, Wilkinson Design for their backing of the Junior and Senior Driver of the Day Awards. Will we see a Junior Driver of the Day from this category? The biggest category that we've got here in terms of an entry at Nuts Corner for the 2022 Irish Kart Grand Prix. Andrew Mather on commentary for you. You're watching coverage and streaming provided to you by Alpha Live, the live stream professionals. We are ready to go then. Six minutes on the timer. Six minutes plus one lap will be the order for this race. The number 35 of James Gilliland. Big opportunity this for James Gilliland. He's been in good form so far this weekend. They are away and racing. They turn hard right through turn one. Not left as we've seen there with the gearbox carts for the last couple of races. All looking good so far for the senior Rotax drivers through the first couple of corners. Very clean start once again here in this uh, set of heats. That too far is what we've seen so far this morning. It's very good to see number 32 there uh, of Gary Blair. Looking to gain some positions. There's a couple of carts off towards the back of the field, or at least they've lost some time there. I'll try and track through who uh, those drivers are in a short while. Last couple of corners here on lap number one. Everyone jostling for position, trying to find a way through. The temperature will have just turned up a little bit ahead of this one. Conlon ahead there of Gilliland. Whereas before, drivers may have, may have gone for moves that have, have got a higher percentage, not gone for those 50-50s. In this, the final heat. Got a job to do. Can't wait around. But... Uh, 
Doesn't quite have the ferocity of a final, but we are getting there. Is that Rogers there? The 1 4 1 moving up through the order. But there are your two leaders Daniel Collin, number 26. James Gilliland, number 35. Zach Blackie's had a good start as well as up to third place uh, after that first lap. Cart's number 20. He's been overtaken actually now by uh, number 43 of Ben McFaul, who similarly uh, moved up a number of positions off the start. Uh, Shane O'Leary's still there in fifth place. He has moved up through the order at the start of this one. Gary Turkington once again is on the move in the number 61 as there's a driver warning flag there to uh, Piers Murta, the number 33. So Conlon leading from Gilliland. McFall, Leckie, O'Leary and uh, Tuite. As, oh, down the inside there. Goes for fifth place. That is Dylan Tuite in the number 10. Looking in good form. Took the first heat victory uh, of the weekend yesterday. The 20 year old from Dundalk is uh, doing very nicely indeed. Two and a half minutes of this race gone so far. Approaching the halfway distance in it. Shane O'Leary there in the number 50. He's got to work hard now. There's a swarm of carts behind his rear bumper looking to get through. Checks over the shoulder. Sees the number 95 Nathan Glenn there who's had a good day so far. Nathan Glenn has got through. On the inside there is the number 33 of Piers Murta. Everything's clean. Gary Turkington also now goes past him. Poor Shane O'Leary. This is often the problem when you get in a sprint race situation. You get one driver moving through, and there's a pack behind. They, you know, they, they anticipate that slight weakness and uh, go for the moves themselves. They don't want to be stuck behind a driver that they perceive to be slow. It isn't always the case that they are slow. It's, it's just a part of the, uh, the uh, mind games of this kind of racing. Shane O'Leary is just going to get back in the groove now, prove that he's got the pace, show that he's got the speed to uh, be up in this position. Driver is currently fourth in the championship uh, in the Irish Karting Championship, so he's no slouch. There's Gary Turkington, 41-year-old from Portadown. It's almost guaranteed a good spot uh, towards the front of the order with the results gathered so far but Turkington will want to try and get onto pole position hold on to that lead in the points tallies that he held overnight he's coming there in 8th place Masters driver out of the circuit at the moment I can say is Nathan Glenn a couple of spots ahead in 6th uh, in spot James Gilliland uh, and Daniel Conlon still leading at the front of this order Ben McFall and Zach Leckie working together as well Third and 4th place really is down to the likes of Tuite and Glenn and Murta and Turkington. They've got to keep working, closing in those gaps. They've not got long to go now. One minute and 15 seconds on the clock. James Gilliland leads number 35. There has been a change for that lead. As down the inside there goes the number 95. That's Nathan Glenn continuing to move up through the order, getting past Zach Leckie this time. And uh, Dylan Tuite will look to try and get through as quickly as possible as well. Again, this is tr tricky for Leckie now, because he's got to fend off those behind. There is your race leader. Now there's an interesting situation, and right on it, McFall down the inside, takes second place away from Daniel Conlon. Now, has Daniel Conlon got a touch of damage? The rear bumper on the left-hand side looked a bit down to me. Is that causing a bit of drag for Daniel? Yes, it is. And he's received a meatball. He's out of the race. He's out of the race. Daniel Conlon, and just like that, the day completely turns for Daniel Conlon down the inside now. That's the 33 of uh, Piers Murta going down the inside of Ben McFall. And his race has come alive now. Penultimate lap. Time about to uh, tick over. 10 goes down the inside there that's uh, Gary, Tur Gary Turkington's got a loose rear bumper as well our driver's having problems out there getting too heavy with the kerbs perhaps 
That rear bumper for Turkington is pretty much as bad as what we saw for Daniel Conlon, and we've just seen him go in the pit. No problems at all, though, here for James Gilliland. This is a big move, really big move from James Gilliland. Could well give him pole position for the final. Last lap board will be shown now, I believe. And yes, Turkington has had a, has a meatball flag. So Gary Turkington is going to be out of this race as well. Puts his hand up, acknowledges uh, what's happened. That is big. That is really, really big. Last night's leader is not going to get a big points haul here in the fifth and final heat. James Gilliland. Not necessarily. Well, we've seen the, uh, the meatball, uh, the orange disc on the black background, the mechanical flag being shown there. I don't think you'll fully appreciate perhaps just how much has happened behind him in this race. That won't bother him though. Two seconds in the lead ahead of Ben McFall. Just what he would have wanted as there's another cart out of this race as well which we'll track through in a minute. James Gilliland comes out of the final corner and takes a big, big win in the final heat for senior Rotax and wins it comfortably ahead of Ben McFall in second place, Nathan Glenn in third, Piers Murta in fourth place, Dylan Trute in fifth place, Zach Leckie sixth, Zach Rogers in seventh, Shane O'Leary eighth, Johnny Clyde ninth, ne uh, Neville Bell uh, in tenth place, Keith Biggerstaff in eleventh, good result there for Jason uh, Hetherington in twelfth, Simon Allen thirteenth, Aaron Walker fourteenth, Philip McGuire fifteenth, I say a number of retirements and um, uh, drivers with problems in that one. Eamon Fulton comes over the line in 16th place. And then I think Turkington uh, is going to be beaten to there by Tim Clark. Turkington, Conlon, Connor Smith, Gary Blair was out of that race as well. We didn't spot that one. So some big, big names did not make it to the end of that race. We will see later on how that shapes up the final starting grid for Senior Rotax. Their final of nine minutes plus one lap will be later on this afternoon. We're going to move on, though, to the next category, fifth and final heat of the weekend coming up next for Junior X30. Here we go then, here's the grid for Heat 5 for Junior X30. Adam Holmes has pole position, Luke Agnew alongside on the front row, Holly Dunyon and Connor Grant form up row 2, Nadine Kavanagh and CJ Bennett on row 3. James Wood and Cody Keogh due to go from row 4 for this category sponsored by James Irvine Monumental Sculptors. There is the number 44 of Luke Agnew. Sun out here. Uh, in Northern Ireland, at Nuts Corner, near Belfast. Hope you're continuing to enjoy the racing here today. The drivers out on circuit for their formation laps. That's the, uh, the wrong result that's just come up uh, on uh, on my screen. James Wood, that's who I was wanting to talk about. James Wood, uh, interesting race this because it's the one where James goes from the back. How quickly can he get through the order? Can he get up to Luke Agnew? Luke Agnew will be looking for another race victory to join the tally that he started yesterday in heat number one. Starting from the front row of the grid. No better opportunity than this. Here we go then. For six minutes plus one lap in Junior X30. Revs rise and away we go then. This is a good start for those at the front of the field. In fact, a particularly good start for Adam Holmes. Really got the run off the lights there. He's got a couple of cart length lead as they go through turn two and now into turn three at the start of this one. Everyone looking good. Everyone looking they're pointing in the right direction. Clean start for the runners here in Junior X30. Uh, to confirm Cody Keogh uh, is not a start. It's a shame that Cody's not been able to race 
uh, this weekend. Over the top of the hill they go then. Down the inside. Good move there. I think that may have been uh, Agnew having a look at it at least. Indeed it was. Now the final corner they come then. Look at how hard Holmes. Well, Holmes had that good start. Had, a, a, say, a couple of cart length lead, but he's been reeled in already. It's going to look like to, he wants to fight this one. It's not often seen. Oh, but Agnew's going to get a good run down the inside. And yet Holmes, there's nothing he can do about that. Number 54 of Conor Grant has come through as well. I was about to say you you don't often see a driver try and defend one out uh, from uh, more than, I'd say, two or three minutes, but I have seen it done. You've got to be so, so precise with the cart positioning. And also, oh, it was round there, half round there. Good save, actually, from uh, Holly Dunyan. And cart number 25. Just to finish that point, sometimes you do see a driver start at the front and go, right, I am going to defend this, I'm going to defend this hard and try and hold it out for five or six minutes or more. But it is so, so difficult to do. And unfortunately for Adam Holmes, didn't get across there, didn't get the inside line blocked. Luke Agnew went, oh, I'm coming through here, I'm taking that line and I'm taking the lead of this race. End of lap number two then. James Wood is up to fourth place. We talked about how quickly could he move through the order. It's 1.7 seconds behind the leader. In fact, no, it's 0.8 of a second behind the leader because James Wood has got through past Adam Holmes for fourth place now. So it's Agnew, Grant, Wood, Holmes, Kavanagh, Bennett, Dunyan. That's your one through seven. CJ Bennett will be looking for a better run in this one, having uh, retired from the earlier heat that we saw. Uh, this morning. Also be perhaps on his mind that it was a mechanical failure. Doesn't want to push the cart too much and uh, suffer that same fate. Battle for second place. Connor Grant in the number 54. James Wood in the 58. James Wood closing in. He's going to have a go down into turn one. It's a good drive for Connor Grant off the final corner. No opportunity there for James Wood, but James Wood has set the fastest lap of the race so far, 57.061. Able to hold a tighter line at the moment, it's James Wood. Now he goes down the inside, gets the block passed on. We've seen that a lot today. Brilliantly done by James Wood, up to second place. Up over the top of the hill they go. Scrap going on as well behind. Adam Holmes ahead of Nadine Kavanagh and CJ Bennett. The fourth through sixth. Interesting phase of the race this now. James Wood threw into second place. Can he close in on Luke Agnew? Because if he could, if he could overtake, that uh, wouldn't just be a, a mathematical blow to, uh, to Luke Agnew. I think it'd be a bit of a psychological one as well to see James Wood come through from the back of the field, close in and take a race victory. It's testing times now for Luke Agnew. Has he got the speed to hold out this gap? It's about half a second at the moment. We have seen them be uh, equal on pace at times so far this weekend. But the 12-year-old from Ballyclare in his fifth appearance in the Irish Park GP. Last year's I Army Cadet winner. And uh, down the inside there. That was CJ Bennett going for an overtake on the Dean Cavanagh and getting through. Minute and 20 seconds to go. So yeah, Bennett through past Cavanagh, 35 past the 74. What's that gap looking like at the front of the order? It was 0.45 last time around. It's now 0.32. This is big pressure now. James Wood, another new fastest lap of the race, 56.712, was just over a tenth quicker uh, than Luke Agnew. I think he's got enough time here to close in. That gap is a lot less than 0.3 of a second. Now you can visually see that. Can Luke Agnew hold on to this victory? Wood behind three years is senior, but less experienced in karting is Wood. So he's been racing for a couple of years. 
two more laps, I think, will be the order of things here. So 30 seconds on the clock, more like 20 seconds now, but they will crucially get over the line with some time left on the clock. Yes, they will. And Wood is quicker. You can visually see that. Less than two tenths behind now is James Wood, but trying to get through on this circuit. You may think about the next corner out of turn number three towards turn four. Oh, he's run wide there. That was very, very close to disaster for James Wood. May have even just scraped the tyres on driver's right there. James Wood is pushing, really, really pushing hard. But has he cost himself there? Is he a little bit too far back now to make an impression on Luke Agnew? Luke Agnew has kept this one poised. He's kept it uh, consistent. He's got the track position. Doesn't need to throw this one away. Last lap board is about to come out between Agnew and Wood. This isn't just about 25 points or a heat victory. This is about who can have the upper hand going into the final in this category later on today. Wood lost about a tenth and a half that time around. He's closing again. He gets it right this time through turn number three. Could have a run up into T4. Battle still raging on between CJ Bennett and uh, Nadine Carroll. In fact, no, this is Adam Holmes and CJ Bennett. So CJ Bennett trying to get past uh, for fourth place. Agnew and Wood are on their last lap, 44 and 58. Here they are still, Agnew ahead of James Wood, but it's a lot less than a quarter of a second now. It's probably more like one tenth, but the corners are ticking on by. Opportunities for James Wood are running out. Can Luke Agnew hold on for a big victory in this competition in the final heat. He's going to come out the final corner. Luke Agnew holds under pressure, takes the victory in heat number five ahead of James Wood by less than a tenth of a second. Connor Grant great again in third place. Uh, it's going to be close on the line for fourth, but it is going to be Adam Holmes who holds on to it ahead of CJ Bennett. Nadine Kavanagh uh, finishing sixth and seventh across the line there was Holly Dunyan. Well, that, I think, is going to be a very interesting final to see who's going to take the win in the Irish Cup GP for Junior X30. We'll see it later on this afternoon. Uh, we're going to move on to our next category uh, on the order and there, fifth and final heat. Junior Rotax Max are up next. Time to look through the grid then for Junior Rotax Max. Bobby McFall has pole position uh, in this race. Gavin Dewitt's alongside on the front row. Peter Gilliland and Carter Kelly start on row two. James Robinson and Jack Murta on the third row of the grid. Joe Gardner and James Greer start on row four. And then we find Adam McGibbon and Joseph McMahon there completing the 10 entries here in Junior Rotax Max. Drivers out on circuit then. Look like they're about ready to go for this one. And this category uh, kindly sponsored by KKC uh, Kart Components. Big thanks to them. And uh, just about to be under starters orders then. Or six minutes plus one lap. Away we go then. Good start for those on the pole side of the grid. Anyone with an odd starting number would have gained positions there. The uh, anti pole side of the grid weren't quite on the ball there. As uh, Oh, off the road already is the number 15. Catching a little bit of the grass there did, uh, did James Robinson and it just pulled the number 15 out onto circuits. Kept it in the straight line and kept it running. Oh, out to the 34. So Peter Gilliland after strong pace earlier. And I think it's the, the damage to the rear of the cart as well. Not quite sure what caused that, but Peter Gilliland, this up and down weekend that Peter Gilliland is happening, continues great this morning in the first heat, uh, but a retirement on lap one in the second. So 
We've already had two carts in trouble. We'll flag out round the final corner at least. Let's count them through at the end of lap number one then. There we go, McFall leads. Can we do it in second place? Jack Murtaugh in third, Joe Gardner and Joseph McMahon completing the top five. Good start there for McMahon up from 10th place on the grid. He's going to run there. You see, stranded in the middle of the road. Will not be happy about that at all. And uh, in terms of position for this race, it will be 10th and no more. Still got the final, though. Still got the final to uh, pull back through. So Joseph McMahon has been on great form so far this weekend. This is a great opportunity as it's bunching at the front to take uh, another victory. One, two, three, four, five, six. Leading across the start line. And it looks like Gavin Dewitt's going to try. Well, had a think about going down the inside of Bobby Joe McFall on the last corner. In fact, a bit wide there for McFall off of turn number one. Once again, this has got the very much a feel of a final heat. Everyone is pushing to the limit now as Dewitt's slipping it down the inside. Takes that position away from McFall. Murta is there as well. McFall fights back, retakes the position out wide is Dewitt and Dewitt's going to lose out there. One, two, three, four positions all the way down to sixth. Back down the inside now is the number 20 of Murta. It's all to play for here. McMahon's involved as well. This is a very, very close race and uh, a lot of it is about keeping... Uh, keeping things clean. Don't fall out of this, especially when uh, we've seen one of the big contenders for this weekend uh, not get round lap number one. There is your new leader of the race, Jack Murta. Took a heat win yesterday. And a fairly quiet uh, second or first heat, sorry, uh, of this morning. Murta now leads from McFall, Garden third. Uh, McMahon in fourth, Carter Kelly at the back of this train now, number 14. Trying to work with Gavin Dewitt, who ran wide here. Uh, previous lap. With Jack Murta, 20 years of, uh, sorry, 16 years of age from Belfast. He's previously raced uh, in Honda and Minimax. So moving up here through the Rotax categories. Murta is pulling out at the moment. This is uh, the kind of performances that we've seen from Murta before. Why was awarded uh, Mr. Kart Club's most improved driver last year. Joe Gardner now up to second place as well. Joe Gardner's pace is good at the moment. Also 57.352. So Kart number 36. So the green details there. Running very quickly. Joseph McMahon trying to find a way past Bobby Joe McFall here. It's going to be a run as they go over the top of the hill. Kevin Dewitt's still there in fifth place. And Carter Kelly, similar similar tactical play that we saw from Carter Kelly in the first heat this morning. Just sat at the back of the group, waited for the action to unfold ahead, then start picking those positions off. Did very well, got some good points on the board. Uh, did Carter Kelly in that number 14 cart. End of lap number five then. Jack Murta still leading. As here comes the number 33 of Joseph McMahon. Down the inside, takes the position away from Bobby Joe McFall. Gavin Dewitt's trying to get back down the inside as well. Forces the line in there. Carter Kelly, just as we said, trying to pick up the pieces from those having some issues. Isn't able to get past Bobby Joe McFall then. Now down the inside, takes a good position there. Carter Kelly. The red speed cart there is up to fifth place. In the front though, Jack Murta. Has Jack Murta got the pace to hold off Joe Gardner here because this is some good laps, some good lap times coming in from Joe Gardner at the moment. And there is the number 36. Green and black has closed right in on Jack Murta here. Two laps to go. Near hot, but they will cross the line before it hits six minutes. 
If you're Joe Gardner, then you've got to try and set this up for a last lap uh, move. So this lap is crucial to keep it fast, but also keep it clean. Put yourself in a position to be able to overtake the last gasp lunge on the last lap. Yeah. Touch of a think about it there, uh, going through turn number four, through this tricky part of the course, and now uphill. Maybe just trying to put Murta off there. And in his peripheral vision. Make a leader uncertain. He has closed in once again on this lap. Is he close enough to have a go onto the final tour of the circuit? In this, the final heat for Junior Max. One more race for them after this, and it is the big one, the final. This race will decide the grid for it. Here goes Joe Gardner. What is the gap like as they come over the line? Quarter of a second. Can he get the good run through these couple of corners? These are so, so crucial. They have a chance, perhaps, to turn four, but that is good driving from Jack Murta. Has kept that gap. He's just keeping. Doing something that is always a good trait to see in this kind of sprint race. Clean, consistent pace, holding that gap so that Joe Gardner is just a tad too far away to even have a think about sending it down the inside. Just too risky. Jack Murta trying to hold on for this victory here to take another one. Took heat two yesterday. There's another driver who's same, seemed very relaxed at the wheel. He's going to come around the final couple of corners. And as long as he can get off the final corner, he's going to take a very well-earned victory here. Jack Murta is hitting form just at the right time. Takes heat number five in junior road tax max ahead of Joe Gardner. Joseph Murphy finishes in third. Gavin Jewett recovers to fourth. Carter Kelly in fifth, Bobby Joe McFall in sixth, and then I think across the line next will be Adam McGiven in seventh place. Good points there for uh, Adam McGiven. A couple of retirements in that race. James Greer, James Robinson, and Peter, Peter Gilliland as well. So, the race that started quite dramatically there for Junior Rotax Max calmed down in the second half and resulted in a win for Jack Murta. It's just the kind of news that Jack Murta uh, would have wanted ahead of the final, which we will see later on today. Uh, Rotax 177, their heat, their final fifth heat is up next. Time for Rotax 177 to take to the circuit once again here at the 40th anniversary Irish Kart GP. Mark Vasey has pole position for this heat. Sean Spratt joins him on the front row. Ben McDowell and Johnny McCarthy are there on row two. Samuel Allen and Gareth Greer complete row number three. Daniel Burgoyne having a great weekend so far. Goes from row four in this one. Richard Malcolmson alongside him there. Brian Cherry and Kevin Shine complete the 10 carts running in this race. So this category is sponsored by Ray uh, Sawmills, homegrown timber products. Big thanks to them for their support. If you enjoyed the coverage as well here on Alpha Live and you're new and you haven't yet clicked the subscribe button, that would be absolutely fantastic if you could do so and click the notification as bell so you don't miss a single uh, event here covered by Alpha Live at Double Dash MM across your social media networks as well. If you're enjoying the commentary, so Rotax 177, uh, a senior class, and uh, drivers and carts, minimum weight equating to 177 uh, points. And the scores so far, we have got the scores so far for uh, the full completed. Daniel Burgoyne is your points leader by two points. So this could be a big, big race in terms of who gets pole position for senior uh, Rotax 177. Two points of difference between Goyne and McDowell. There's then a bit of a gap back to Gareth Greer on 59. Uh, there's a, a huge squabble from Gareth Greer, Sean Spratt, Johnny McCarthy, Mark Vasey, Kevin Shine, Brian Cherry. They're all on the 50-somethings in terms of points. This is going to be a big one. Rotax 77 is go for their final heat of the weekend. Big move down the inside there by the leaders. All through turn number two and into turn three as well. This is the kind of race 
if you're in that group from third down to eighth in the points. As, oh, big incident, big, big incident. That's going to be a red flag. And uh, it's the number 71 of Daniel Burgoyne who's involved. It's Daniel Burgoyne and Samuel Allen. And that is not what you like to see. Red flag out, of course, straight away. And uh, I hope both drivers are okay there. As, uh, yeah, you never like to see a ride over, but both carts uh, rolling over there. And uh, that will, of course, bring a pause to proceedings. And as soon as we've got news, we will let you know here in the uh, commentary position. Uh, Connor Johnson asks, uh, when are uh, Minimax, Rotex Minimax, back out again? And you're not going to have to wait too long, hopefully, Connor, because uh, there are two races after this one. So the Rotex 177s, then the I Army Cadets, then the Minimaxes. Hello to Annie again. Uh, best of luck to Kevin Shine uh, from Annie and all the Kilgannons uh, in Sligo. And, uh, well, that is the most dramatic moment I think we've seen so far today. And, uh, as I say, hopefully the only bits that are hurt are the carts. Procedure going through now. Ambulance out on circuit. So if you're just joining us, we're under red flag conditions here at Nuts Corner for uh, an incident involving Daniel Burgoyne uh, and Samuel Allen, believe, on the first lap of this race. Actually, I'm going to change. Actually, no, because we've not had carts come over the start finish line. We did see the 71 and the 77 involved there. 56 of Brian Cherry is there on the grid. Richard Markhamson as well, the number 69, 21. Uh, of Gareth Greer. The drivers just take a moment to catch their breaths. They say the stakes do rise when you get to the final heat uh, of a competition such as this. So the safety crews will be given the time that they need uh, to take care of the drivers and uh, hopefully we will see both uh, Burgoyne and Alan back on the grid very very soon whilst we're waiting for the Rotax 177s to uh, be ready to get going again let's uh, take a short break here on the commentary and be back with more action here for the 2022 Irish Kart GP in a few minutes time Welcome to Alpha Live, the live streaming service where you can be part of the action from home. You can watch via your smart TV, phone, tablet, or even your gaming console. We've got you covered. Just head to the YouTube app on any of your devices and search for Alpha Live. Here, you can watch all of the events as they unfold, or you could choose from our vast library for those lazy days in, all in beautiful HD. Be sure to hit that subscribe button and click on that notification bell so you don't miss out on any future videos.
welcome to Alpha Live, the live streaming service where you can be part of the action from home. You can watch via your smart TV, phone, tablet, or even your gaming console. We've got you covered. Just head to the YouTube app on any of your devices and search for Alpha Live. Here, you can watch all of the events as they unfold, or you could choose from our vast library for those lazy days in, all in beautiful HD. Be sure to hit that subscribe button and click on that notification bell so you don't miss out on any future videos.
Welcome back everybody and we're back underway for racing here at Nuts Corner for the fifth and final heat for Rotax 177. Not a good start for those on the pole side of the grid behind uh, Mark Bracey there. I think Mark Bracey had a, a bit of drive, a bit of a drive issue off the start there. So it means that Sean Spratt has had uh, the ideal start here in this second uh, going of the Rotax 177 fifth and final heat. Effectively a new race. And I can see that uh, it is a race that does not include our two drivers that had the incident brought up the red flag in the first one, that being uh, Samuel Allen and Daniel Burgoyne. As soon as we have uh, confirmed news about the condition of both of those drivers, we will let you know. But a steady start here for the rest of the Rotax 177 drivers. Right, very patient to get this race underway once more. End of the first lap. It is Richard Malcolmson who's leading the race ahead of Sean Spratt. So Richard Malcolmson's had a very good start. And McDowell, uh, who will now just be looking to bring this one home. The, the fight for pole position in this category was very much between. Uh, Daniel Burgoyne, as I say, is not racing now in, uh, in this one. Hopefully we'll see. Uh, Daniel will be going out later on in the final. Uh, so as soon as we know condition details, we'll let you know. Ben McDowell just needs to uh, bring this one over the line now. We'll have pole position. Two points for separating them uh, before this fifth and final race. We're heading down into the last couple of corners here at the end of lap number two. Still uh, Richard Malcolmson leading. Looking good at the moment. Didn't score points from the first race. 0.2 of a second back though to McDowell. McDowell is closing in and uh, there you just see Kevin Shine uh, looking for an overtaking opportunity. Doesn't quite materialise at that specific moment uh, of the race. Just got the number five ahead of uh, him. That is Sean Spratt. He's having a good race so far. Good opportunity this for Sean to gain some good points and been started towards the front of the field. The leaders that running well. Dowell knowing he doesn't need to go out on the full attack, but he has got down the inside there, has taken the lead. So that is a good move for Ben McDowell. And now just look to settle in and run this race out to get pole position for the final later on today. I'm sure we'll of course hope that he is joined by Daniel Burgoyne. So number 21 has a look there down the inside. That's Gareth Greer. 35 years of age. Uh, this is his first kart meeting according to the, the notes. Big thanks to all the drivers who uh, sent in their driver notes. Big helping hand. He's here at Alpha Live. Uh, but Gareth, this, this is his first kart meeting in 12 years. He's uh, competed in a lot of rally cross across Ireland, just hill climbs and kart cross buggy racing as well. And he is uh, on the tarmac, running well at the moment. Here's Gareth Greer in that number 21 kart. Leaders. Coming through the order, this is the uh, scrap for third place. Sean Spratt in the 45. And Kevin Shine there in the 22. So Kevin Shine competing in gearbox category earlier on as well. So he's very much doing uh, double duty here this weekend. Can he find a way uh, past Spratt at the moment. As I just saw a yellow flag out. Not quite sure what that was for. Although I can see that uh, uh, Gareth Greer has come over the line and has lost a lot of time. He's lost some 20 seconds or so. And I think Johnny McCarthy has not come over the line yet. So I think there's a problem there for both of those drivers, Greer and uh, McCarthy. Four and a half minutes on the clock gone. And McDowell He's got the pace at the moment to just hold off uh, Malcolmson. Meanwhile, this fight for third place rages on between Spratt and Shine. Small adjustment being made there by uh, Spratt. He's got some good pace in a straight line. 
set up the number 45 very nicely indeed. Not too far behind this trio. Uh, sorry, not trio, it's duo. Uh, it could be a trio if Mark Facey joins the party. Just saw him flash through shot there. Fifth place at the moment uh, for the man who is the World Formula category winner in 2015 here at RGP. And over the top of the hill they go. Still McDowell leading. 0.6 of a second is now his lead. Richard Malcolmson uh, will likely pull himself up from 10th place with uh, this result if he can get over the line and pass post-race scrutineering of course. Uh, we were looking through some of the results before we got going again. We have seen uh, a couple of issues for drivers across the categories in post-race scrutineering. A couple of disqualifications for being underweight for example. Uh, so there will be some surprises I think in the uh, grid order shakeups later on today. Hopefully no surprises for this driver, Ben McDowell. Looking good at the moment there in the lead of this race. Now is that unfortunately his event, uh, or so far up to this point, his biggest challenge in this event is not competing in this race, that being Daniel Burgoyne. Should be about to see the last lap board. He's just got to bring it around one more time to take the win and take pole position for the Rotax 177 final, which I'll be able to see here later on today. So last lap confirmed then. Richard Malcolmson still there in second place. This has been a really good run from Richard Malcolmson, building in confidence across the course of the weekend. No scored in race one, 10 points in race two, 14, then 15. This is going to be a big step forward for Richard Malcolmson. If he can complete this lap in second place, it's going to be 20 points for driver in carts number 69. Still going on is that battle for third place as well between uh, Sean Spratt and Kevin Shine. Sean Spratt getting back on form here. Start of the weekend very well. Dropped a little bit in the middle. And he's going to be back in the top three here. No, he's not. No, because Kevin Shine's going to get through and take third place on the final lap. Ben McDowell's going to come across the line and take race victory and pole position for the final in Rotax 177. Richard Malcolmson finishes up in a very nice second place there. Kevin Shine gets third on the last lap there ahead of Sean Spratt. Mark Basie will finish in fifth. Brian Cherry in sixth. And then off the back after a problem midway through that race is going to be Gareth Greer. In fact, both of them have retired. They're both four laps down, Gareth Greer and uh, Johnny McCarthy. Two did not start in that race for Samuel Allen. And Daniel Burgoyne, after their incident on the first attempt, which brought out the red flag. There we go. We'll see the Rotax 177 drivers out again later on to uh, to this afternoon we're going to get ready for the next race going out for their final heat next out it's i army cadet i army cadet sponsored by kkc carts components here today at nuts corner let's have a look at their fifth and final grid formation uh, here at nuts corner this weekend for their heat rating. Charlie Blair has pole position. Johnson Stewart joins him on the front row. Jen uh, Jason Park and Brogan McDonald start on row two. Sophie Campbell raced really well in the previous race. And Chad Lamon, who was disqualified for being underweight in the previous one, start there on row three. Andy Stewart and Kenzie McNally start in row four. Big race this for Kenzie McNally, leading in the points at the moment, retired from the first race here today, which was heat number four. James Logan completes the nine entries here in I Army Cadet. Very intriguing situation this. McNally leads by three points over Park. Uh, Lamon a further 14 back. Lost a race win uh, from early this morning due to irregularities in post-scrutineering. Sophie Campbell uh, and James Logan are within uh, a few points of Lamon now. 
has to go for third place. Who's going to take pole position in the I Army Cadet final? This race will decide it. Away we go for six minutes plus one lap in I Army Cadet. And we're nearly four wide as we come off of turn one. My goodness me. Very exciting stuff here at the early stages of I Army Cadet. But it's Charlie Blair leading in cart number 10 as they go through turn number three. James Logan fighting through as well as there's problems for Sophie Campbell. Sophie Campbell who had a great run to third place, which then became second after the disqualification in heat number four, retires on lap number one of heat number five. That is not what she would have wanted. Uh, looks like there's problems as well for Jonathan Stewart, has not uh, come across the line and registered on, uh, on lap number one. But meanwhile, front of the order, Charlie Blair leads. It's a group of four almost, nearly growing up to six. Uh, fighting over this win. Jason Park has had a good start as well. The number 31 there, second at the moment. And uh, Jason will know with the maths that if Jason can win, that is pole position. It doesn't matter what uh, Kenzie McNally, uh, currently leading in the points in this event, does. It's 25 points for a race victory and 20 for second place. A little look there from Jason Park as they approach turn number three. But McNally is there. This has been a good start to the race for Kenzie McNally. Retired on lap number one of the previous heat. He's having a much stronger run here. Already up to third place. And we'll look to take the initiative now. Number 10, a little bit further back. In fact, apologies, it's Chad Lamon at the front of the order now in number 14. So it is the top three on pace so far this weekend leading out front and will look to fight it out amongst themselves so Lamon through this ever going uh, left hander which is very tricky for the drivers at the end of the lap good run for both Lamon and Park that time around catch out a bit ahead of Kenzie McNally Kenzie McNally is the fastest driver though he's got uh, 65.524 is the fastest lap of the race, particularly strong uh, in this first half of the course. See the gains there out of turn number three. He's right under the rear bumper now of Jason Park. That's the circuit very well, does Kenzie McNally. It's leading the Ulster Kart Club Championship by a mammoth 145 points in the, uh, the summer of the season in good form last weekend Port Rush several uh, several race wins in the uh, Northwest Plate competition but what can you do here about Jason Park at the moment just doing the maths in my head uh, the pole position would still be going to McNally by one point so that there is an argument to say that he can just sit here and uh, put the tactical play on Jason Park because it would then mean that Jason Park needs to get past Chad Lamon to get that win which we talked about earlier would guarantee pole position now he doesn't need to do anything at the moment but just put pressure on Park saying that down the inside goes for second place and now it very much is advantage to McNally McNally has got ahead of the closest rival across the course of the weekend so far from the results and is now actually being helped back through now that is very interesting tactical play but tactical play I can absolutely agree with because that was Jason Park pushing Kenzie McNally through getting himself back into second place and moving past Chad Lamon now the situation yes at the moment McNally leading the race having pole position but if Jason Park can get the overtake done on Kenzie McNally this is something you often see in cadet racing working with a fellow competitor with a bit of time to go to isolate them away from the rest of the field take their position in the closing stages is that what Jason Park is trying to do here can can Chad Lamon hold on to these two drivers and keep the number 14 cart in the mix uh, Charlie Blair by the way still running in fourth place could improve a number of positions uh, on the grid with this result is currently sat in seventh place 
Uh, the driver racing in his first year in cadets, eight years old from Ballyclare. You saw Jason there looking over the shoulder. Where is Chad Lamon? Well, Chad Lamon is being dropped. It's too early though at the moment if you're in Jason Park's situation to start attacking for the lead. It's working well at the moment. And if they can drop the number 14, then go for a move on the last lap. That could be what's needed to get pole position if you're in Park's Logan McDonald there in fifth place as well. Actually, no, not anymore. James Logan has just got by. Uh, so James Logan could get the second row of the grid here with these results. I know if that, unfortunately for Sophie Campbell, that uh, she's out of this race, so will likely lose the fourth place in standings that she occupies at the moment. Chad Lamon is not making it easy at the moment for Park and McNally. is still there. Park's having to check over the shoulder to see what the gap is like. It is not big enough at the moment to say yet yeah, that the work is done to push away from number 14 and isolate uh, McNally going on to the final lap. We are about to go on to the final lap now. So it is now, in terms of this pole position for the final, now and ever for Jason Park. Could take the option of just take the front row, guarantee yourself as easy a run in the final as possible. McNally defends. Going to turn two to go. Turn four, you would say, is the best opportunity for Park to go down the inside, as McNally did uh, a few laps ago in the reverse direction. It's coming up now. McNally is aware. McNally will hold to the inside just enough to. Uh, put Jason Park off making any kind of attempt to go down the inside. Can Park get a good run over the top of the hill though? This is another one where we have seen a lot of overtaking so far today in the non-gearbox categories. McNally dealing with the situation. Well, and down the inside, there he goes. Jason Park times it perfectly. He's got to defend now. He's got to get the run off the final corner. They're going to be side by side. Oh, brilliant move by McNally. Back round the outside. Park perhaps defended a little too much, but it's going to be Kenzie McNally's win. Or is it? It's going to be a drag race to the line. It is going to be McNally's on the line. Takes pole position in the I Army Cadet final. A brilliant race between McNally, Park and Lamon. One, two, three across the line. There'll be one, two, three on the grid for the final. Uh, Charlie Blair finishes fourth, James Logan in fifth, uh, Brogan McDonald in sixth, Andy Stewart will come across the line in seventh, and uh, two did not start after technical issues there early on for Johnston, Stewart and Sophie Campbell. Wow, brilliant stuff from Iami Cadet. Their final could be one of the races of the day, a bit of a, a, bit of a show stealer, uh, uh, I reckon, based on what we've seen in the heat so far. This morning and early afternoon, we'll race, of course, later on in the later afternoon session. And now we'll move on from the I Army Cadets. Next out on circuit is the fifth and final heat of the weekend for Minimax. Here's the grid then for Minimax Heat number five. Cole McFadden, Bigger Staff, and Daniel Kilpatrick on the front row. Scott Riley and Evan Purcell on row two. John O'Neill and Jamie Kidney there on the third row of the grid. Charlie Gardner and Evan Johnston go on row four. Lewis Arthur and Scott McGiven complete the 10 runners in this one. Points at the moment for uh, Minimax. Charlie Gardner leads uh, 
by 10 points over Scott Riley. And uh, it's looking good earlier on this morning. Drivers all formed up in the dummy grid at the moment, ready to go out. And you've got to say probably one from three uh, for pole position in Minimax, Gardner, Riley or Daniel Kilpatrick. Johnston in the number 36 and uh, the 88 as well of Lewis Arthur who's in 7th and 8 at the moment uh, Scott McGiven gives us a nice little wave there there were a couple of carts that had breaking uh, broke down in that previous race that's why I think we've got a, a bit of a pause kidney just getting out to stretch his legs a little, little, bit, little bit of a chat there with Evan Purcell. This one could be quite uh, quite an exciting race from the early stages. We've got number 10 there of Daniel Kilpatrick, third in points at the moment in uh, this event up towards the front. There is 85, Scott Riley in second place in points. And uh, they will know that Charlie Gardner in the 65 is further back and they've got to take the initiative early on in this race if they're going to close that gap and overhaul the lead that Gardner has at the moment two heat wins so far uh, this weekend for Charlie Gardner Scott Riley has one uh, Daniel Kilpatrick has the other one Oh, enjoying the coverage here uh, from Nuts Corner. Great to be out here with uh, the whole, whole Alpha Live crew out here today. And uh, what a way to enjoy your Sunday. If you're enjoying the coverage, do make sure that you've clicked that like button. Send in your comments as well. Let us know who you're supporting. Always great to hear from everyone watching at home engines firing up so we're going to be good to go uh, for minimax and their fifth and final heat six minutes plus one lap for what the driver's heading out on circuit now there's scott riley big race this to get back on top here second earlier on this morning uh, in heat number four. That's number 66 of Charlie Gardner as well. So it's not a terrible starting position this for Charlie Gardner in the middle of the pack. And uh, particularly with the field of this size, be able to see the front of the order uh, pretty much straight away. If we can get a good start as well, make life very difficult for Scott Riley and Daniel Kilpatrick. So ready to go then for the final heat for Minimax. Number 22 of Cole McFadden Biggerstaff taking things from pole position. Away we go. Good even start for both those on the front of the grid. It's actually going to be a bit difficult though for P2 because good start for those on the inside. Right hander is going to benefit anyone on the odd side of the grid. Side by side as they all run through turn three. Clean start once again. Good stuff from the Minimax driver. Number 36 of Evan Johnston being forced down there. Jamie Kidney goes by in the number 21. With number 30 of John O'Neill's had a decent start as well. So up the inside there goes Kidney. Brilliant move by Jamie Kidney. Gets past the number 30 uh, of John O'Neill. Already stringing out a little bit at the front of the field here. What is a very important race uh, for context of Minimax here today. I see the number 46 there of Evan Purcell. In the blue suit with the white helmet. So Scott Riley leads at the end of lap one. Daniel Kilpatrick there in second place. Evan Purcell in third. 
Charlie Gardner in fourth. Cole McFadden uh, is in fifth place. So all our big players are at the front of the field as we go on to lap number two. Everyone's still running. The whole field covered by less than five seconds uh, at the moment. As all round there, there's an incident involving the number 66 of Charlie Gardner. So another standings leader in trouble has got going again. Cole McFadden Biggerstaff was involved there as well. A bit of a kick up of the grass uh, for another one of the drivers. That might have been Purcell. Yes, it was. So drama on lap number two. I don't think there was uh, any uh, contacts leading to the initial spin, but that really has change things for Charlie Gardner that has opened up the door for uh, the others for Riley for Kilpatrick I'll look at it again on uh, a moment to see if it was just a driver error yes it was it was just a driver error from Charlie Gardner poor Cole uh, one of the bigger staff I've nowhere really to go in all of that but uh, that has very much changed things now in this category what can the others do? Uh, particularly Kilpatrick has had such a good season so far. He's leading this category in the Ulster Kart Club Championship. And, uh, formerly has been a Honda Cadet uh, champion. Was the winner last year in the Ulster Kart Club in Honda Cadet and uh, the North of Ireland Karting Association Championship. Scott Riley. He's a fourth at here at IGP. Mini T4 World Cup winner at River previously, the 12 year old uh, from Navin. Very experienced level is between these two drivers at the front of the order at the moment. Riley and Kilpatrick separated by uh, and Devon Purcell. A strong race here. He's there in third place. Unfortunately, a little bit too far back from Charlie to be able to overhaul the points deficit that uh, stands at the moment. But he's solidifying a slot on the second row of the grid for the final here with this kind of performance. It's very good to see. Just looking further back, how are those two drivers who we saw spin early getting on? Well, Charlie Gardner's back up to eighth place, closing in on John O'Neill. And Lewis Arthur for six and still get up but back up to maybe about fifth place. Uh, Cole McFadden, uh, bigger stuff is a bit further back. He's in tenth place at the moment. Daniel Kilpatrick, fastest driver on circuit. Quarter of a second behind Scott Riley. Last time around 58.738 for Kilpatrick. In comparison 59.026 for Riley. One and a half minutes uh, on the clock. The moment it's advantage to Riley. But uh, Kilpatrick hasn't given this one up yet. And uh, with the gap that Gardner's got over the rest of the order, it's going to be quite tight, of course, to uh, see with this situation who is going to take the Minimax uh, pole position. would say it's advantage uh, to Riley but especially if Kilpatrick was to be able to get through it, it, it would bring the three of them very very close together on points such is the difference with winning one of these heats with it being 25 points for a heat win 20 uh, for second place it's a big big gain that you get from that one position change and getting to the front of the order Kilpatrick's pushing along here uh, still the fastest driver out on circuit, but Riley's responding. That was a nice lap last time around from Riley, but Kilpatrick's bringing in the pressure again. He's just turning up the wick now on Riley. Both of them were in the 58.7s last time around, but it looks like to me on this lap, Kilpatrick's going even quicker. It's going to be two more laps, I think. It will cross the line. Around eight seconds on the clock to go. And yes, indeed. Kilpatrick... Pops in a 58.738. New fastest lap of the race so far. Scott Riley doing a fantastic job at the moment. 
not panicking. He's aware that Kilpatrick is there. He's checking over the shoulder every now and then. Holding a gap that is big enough for Scott Riley to uh, not come under attack from Daniel Kilpatrick. Evan Purcell still running well in third. Jamie Kidney likewise running well in fourth. Uh, Evan Johnston is there in fifth. Charlie Garner has got back up to sixth place, but at the moment I don't think that's going to be enough for pole position in this category. We're about to go on to the final lap. Scott Riley is uh, leading from Daniel Kilpatrick. In fact, he's had a really monster uh, second half of that last lap, which could be crucial as the last lap board is now out. And uh, for the first time in a few laps, the gap is back above 0.2 of a second. Riley now the fastest driver has maybe just held something in reserve. Controlled the tyres, controlled the temperatures, especially in this middle part of the circuit. We have to ask a lot of the kart setup. Has he played this to tactical perfection? Not many chances now for Daniel Kilpatrick, but there is a big one coming over the top of the hill. We saw some moves be put in here earlier. Some of the great things about this nuts corner circuit, you can overtake round here. You can go for a bold move, but one hasn't come yet from Daniel Kilpatrick. Two more corners to go for Scott Riley to take a big victory in the fifth and final heat in Mini Max. Round the final corner. What a mature drive this has been from Scott Riley. Takes victory in the fifth and final heat for Minimax. Second place goes to Daniel Kilpatrick. We will see both of them at the front end of the grid in the final. Third for Evan Purcell. Very good stuff. Jamie Kidney fourth. Great overtaking early on in that race. Uh, Charlie Gardner does recover to fifth place. So some important points for the driver who led the standings uh, into that fifth and final race. Uh, for the heat race, sixth for Evan Johnston, seventh for Lewis Harper, eighth for Cole McFadden, bigger staff, ninth for Scott McGiven, and retirement for John O'Neill, uh, who will be classified in tenth. Once again, we'll see Minimax in their final later on this afternoon. Let's move on to the next category Honda Cadet and their fifth uh, and final heats are getting ready to go out on track in a few moments' time. Set to go for Honda Cadet and uh, their next heat, their final heat, Declan Noble has pole position for it. Noah McFarlane is alongside on the front row. Charlie Condy and Travis Bailey along the second row of the grid. Archie Condy and Ryan Arthur start on row number three. Harry McDowell and Harry Montgomery are there on row number four. Ewan House, uh, we think already has pole position secured because he's got a big lead in this category it starts this one on row five alongside max colbert uh conan warnock has raced well so far today goes on row six alongside gareth winning 12 carts are in the race so the uh the honda cadet category sponsored by rpm racing engines this is their point scenario going into this final race ewan house uh the s plate scottish champion uh, S-plate holder has a big lead at the moment, 95 points for Ewan House. Uh, it's finished in first position in three of the heats so far this weekend, and the only one where he didn't, he finished second. Declan Noble is in second place in 67, and it's going to be a very, very competitive race for that second spot on the front row of the grid there. Here's Archie Condy, the number 18. He's one of the drivers uh, involved in that battle so it's Declan Noble on 67 Charlie Condy on 64 Archie Condy 62 Conan Warnock 60 Noah McFarlane on 59 Max Colbert on 58 I'm going to cut it off there uh, but you never know Harry McDowell on 52 and Ryan Arthur on 46 could still play uh, play a factor in this race I saw something Great entertaining racing from Honda Cadet uh, earlier on today. And the drivers in dummy grid. There's uh, Harry Montgomery, number 35, second year of racing. Uh, debut here in the IGP. 
Charlie Condy there as well, the number 17 best uh, newcomer uh, in the NI champ, currently leading, that was last year, leading this year's uh, NI champ. And uh, Declan Noble giving us a wave there, very local driver to this circuit, based in Belfast, fourth appearance uh, in the IGP. Actually in a really good position here to try and secure a spot on the front row of the grid. His second in points at the moment, has had a second place so far this weekend. That was yesterday in heat number two. And is starting from the front. So the Honda Cadets out on circuit for their formation lap been with us since the start you know the drill by now six minutes plus one lap and uh, to say although Ewan House has got enough of a lead already that uh, it doesn't need to win this race I am intrigued to see uh, what can House do in the next uh, seven and a half minutes or so once you include the, the, uh, the plus one lap because he's had some great speed so far this weekend the grid forming up then, 12 carts ready to go for the Honda Cadet uh, Honda Cadet category's fifth heat of the weekend. Fifth and final heat. Drives ranging from eight years of age up to 12. Some very strong drivers in here as well. Set to go then for their final heat. And away they do go on the run down to turn number one. Declan Noble holds on the inside. Crucial start for Declan Noble. Oh, very good one and off. Off go two carts there. I think one of them is uh, the, might be no, the number 29. We'll try and track through who it was uh, shortly. Oh, and there's more contact through turn number three. Another cart off. Didn't quite catch which number it was. And there's a three wide situation going towards turn number four. Uh, the number 13 of Gareth Winning was in there. And the 54 of Max Colbert and the 35 of Harry Montgomery. They're all still uh, running midway through this first lap of the race. Green flag's still out there. And there has been a change uh, of lead. In fact, there's another change of lead as uh, Declan Noble goes back down the inside. Cart number 36. It's, uh, Archie Condy in the number 18 who's running in second place. Archie Condy who's now side by side going for the lead here. Harry McDowell's had a, a good start in number 32 and Hewen House as well uh, with the S plate. He's already up to the fourth looking for third, maybe possibly even second. It's all getting very close in there. Good start as well for Conan Warnell. Uh, number 19. Green and white cart there. Sits in fifth place in points uh, ahead of this race. But definitely in that group who could end up on the front row of the grid for the final with the good results here in this race. We're on lap two. Archie Condy leads the race. Archie Condy, of course, had a, a really bad time in the fourth heat of the weekend. The one earlier on this morning uh, had an incident on lap one. Scored only 11 points from that heat. Compare that to... 20 that, uh, that Archie got in the second heat yesterday as, oh, not too happy there is, uh, is Declan Noble as he's overtaken by Warnock. End of lap number two then. On the leading. Dal now up to second place. You in house there in third. What do you think about going through for second place? And Warnock now up to fourth place in Declan Noble fifth. Still a decent position for Declan Noble. And lots of time remaining in this race. And McFarlane has got up to seventh place. Uh, Charlie Condy. Uh, so it just seems at the moment that uh, the two Condys in this race, when one of them has a good race, the other one does not. It's a reverse situation this time around from uh, heat number four earlier on this morning where it was Charlie up towards the front. Has the fastest lap of the race so far, though, has Charlie Condy, 67.280. Pressure now, though, for Archie Condy. 
you and House. Dominant force in this Honda Cadet category so far this weekend. He's right on the tail now. Taking second place away from Harry McDowell on the last lap. And it is a warning there to Archie Condy though. Quite sure what it was for. Saw the uh, black and white diagonal board being held out with number 18 alongside it. And uh, this time Ewan House was. Ewan House has got a much better run off of turn three. It's up the inside and slots in ahead even before they've got to, uh, to the first part of turn number four. Big battle going on between Noble and Warnock there. That's over fourth place. Don't want to be careful though. Don't want to invite Max Colbert back into uh, that battle. Ewan House coming down into his last horseshoe bend before the final corner. Four and a half minutes completed. 90 seconds on the clock to go. Just over uh, two tenths is the lead now for Ewan House. So Chikondi is not letting this one up at all. He's in good form at the moment, picking up a number of positions, uh, podium finishes, I should say. This is his second appearance at uh, the Irish Cart Grand Prix, in years old. Based from Dungannon. We saw it, saw it earlier with the fourth heat. It's this period of the race where Ewan House is working with another driver in second place and then lit the afterburners and just got a gap of around four or five tenths that couldn't be recovered by any of the others. Interesting to see if Archie Condy can stay with the pace that we know Ewan House has, because whilst we've had and talked about the dominance of Ewan House so far today and uh, this weekend, when you get to the final, it doesn't matter so much what uh, level of dominance that you've had so far that weekend. It's a clean slate, it's a one-off race, and anything could happen. Good battle this. This is uh, fourth and fifth place, Declan Noble and Conan Warnock. Harry McDowell is not too far ahead as well, so if we can work as two engines better than one, we've got a 1.2 second gap to close into. Harry McDowell. Harry McDowell's not got the assistance from ahead. He's too far back, unfortunately, uh, to be able to use the toe or anything of that description. Noble and Warnock could. It's not over there. Uh, Warnock's going to look down the inside, go for the move for fourth place. And uh, well, Warnock's trying to gesture to Declan Noble, say, let's work together. Oh, Warnock clearly wants to be at the front of that, uh, that bit of work. It's to be right there and ready to pounce for third place should they catch Harry McDowell. This is often the problem when you have drivers fighting of this nature. Noble down the inside. Warnock gives room. Noble wants to be ahead of Warnock. I can see it from both drivers' perspectives here. I'll probably both get a little bit annoyed at one another that they didn't work together. They allowed uh, McDowell to get down the road. That's part of uh, part of racing at times. Ewan House is on his last lap though. Quarter of a second clear of Archie Condy. It's been a good response from Archie Condy after the disappointment of heat number four. Harry McDowell on for a strongest result of the weekend so far though with this third place. Here are your two leaders. A couple of corners for them to go. Well, this has been a very impressive set of heats over the last two days from Ewan House and he will be the strong favourite when we get to uh, the final later on this afternoon. Round the final corner, Ewan House makes it four out of five victories, takes pole position for the Honda Cadet final later on today. Archie Covey with a strong second place there, uh, very much puts himself in the picture, may well have taken second place on the grid with the results that are following in. Harry McDowell third, Declan Noble fourth, Colin Warnock in fifth place, no McFarlane in sixth, seventh for Charlie Condy. Uh, those two drivers 
Uh, McFarlane and Charlie Condy involved in an incident on lap one. Max Colbert in eighth, Ryan Arthur ninth, Travis Bailey in tenth, Harry Montgomery in eleventh place, and Gareth Winning uh, was twelfth. Good stuff there from the Honda Cadet crew. We'll see them out again later on. Next up out on circuits, it's the uh, next race for F100. Let's check out the grid for F100 and uh, their third heat of the weekend so far. Drew Stewart has pole position. Robert Key alongside on the front row. Alex Covey was strong in the uh, the race earlier on this morning. Has row two uh, with Gary Turkington for company. Mark Nugent and Chris Hughes are there on the third row of the grid. And then we find Donald Regan and Francis Stewart on row four. Darren Mayer and Noel Brennan on row five. Martin Brackenbury makes it an 11 cart group going out for this next race nine of them in the pre-2000 category uh, two of them in the pre-95 category those two being chris hughes and robert key and uh formation lap underway for the f100s uh, the series dedicated to carts uh, from the 90s in the f100 category pre-95s and the pre-2000s scores on the doors uh, will be with us in a moment very open category this nobody has dominated it across the course of the last uh, couple of days particularly in the pre-2000s we go around again for the middle formation lap Drew Stewart can currently uh, lead 38 points. It's a tie two points behind on the 16 Alex Curry and uh, Noel Brennan. Van Mayer is still a factor. In fact, pretty much everybody is still a factor in uh, the competition for pole in this uh, part of the events here today at the pole, let's call it. Aaron Mayer's 30 points. Daniel Regan on 28, as is Martin Brackenbury. 26 uh, for Mark Nugent. 25 for Francis Stewart, who did not take part in the second race. And Gary Turkington also didn't take part in the second race. He's on 18 points. These drivers racing for the Frank Stewart Memorial Cup as well. First, drivers, uh, first three drivers over the line receive cash prizes uh, for this category. Uh, the winner receives the... Francis, uh, Frank Stewart Memorial Cup it was in honour of Frank Stewart, the originator of the Irish Cup Grand Prix 40 years ago. I think we are now ready for the F100s to begin their heat race. This could be a good one. Just got that funny feeling that this could be a very spectacular race. And away we go straight away. We've got three wide. Heading towards turn number one. Are they all going to get through it? Yes, they are. Good racecraft from everybody involved. The number 22 of Donald Regan trying to gain some positions early on in this one after a strong run earlier on. As, oh my goodness me, complete corner cut there uh, from the number 41 of Darren Mayer. I think she worked out there that he was going to have way too much speed into turn three and uh, took to the grass as a result. Very lucky that uh, no one was collected in all of that. There's another driver off there as they got onto the back straight. Yellow flag is out, didn't quite catch uh, who that was. It's 93. It was the 93 of Drew, uh, Drew Stewart. So that is your current points leader uh, off on lap one as well. Oh, my goodness me. Uh, looks like we have got Francis Stewart back out on circuit, which is great to see. Uh, it was... Uh, the winner in the heat yesterday. There is Francis Stewart, the number 52. I've not seen this cart so far on the stream here today. CRG chassis. Now uh, runs regularly in the F100 uh, UK Championship, which goes around uh, a number of different circuits in the country. It's third at Rissington for round number one earlier on this year. And put a lot of effort uh, into organising 
this competition here today. You do tip and hat to uh, Francis and everything that he's done getting the F100s out here to Nuts Corner. Chris Hughes there, the number 48, leading uh, at the moment in pre-95. Robert Key in the number 96 uh, is four seconds back, so Chris Hughes looking comfortable at the moment. He's got the 73 of Martin Brackenbury behind. And you can tell that it is one of the pre-2000 carts by the number board, the yellow number board uh, for Brackenbury, the white for the pre-95 of Hughes. Also that the uh, pre 2000s being a generation later of racing machine quicker as all oh, Brackenby down the inside there it runs on a little bit too much and that Hughes has undercut there crate scrap this going on to the two different classes this time I think Brackenby will have the inside line will have the power will have the drive and will have the position overall looks like Francis Stewart is on the move Francis Stewart is up to second place. He's got past Donald Regan. At last count was a second behind our race leader, Alex Kobe. There is Francis Stewart. But Francis, yeah, the son of Frank. It will be quite a moment uh, if he was able to win the Frank Stewart Memorial. Uh, Cup, Let's take that trophy home with him. Missed the second heat of the weekend, the one earlier on uh, today. Received the news as to why that was the case, but good to see the cart back out running again here. And Noel Brennan having a good run here. You can see Noel Brennan there, number 14, in the full factory Tony Kart setup from the pre-2000 era. Uh, was a round winner in F100 the UK at Kim Bolton last year. Definitely knows how to pedal. Trying to find a way past Donald Regan here for third place. He's the fastest driver out on the circuit as well, at 57.354 for Noel Brennan at the moment. Alex Kobe responding though to pressure from Stewart behind. 1.4 seconds is the gap, but down the inside goes Brennan. Trying to get it done on the exit and does so. Clean move there for Noel Brennan past Donald Regan and up to third. There is Stewart. Difficult stage of the race this for Francis Stewart. Not getting any help from behind. If that 1.4, 1.5 second gap is going to close, Francis Stewart has got to do it all on his own, his own talent bag at his disposal. Oh, Brennan is charging along though, what's the lap time like? Well, oh, Brennan is closing in, six tenths is the gap between Stewart and Brennan, 57.354 for Brennan that last lap, 57.6 for Stewart. Kobe ahead, a touch quicker, 57.5, already uh, Moves the five minutes of this race so far. The time is running out for uh, the drivers behind Alex Kobe. At the moment, Alex Kobe, I reckon, is in the position where it would give him pole position. Must do, because he was second in points heading into this race uh, with 36 points. He's pulling out an advantage over Noel Brennan, who he's tied points with. And Drew Stewart at the moment is down in seventh place, uh, which would mean that. Kobe overcomes the two-point deficit that he has to Stewart at the moment in terms of the official scoring. Another new fastest lap of the race from Noel Brennan. 1.45, one second back, but uh, I think more importantly for Noel Brennan at the moment, only a couple of tenths behind Francis Stewart, so there's going to be a battle going and raging on there between the 52 and the 14, not too distant future. Meanwhile, just a, a quick check-in verbally on pre-95. Chris Hughes leading by 16.8 seconds over Robert Key. This is the key battle out on circuit. Francis Stewart in the number 52. CRG chassis 
underneath him. The number 14 of Noel Brennan uh, with the Tony Cart. A good tight line there from Noel Brennan. Might have a run down here into turn one. Flat to the floor there with the throttle down. Oh, I thought for a moment Noel Brennan was down the inside. Well defended around the outside by Francis Stewart. We are on the final lap of the heat now. Six minutes has come and gone. Alex Kobe looking good for a race victory. Hasn't had one so far this weekend. He's potentially going to get one at the best of times, right before the final, and one to give him pole position in that final. Noel Brennan still trying to find a way past to Stewart. Could be a big send into the next corner here, but Francis Stewart has got good drive. As they come downhill now. Not many corners to go. Alex Coe is going to take the race victory. Is going to take pole position for the F100 category. A very well-structured race. Francis Stewart, first appearance today, comes back and finishes in second place. Third place for Noel uh, Brennan. Fourth overall is going to be Donald Regan. Fifth should be Martin Brackenbury. Sixth overall is going to be Darren Mayer. Seventh overall, but first in category, is going to be Chris Hughes for pre-95. And then we should have Robert Key coming over the line. Eighth overall, second in class in pre-95. Uh, Drew Stewart, that is not the kind of race that Drew uh, would have been looking for. Finishes seventh in points uh, in that one. Oh, very good stuff again from the F100s. Great to see them out. Great to hear them out as well. And uh, we'll see their final later on this afternoon. We're going to get ready for the next race. The Bambinos are out on circuit very, very soon. Time for our youngest drivers out uh, here this this weekend in the paddock to have their fourth heat, racing heat of the weekend. Jack Harney has pole position. This was decided by a timed qualifying uh, earlier on in the weekend. Lewis Hazlitt is there second on the grid. He's had some good starts so far this weekend. Can he get another race victory? We'll wait and see. Callum McVeigh is third on the grid. Ethan Robinson uh, had a superb run this morning in heat number four, all until... Uh, a spin on the last lap. So he'll be a factor again, I think, in this race, starting from row two. Amelia Dial and Ryan Armstrong start on row number three. And then Miles Purcell completes the seven cart entry. For this, uh, the last heat of anything without a gearbox. Uh, so this will be the last race before we then switch to the 125 and 250 cc supercart entries and we'll have a look break soon as well before we get into the finals will be a standing start for uh, this category and the key thing that we've seen here and one of the difficult things if you're the pole sitter so yes you have the inside line but you are off the racing line so is there an argument where uh, the anti-pole side the even side of the grid getting slightly better start now that could just be down to Lewis Hazlitt's reaction to the lights across the course of the weekend so far has been a touch better that has generally been the case by the time we get to turn one and turn two that Lewis Hazlitt has had the lead. Can Jack Harney respond here? Get a good one. Has the points lead at the moment. In fact, it's a tie between Harney and Hazlitt. So it can't be a tie after this one. One of them has to finish ahead of the other to take pole position for the Bambino category. Eyes on the lights. Away we go. Good start for... Jack Harney this time, and another really good start as well for Ethan Robinson, like we saw earlier on this morning. But by the time we get to turn one, it is Lewis Hazlitt in the lead of the race. We're on the outside now, the number 42 of Jack Harney down the inside, as the door closed by Lewis Hazlitt. So Lewis Hazlitt will lead as they go into turn number three 
from Jack Harney. Down the inside, brilliant move there by Ethan Robinson on the brakes, takes second place. But have won this morning in heat number four. Fortune didn't favour the number 36. How pleasing would that be uh, to respond back and get back through? Leaders heading up the hill now. Let's see Jack Carney trying to draw alongside Ethan Robinson there. Isn't quite able to do so on that occasion. Actually might have lost a bit of time here. This could be a big moment for both Hazlitt and Robinson. That uh, if they can work together, they could break away now. Could they drop Jack Harney? But Callum McVeigh's not too far behind. Also in fourth place. And the final corner they come then. The response from Harney. There's that gap in again. They want to get dropped. Is Hazlitt from Robinson, a tenth of a second between the two of them. Less than three tenths covering the top three at the moment. Callum McVay there in fourth place has had a solid start. He's left uh, a two-second gap back to Ryan Armstrong and Amelia Dial. Miles Purcell running round as well in seventh place at the moment. Five seconds covering the field uh, after that first lap. It's Lewis Hazlitt leading. You and uh, Ethan Robinson there in second. Down the inside, Jack Harney is looking there for second place. Looked like a good attempt, and it was a good attempt. Through goes Jack Harney into second place. Race leader still is Lewis Hasford, seven years of age. Second appearance here at uh, the Irish Cart GP from Port Glennon. Play there at number 75. It's uh, doing really well here. It's a debut at this, uh, this event. Nathan Lovebrickland. As, oh, look at this, going round there, the outside once again, he, Ethan Robinson gets back into second place, past Jack Harney there, Jack Harney's, now that is interesting, Jack Harney's number 42 car has done this a couple of times so far today, where it just seems to lose power out of turn three in particular, I just wonder if there was a developing issue there on the number 42, he's dropped back quite a way in comparison to Robinson and Hazlitt. And Callum McVeigh, we'll start looking now as, oh, look at this behind. Brian Armstrong and Amelia Dial dicing over fifth place. Number 66, 27. And we saw this in the, uh, in the heat earlier. Armstrong was just able to hold, uh, particularly down the straights, ahead of Amelia Dial. Uh, Amelia Dial, a, a driver very familiar to us here at uh, DDMM, has been competing for the last couple of years uh, in the Super One Cars Championship. Having some good results there. A driver from Scotland. And uh, if you are interested in more Bambino racing, we'll have. Uh, more to bring you next weekend when Alpha Live and DDMM will be at Shennington, just up the road from uh, DDMM HQ for the finale of the Super One Carter Championship. We'll have our Bambino classes there, amongst others. And uh, pretty much every single championship is still up for grabs as we go into uh, that uh, season finale. We make sure that you've uh, subscribed to Alpha Live to make sure that you don't miss that. Lewis Hazlitt, uh, Lewis Hazlitt still leading this race though. Eight tenths of a second ahead of Ethan Robinson who has dropped Jack Harney. I do think there is a problem there with the number 42 because uh, the pace just has seemed to 
it's dropped off for Jack Carney. Callum McVeigh is very close as well, so third and fourth. That could change shortly. And just right on cue, here is the number 75 and the 42 going side by side as they go over start finish towards turn one. Harley to the inside, holds onto that position. Just watch the 42 out of turn three in a moment. This is where it seems to be a problem for Jack Carney. Time around, it seems okay. No, it's not. See, once again, yeah. Callum McFoppa alongside, have the inside line surely for turn four. It's a very intriguing, I don't know whether it's a, a, a fluid surge or something, that turn three in particular, the number 42 car does not like. Unfortunately, it is costing Jack Harney here. Uh, strangely enough, it, it cost Ethan Robinson in the last race because Ethan Robinson got caught out by the sudden uh, drop of speed and that's what uh, that triggered the spin-out for Ethan Robinson. No troubles with that this time around. Comfortably in second place. Two seconds behind this driver here, Lewis Haslett. With this performance, he's going to have pole position for the Bambino final in the afternoon after the lunch break. Lunch break which is coming up after this race. Last lap board shown to our leader. She's bringing it home now, as is Ethan Robinson, 3.6 seconds behind. Callum McVeigh confirmed as in third place. Jack Harvey has, uh, Harney has chopped off, unfortunately. He's now in fourth place, uh, 1.3 seconds back. Lewis Hazlitt having a very good run so far this weekend. And uh, I'll put the gap to the rest of the field. Big confidence, I imagine, ahead of the final when we get to it in uh, the latter part of this afternoon. On the circuit that Lewis knows very well is the Kart Club leader. Had wins in the Celtic Cup and the Northwest Plate so far as well. Could it be Irish Kart GP gold being added to that list of achievements? We'll see later on, at least for now, though. Lewis Hazlitt is going to come around the final corner and take a third heat victory of five races so far this weekend. Very good stuff. Takes pole position for the Bambino final. Great drive from Ethan Robinson, a well-deserved second place there. And the best results of the weekend so far. Third for Callum McVeigh. Fourth for Jack Harney with some work to do potentially on the cart uh, over the lunch break. Fifth is going to be Ryan Armstrong across the line just ahead of Emilio Dial there for sixth. And seventh will be Miles Purcell. So very good stuff indeed uh, from the drivers. Uh, big thanks to Mike Trethaway who's cheering on Ethan Robinson there. Very, very good stuff. Uh, from Ethan Robinson, who uh, I think will be quietly confident as well going into the final uh, that a good result could be pulled in there. But as we say, that is uh, that is the end of the uh, extended morning and early afternoon session. Going to go to the lunch break. The two heats for uh, the supercarts will be after uh, the lunch break. Uh, big thank you to all of you for joining us here. Uh, this morning and early afternoon at Nuts Corner for coverage of the Irish Kart GP for 2022. Do hope you enjoyed it. If you enjoyed the commentary, at double dash MM across your social media net networks. And we'll be back for more coverage here on Alpha Live after that lunch break, starting with the 125 and 250cc gearbox final heat. And then we'll be into the finals to decide who will be our winners for here at Nuts Corner, the 2022 Irish Kart GP.
Welcome to Alpha Live, the live streaming service where you can be part of the action from home. You can watch via your smart TV, phone, tablet, or even your gaming console. We've got you covered. Just head to the YouTube app on any of your devices and search for Alpha Live. Here, you can watch all of the events as they unfold, or you can choose from our vast library for those lazy days in, all in beautiful HD. Be sure to hit that subscribe button and click on that notification bell so you don't miss out on any future videos.
Welcome back, everybody, to Nuts Corner and coverage from Alpha Live of the 2022 Irish Kart GP. Two more heats to go before we get to the finals, and it is the turn of the gearbox categories, starting with the 125cc gearbox supercarts, their fifth heat of the weekend. Here is your grid. Danny Highland and Ian Walsh will start from the front row of the grid. Uh, Ryan McGinnis and Kevin Shine will be hoping to bounce back from issues in the earlier heats four. They start from row two. Mick Dunyan and Scott Greenaway will start on the third row of the grid. And uh, Ross Witherow and Dara Cormick will form up the fourth row and final row of the grid. Uh, this is a category uh, that has already got a secured uh, pole sitter in the shape of Cormick. Four from four so far. So we're guaranteed to uh, see him, irrespective of what this next result is, uh, as the top runner in the final. And a big thanks to our sponsors for this category, Kennedy's uh, Nisa in Ballyboggy. And uh, a reminder as well that the drivers are racing for the Terry Wilkinson Memorial Trophy uh, in this category. So, as we say, Cormick has secured pole position already with four wins from four, 100 points from a possible 100. Uh, nearest competitor is Ian Walsh, who's sat on 72, three points ahead of Danny Highland who's a further six points ahead of Ross Witherow, who, if you weren't with us earlier for heat number four, uh, was really unlucky. Missed out on a, a potential race victory, had the pace, but had a spin, had a problem, uh, finished a little bit lower than uh, than his pace perhaps deserved him to finish. Uh, he will be gunning, I think, here for, for getting that win if he can once again, and it could elevate him up onto the front row of the grid that's what people are com com competing for now is that second spot on the grid alongside Cormick uh, who as we say has guaranteed himself pole position already plenty of experience in this category uh, I think we, we may I may go as far as say this is the category with the widest age spread uh, of, across all of our categories here today uh, you've got drivers uh, in the late teens, such as Ross with the row, 19 years of age, and uh, right up to drivers in their 20s, 30s, 40s, even 50s. It really is uh, a great, great category. And uh, you know, even when I'm looking at the, you know, looking at the racing through a monitor, you almost take a step back at the performance of some of these carts, uh, especially the 250s that we will see later on. Here are your drivers sat in dummy grid. There is the 55 of Ross Witherow, the 19-year-old uh, from Mill Lyle. Is the current 125cc uh, Ulster Cart uh, Club Championship leader. So we know he has good performance and good pace. There's Peter Crossan, the number 54, 38 years of age. Uh, he's been racing for 10-ish number of years. That's what he's put in, there, uh, in the bio, about 10 years. Uh, very experienced. Uh, has raced not just as well in in the uh, the long course, the gearbox categories, but has also raced in in the short course, non gearbox. And uh, all the notes that he put in in some of his notes ahead of this event is that he remembers watching a certain L. Dot Hamilton race uh, around here in Juni Yamaha back in the day here at uh, Nuts Corner. A very historic circuit. Plenty uh, of stories of years gone past from around these parts. There's a the number 22 of Kevin Shine, had a spin uh, and a retirement from heat number four. And out go the drivers onto their formation lap. And if you were with us before the launch, uh, for the, before the lunch break, but weren't here early on in the morning, very different circuit layout that we're gonna have now uh, for this race. We are now on the wider outer loop here at Nuts Corner, uh, which I won't call an oval because it's not an oval, but it's sort of like an oval, a bit like uh, people call the, the Sakir Outer Circuit. No, it's not an oval, but it's a little bit like an oval. It's very fast and uh, produced some great races early on. Ooh, it's a problem there for Kevin Shine. That didn't sound like it was uh, performing as intended, and he is off the back of the. 
uh, formation lap here is that already trouble for the driver sixth in the event standings potentially so but, uh, that motor does not sound like it is going uh, to full pace there's Ross with a row again the number 55 17 of uh, Scott Greenaway as well some of these carts having aero packages on them, on them, some of them not. Very much down to the driver and their preference and what they've worked on uh, in practice and testing. I don't think we've quite got everybody ready for the start of this race. We've got at least one cart off the back of the order. I actually think we're missing Dara Cormick as well. But uh, yes, I think we are now racing and away. And indeed, Derek Cormick has not started this race. Now, that, that is understandable. If that's the saving the cart decision, doesn't need to compete in this race. He's already scored enough points to get pole position. Uh, closest competitor is Ian Walsh, so it's down to Ian Walsh. But Ian Walsh has not taken to the start here either. Uh, but away we have gone. And it's the number 19 of Danny Highland who leads in the early stages of this fifth and final heat for the 125cc gearbox supercarts. Onto the... Uh, start, finish, straight they go then. End of lap number one. So they are absolutely rapid, these machines. They're able to go around the outer circuit of Nutt's Corner in less than 40 seconds. I think there was a move there by Peter Crossan up into second place on uh, Ryan Magenis. It didn't have a good uh, first heat this morning, heat number four. Be looking to progress back through. Had a decent day yesterday. A couple of third places uh, for his troubles. And down the inside there. That looks like uh, Crossan going for a move again. And getting through. So end of lap number two then. In fact, apologies. No, it was Magenis. And Magenis has got to the front. So Magenis leads. Uh, Highland in second place there in number 19. Crossan in third. With row in fourth. A big opportunity this for Ross Witherow to put right the wrongs of a few hours ago. Jen is trying to break the toe there. Two tenths ahead of Highland in number 19. And uh, oh, Witherow looking down the inside of Crossan there. These two uh, went toe to toe earlier on in heat number four. Highland might be in a bit of trouble here as uh, Will Crossan go for a move. Down into the first big braking zone. Oh, I don't think so. Oh, did Crossan manage to get around the corner? Yes, he did. I had, I had a slight heart in mouth moment there that thought Peter Crossan hadn't got round the corner, but he's hooked it up. It, it is the other thing with these cars, not just how they go in a straight line, the tyres, the chassis technology on these cars and how they're able to corner at such speeds. It's, oh, down the inside. Brilliant move there. That was Danny Highland. I think this time there has been a problem uh, for Peter Crossan. But uh, Witherow down the inside there, apologies, of uh, Danny Highland. And has got through. Yet yeah, something has happened to Peter Cross, and I think this time he has had uh, an off at the, uh, the far end of the circuits, the top end, just coming into the final corner because he's not come round to complete this last lap. So it's Magenis from Witherow, Highland, Greenaway, shine that's pretty much the five carts that we've got left running uh, in this race and ross witherow looks like a man on a mission here we'll argue that he should have won heat four didn't there's a great opportunity here in heat number five to get a race victory before we move to the final new fastest lap of the race from witherow 36.435 uh, that is some, uh, it's about two tenths quicker than Ryan Magenis at the moment with half a second to find. Look at the brakes there. Yeah, I think you can just see there Peter Cross and pulled off two drivers left as they approach the final corner. Over halfway through uh, on the time. Three minutes and 45 seconds gone. Two and a quarter minutes to go. Uh, news from race control, by the way, regards the finals later on 
uh, this afternoon. They will not now be nine minutes plus one lap. They will be eight minutes plus one lap. This race continues at six minutes plus one lap as there's problems for Kevin Shine there. Kevin Shine having more technical difficulties, it looks like. And uh, he will go no further. So we're down to four then. Magenis, Witherow, Highland. One, two, three across the line. Scott Greenaway uh, still there as well in fourth place. It's been a good response, this, from uh, Ryan Magenis. Disappointed this morning. Still leads this race by half a second. And Ross Witherow is really having to wring the neck of that number 55 cart now to try and get into a position where he can overtake uh, the race leader. On the final corner again. It's coming up to five minutes on the clock. So at least three or four laps of this race to go. Danny Highland's still there in third place as well. 24 years of age. Uh, won the won the Irish Kart Grand Prix in 2015 in the KZ2 category. Uh, has raced since 2006. It's his first year in supercarts though. For the uh, the man who was Motorsport Ireland Young Driver of the Year two years in a row, 2013 and 14, building confidence all the time for the driver uh, currently leading in the North of Ireland Karting Association 125 Championship. There he is in third place. Maybe hoping as well that uh, it sparks off between the two leaders in the latter stages of this race. Ross Witherow is digging deep again. Has uh, got down to a 32.435 now. It's about a tenth of an... Oh, he's gone for it. Big send. My goodness me. Ross Witherow, brave as anything, on the break into the final corner, takes the lead of the race. That was a superb, awesome overtake. And now is Ryan McGinnis going to respond back here. He's looking for the inside now. Six minutes have expired. That came from miles back from Ross Witherow. Kevin Shine is continuing to go round, by the way. Uh, clearly, he, he, he can drive. He's just not got a lot of power uh, in the number 22. And oh my, the valley outside is empty. That is an outrageous maneuver. Oh, we saw one one lap ago. That was even better from Ryan Magenis. And over the line to take the win. My goodness me. What an overtake. That is one of the overtakes of the year that I've seen commentating on Alpha Live event. Ryan Magenis, full send, round the outside. Lick the stamp and stuck it. That was fantastic. Takes the win by less than a tenth of a second ahead of Ross Witherow. Danny Highland, who probably had the best seat in the house for that one, finishes in third, 1.4 back. Scott Greenaway in fourth. Kevin Shine, three laps down with technical issues in fifth, sixth. For Peter Cross and then did not start for Ian Walsh, Mick Dunian, and Dara Cormick. And <laughs> you can hear the reaction to that. Take a bow, Ryan Magenis. That was awesome. Absolutely awesome. And that is what Supercarts is about. Right. Well, we will catch our breath, as will the drivers, after that 125cc gearbox fifth and final heat. We've got one more heat coming up, and it's the 250ccs heading out next. I can't quite believe what I've just seen. Let's have a look through the grid for uh, the 250cc supercarts uh, for their final heats. And uh, it will be Colin Armstrong on pole position. Alongside him on the front row is uh, Colin Maneri. Brian Jones and Colin Byrne are there on row two. Warren Deary and Liam Fox complete row number three. Alan Witherow and Peter Deary complete the eight runners in this one. And uh, current situation in the points in this one. Uh, up for grabs, this pole position. Alan Witherow has 84 points. Colin Maneri has 77. And then you've got Liam Fox on 72. 
Brian Jones on 59. So it's, it's probably between that top three with Roman Maneri uh, and Fox. And then a good battle as well for who can get onto the second row of the grid between uh, Brian Jones, Colin Byrne, uh, and Warren Deary. Here are the 250cc supercarts, the fastest machines that are here today at Nuts Corner. And there goes Liam Fox in the number three. Irish champion and uh, several times has won here at the Irish Kart GP. Good quality field. This Colin Byrne, for example, three-time Irish 125cc champion and uh, has returned this year after a few years away. The uh, 40, uh, the 42 card there, the counter kill there. Four motion laps underway. The final six minutes plus one lap race of the weekend. Now Brian Jones in this race as well. Won this event a few years ago. The 125 winner the year before that in 2019. Well, I've just seen something very special in the 125cc category. Over to you, the 250s there fourth heat earlier on today was uh, was very spectacular as we've been talking about through the course of this uh, this round of heats which started before the lunch break it is a heat but it's a little bit different because it's all on the line there's no extra opportunities to gain a good grid position after this in the final because it is the final next after this almost a bit of a pre-final feel for these races here we go then six minutes plus one lap the 250cc super carts and i think we are good to go and away we do go indeed for the fifth heat for the 250cc super carts good start for those at the front of the grid it's brian jones who leads in number 43 through the first couple of ends brian jones in second uh, Brian Jones is to the left, Colin Maneri behind in second place there in the number 83. All been filing through. We've got seven carts out there. Looks like Colin Armstrong hasn't taken uh, the start. And over the top of the hill they go. Over the brow. And this final corner will just be a remarkable overtaking. So it's going to be Brian Jones leading. Colin Maneri in the number 83 in third. Liam Fox. Uh, sorry, Mineri in second, Fox in third, Alan Witherow with the RGP plate currently in fourth place. And Brian Jones has absolutely bolted out here. This has been a tremendous start uh, for the 34-year-old from Scarva. It's the battle for third, Liam Fox. In the middle of this trio here, number three, and with the road just behind. Problems this morning, 14 points from a possible 25 for Alan Witherow. He knows this isn't done, especially with Brian Jones. Well, in, in, in a way, uh, Witherow will be happy that it's Brian Jones out front here because we've been talking about the, the, the wins, the heat wins, and how big an advantage it is because you take 25 points you gain at least five points over everybody else in this competition we all we'll know that it's uh well now impossible for brian jones to overhaul his score so take seeing brian jones taking that top five points those extra five points don't bother him at all he's got his two main rivals in terms of grid position right ahead of him fox and maneri Thirty-four point seven six four for Jones last time around. These drivers in the thirty-fives. Fox looking to the outside there. Through the final corner, the drive there for Maneri going over start finish now. Still in second place. Two minutes and twenty seconds of this race gone. Fox having a wonder there whether there was a move down the inside. Looking a bit too far back there. Tom Byrne and Peter Deary, by the way, are having a good scrap in fifth and sixth place. A couple of seconds between the two of them and side by side. Oh my goodness me, how close could that be? Did they touch? I think they did touch. And off. 
is Maneri into the gravel. Contact there with Liam Fox, and that is on a plate to Alan Witherow, who takes two positions. Oh my goodness me, that was at the fastest part of the core. I think they banged wheels at least twice, possibly three times there, did Fox and Maneri, and the result is that Colin Maneri has got going again, is in fourth place, but some 10 seconds or so behind these two. That was a very scary moment indeed, as they came over the top there, into the fast right-hander. Here's the race leader, Brian Jones, completed three and a half minutes of this race, is in control, he's got a 5.2 second lead over Alan Witherow. Liam Fox still there in third place, 1.1 behind the RGP plate holder. Uh, Colin Maneri, as I say, is running again. The, the pace is okay, 35.5 last time around for uh, cart number 83. I wouldn't like to call uh, that one. I, well, I, I personally would put it down as a racing incident, very high speed racing incident. But uh, we'll wait and see as to whether there's any jurisdiction on that uh, event between Fox and Maneri post-race. There's been a change for fifth place. Peter Deary, uh, in fact, I think Colin Byrne has had a problem. He's actually pulled off because he's not circulating on time at the moment. So Peter Deary up to fifth place. Uh, some 29.9 seconds behind the leader. Warren Deary in sixth place. Uh, also, he's not circulating. So we've got five runners out there. With just over a minute and a quarter to go. Liam Fox continuing to close in on Alan Witherow. We have the benefit of a, a bit of a slipstream, especially as they come round the bottom end of the circuit and then streak onto this long, long straight at Nutt's Corner, heading towards one of the fastest points, or the fastest point of the circuit. This is where we saw the contact between Fox and Maneri a couple of minutes ago. Liam Fox is closing in. Quick check over the shoulder there from Alan Witherow. He's Liam Fox there. At the moment, Alan Witherow doing enough, more than enough actually, to finish uh, in pole position. Blue flags out for, I believe, Peter Deary, who's going to be lapped here by Brian Jones, who's having a supreme run here. Absolutely brilliant. One heat number four, and is massively putting himself in the mix for winning this Irish Carts GP in the 250cc class. I'm just going to sneak another lap in as well. They've crossed the line uh, with about five seconds on the clock to go. The Brian Jones leads. Two laps to go, including the one that he's on. Very close for second place as well between Witherow and Fox. Fox trying to set up a run here. He's not close enough this time. Back corner, they go. Got a marker ahead of them, which is uh, Peter Deary. Last lap board will now be out though for the uh, the race leaders. There, you just saw it on the uh, dot matrix screen there. So Brian Jones, looking like he's going to take two victories from two here today. Could he make it three from three in the final? We'll uh, wait and see. It will be our final race of the day. He's out of position, you could argue, because he didn't score points in the first race. But it's been a very good Sunday so far for Brian Jones. Brian Jones takes heat number five in the 250cc supercarts here at Nuts Corner. A dominant victory. Alan Witherow takes second place. Liam Fox in third. Colin Maneri there in fourth place. And uh, I think we'll be relieved to get to the end of that race after that big, big moment uh, coming off the back straight. Uh, Peter Deary has come across the line and lap down in fifth place. There is Maneri across the line in fourth. So Jones, Witherow, Fox, Maneri, Peter Deary, uh, Warren Deary in sixth and Colin Byrne in seventh. Uh, Warren Deary and Byrne being retirements and one did not start which was Colin Armstrong. Well there we go. That is all the heats racing completed for all of our categories here at the 2022 Irish Cart 
GP and the uh, 250cc supercar uh, drivers are coming in for their post scrutineering checks, checking the weight of both cart and driver to make sure that it's compliant with the regulations. And uh, we will move on from the heat and get into the finals. These are the races that we've been waiting for. These are the big ones. This is now where we get to decide who will be our Irish Kart GP winners for 2022. We'll start with Senior Rotax. Junior X30 will be second. Junior Rotax will be third. Uh, Rotax 177 will be fourth. I Army Cadet will be fifth. Minimax will be sixth. Honda Cadet will be seventh. F100 will be eighth. Bambinos will be ninth. 125cc Supercarts will be tenth. And then the last race will be the 250cc Supercarts. That is the order that we'll be running this afternoon. Eight minutes plus one lap for our finals. Let's get right into them. Next up, out on circuit here at Nuts Corner. It is the final for the Irish Kart GP of 2022 for Senior Rotax. Here we go then, first final of the weekend for the Irish Kart GP 2022. It is the Senior Rotax Max final. James Gilliland has pole position. Joining him on the front row will be Nathan Glenn. Dylan Tuite and Ben McFall start on row number two, and then it's Gary Turkington and Neville Bell starting on row three. Daniel Conlon and Zach Rogers start on the fourth row of the grid. Johnny Clyde. And Pierce Murta start on row five, completing the top 10. Shane O'Leary and Zach Leckie start this final from row number six. Kyle Price and Gary Blair start from row number seven. Keith Biggerstaff and Simon Allen will go from row eight. Jason Hetherington and Connor Smith start the race on row number nine. Aaron Walker and Eamon Faulkner start on row 10. And then it'll be Philip Maguire and Tiernan Clark completing the 22 entries for this, the Senior Rotax Max Final for the Irish Kart GP 2022. Uh, this race is kindly sponsored by Nuts Corner Circuit. Big thanks to our event sponsors as well, Pit Stop Motors and I. Uh, Keith Wilkinson of Wilkinson designed for both the Junior and Senior Driver of the Meeting Awards. We could see the Senior Driver of the Meeting come from this class and I should mention as well uh, that the chosen charity for the Irish Kart GP in 2022 is Marie Curie so here we go there'll be a few moments for the drivers to get themselves ready for this final which uh, has got a modified from advertised uh, schedule it's now eight minutes plus one lap not a division lead planned nine that's due to a, a couple of delays that we've had uh, across the racing program this morning and into the early afternoon and uh oh this is quite a big one to be starting with straight away biggest field some very strong drivers some drivers at different stages of uh of their cart and careers of course you've got some drivers who um are in their late teens just coming to seniors you've got drivers who've been doing this for uh, nearly 30 years and it's that plucky the number 20 20 year old from lisbon and the driver just in the second year of racing qualified well through into this final James Gilliland will have pole position. 35 cart ahead of the 95. Gilliland to Ite as well. He's finished third in this very race for the last two years. Can he go better? And he starts in that familiar position of third. Ben McFall there as well uh, in fourth place. Number 43. Gary Turkington, of course, the Turkingtons, very famous racing family from this part of the world. How would he love to take this 
trophy home with him. Neville Bell in sixth place as well, the number 36, 39 years of age. He's competed in this event over 20 times. Here we go then. Eight minutes plus one lap to decide who will be the Senior Rotax Max winner for the Irish Kart GP in 2022. They're into the first corner. Good start for Gilliland. They're all through the first corner and heading towards now turn two and then breaking into turn number three. There's a little bit of, of a kerfuffle in the mid pack and down the inside as well. I think that is the number 95 of Nathan Glenn has taken the lead through and out of turn number three. But apart from that, it's a good start for everybody. Everybody's still in the mix here. This is a longer race. No, it doesn't sound like much, two extra minutes, but it does change the dynamic from a heat into a final. Driver's coming around the top end of the circuit now. Dive into the horseshoe. We'll count them through at the end of lap number one here, who's still in the mix. Steve Ben McFall is definitely one of those still in the mix. This is the different nature of one of these finals as well, as it's Glenn from Gilliland to Etate, Turkington up to fourth. Up to now, all the grids have been mixed up. It's not necessarily been in order of fastest to slowest. That is now the case in this final. It's no longer drivers coming through from the back with more pace than others. They're in the order. It's been decided by the five heats so far this weekend. It's wheel to wheel to wheel to wheel all of them we want to just keep things calm in this opening four or five minutes say, and then really go for it in the last two or three Nathan Glenn leading it out at the moment in the number 95 the 35 of James Gilliland there let's keep him honest at the moment I like the look of Dylan Tuite in third place he's been in this position before he wants to go better he doesn't want to finish third three times in a row, he wants to get that victory. At the moment, you cannot not be impressed by Nathan Glenn here. This is a very impressive opening part to this race. To get a half second lead after two laps, he keeps pushing at this pace and keeps those tyres in check, keeps the equipment in check. You know, the, the, the other drivers behind could become resigned to fighting for second place. You can see Gary Turkington there as well in the black suit. Part number 61. So much experience. The driver who's raced since the early 90s, competed at a world level in, uh, in the 1990s as well. More recent successes, was third in the I-Army World Finals back in 2015. Gilliland just checks over the shoulder. There's a driving standards warning to carts number 141. That's Zach Rogers. Well, Rogers currently in 14th place. There's been a bit of movement further down the order, in fact. Daniel Conlon has got past Ben McFall for 5th place. That's the 26th past the 43. Johnny Clyde has got past Shane O'Leary as well for 10th. Zach Lecky has gained two positions on that last lap also. Three and a half minutes gone then, of the eight for this, the Senior Rotax Max Final for the Irish Kart GP 2022. Still Nathan Glenn leading, but you get the feeling he's being reeled back in. James Gilliland was quickest on the, uh, the last complete full lap. We're about to get another check on the times and he's second now. Well, Glenn's responded, Glenn's gone quicker again. He takes the fastest lap of the race before losing it almost immediately to Daniel Conlon in uh, fifth place. So look out for number 26. There's James Gilliland in second place. And Tweeto still is there in third place, ahead of Gary Turkington. It's the cart behind that I'm interested in. Daniel Conlon, the number 26, is going very, very quickly indeed. Oh, look at this run. That was a good run there for Turkington. Wasn't quite close enough to get up the inside to go for third place. And some good power there for cart number 61. There's a cart off uh, circuit there. It's the number 27. It's Simon Allen. So Simon Allen is out of this final, is out of this GP final. 
Now really putting the pressure on Gary Turkington. You get the sense that Gary Turkington wants to go through. He's gone down the inside. He's taken third place. That was a big move from Gary Turkington. You can see Gilliland and Glenn starting to pull away and the minutes ticking on by. That was an absolute must for Gary Turkington to get through past Dylan Tweet at that point there. Now, does Turkington have the pace to pull up to the back of James Gilliland? Danny Conlon still there as well in fifth place. Still is the fastest driver out there. His lap time of a 55.912 has not been bettered by anybody in this race so far. But the more important piece of information is that he's there in fifth place. End of lap number six. Glenn leads by 0.9 of a second ahead of Gilliland. Half a second clear of Gary Turkington. Dylan Tuite there in fourth place. Conlon in fifth. If, if Conlon wants to finish on the podium, I, I just feel he's going to make the move now. He's got to clear Dylan Tuite. It's just not working at the moment for the number 10. He's having to go down the inside there. Not quite able to do so. And is there damage now? Is that a drop bumper on the number 26 of Danny Conlon? He's now going to be under attack from Ben McFall there in the green and yellow helmet. Cart number 43. Got it back under control now. This is Senior Rotax Max Racing at its best. Close, competitive. Fine margins between uh, victory and losing. Nathan Glenn, though, continued. This has been such a good drive from Nathan Glenn. From second on the grid, 1.1 seconds now is the lead for cart number 95 over James Gilliland uh, behind in second place. Turkington is in third place and closing in as well on uh, Gilliland. It's going to be a battle raging on there. There it is. And Gary Turkington, who started this weekend fantastically, led uh, the point standings overnight after three heats. What can he do? Can he find a way through to take at least second place here? Not much time left to go. And we've got 40 seconds on the clock, so I think that means we're going to have two more laps here. Yep, two more laps for Nathan Glenn to close out an Irish Cart GP victory. 1.3 seconds now, the gap for Nathan Glenn. You can almost smell the victory. Good scrap going on here between McFall and Tuite. So Daniel Conlon has got through and into fourth place. I think it's just too much for him now to get on the podium. Unless something was to happen here between Gilliland and Thurkington. Eight minutes is up. Next time Nathan Glenn crosses the start-finish line, the last lap board will be out. Gary Turkington really starting to apply the pressure to James Gilliland now. Can he find a way through here at Nutt's Corner? There is your leader, Nathan Glenn. Is a mere, well, less than a minute away from claiming the title of Irish Cart GP champion for 2022 in senior Rotax. Turkington hasn't gone for it yet. You've got to feel he's that close. He's turned four an opportunity. Going to slip one down the inside. Can he get that drive out of turn number three? It's good, good work from James Gilliland. He's not going to have to defend too hard into turn number four. But has he compromised his line through the exit of four and into five and through six? It's going to be very close. Turkington is going to up alongside. He has a go. Shuts the door to Gilliland for second place. Nathan Glenn is counting the corners off now to take this victory. Gilliland defends on one of the last big opportunities, but all of the long side. Turkington's got through. Turkington's got second place as he won too wide. Here comes Conlon. Nathan Glenn is going to come round the final corner and is going to be Irish Cart GP champion for 2022 in senior Rotax. It's going to be a drag to the line and it is Turkington. Gary Turkington takes second place. James Gilliland is third, fourth for Daniel Conlon, fifth for Ben McFall, Dylan Tuite 
finishes in sixth. Pierce Murta in seventh. Neville Bell in eighth. Gary Blair ninth. Johnny Clyde completes the top ten. But it is a phenomenal drive from Nathan Glenn from second on the grid. Took the lead on that one and did not look back. He is your Irish Kart GP champion in senior Rotax Max for 2022. A brilliantly earned victory there. And the carts will go into Park Ferme. Go through the post race scrutineering checks just to ensure that everything is above board. But there is your winner. The first final winner of the day here at Nuts Corner for the 2022 Irish Kart GP. Nathan Glenn is your winner in senior Rotax. Well done to uh, Gary Turkington as well. Battle to the end there. The 41-year-old uh, from Portadown takes second place. And uh, James Gilliland as well can be proud of third place on the podium after a phenomenal weekend. Right, well, well done to all of our senior Rotax Max drivers. We hope to see them again next year. Next out on circuit for their final, it is Junior X30. Time for the Junior X30 final here at the Irish Kart GP for 2022. Let's have a look at how they will form up on the grid. James Wood will have pole position. Luke Agnew alongside on the front row. It has been those two battling it out throughout all of the heats so far this weekend. Conor Grant will fancy his chances though. He's had good pace as well. He's qualified comfortably for third on the grid. Adam Holmes alongside on row two. CJ Bennett and Nadine Kavanagh on row three. And then Holly Dunyon and Cody Keogh on row four. So this category kindly sponsored by James Irvine Monumental Sculptors. And uh, if you're just joining us, it is that story that we've been tracking across the course of the day. The two heats today and also the three heats yesterday. James Wood versus Luke, uh, Luke Agnew. Three wins to two in the favour of Wood across the, uh, of the five heats. But those two has shown that Luke Agnew has been able to beat James Wood. Uh, so far this weekend, including the fifth heat, which, which I feel again psychologically was very important ahead of this final for Luke Agnew to hold on to that lead, hold on to that particular race victory and not let James Wood get ahead and make it 4-1. And I just wonder if Luke Agnew can get a good start here, he'll be on the outside. We've just seen in the senior road tax race p2 get the lead at the start of the race and then go on to be the race winner it is possible around here as i say conor grant as well he'll be thinking i've been comfortably third fastest driver so far this weekend and all it takes is for clash of wheels and a bit of drama between wood and agnew and he's going to be right there to pick up the pieces should uh, there be any incidents out there want to get a good start as well eight minutes plus one lap then for the junior x30 category here at nuts corner for the 2022 irish cart gp sponsored by pit stop motors ni the junior x30 class ready to go racing James Wood on the inside, Luke Agnew on the outside, eyes on the lights, ready to go racing here at Nuts Corner. Good start for those on the pole side of the grid. James Wood will lead into turn one. Conor Grant has already got up into second place. That is not good news for Luke Agnew, who's been absolutely mugged off the start there. He's down to fourth place. That could be it already, based on the form we've seen so far this weekend. Fancy Luke Agnew to come back through, but is the damage already going to be done? James Wood leads. Conor Grant in second place. And CJ Bennett, who's got through into third. It was a mighty run for those on the pole side of the grid. Over the top of the hill, the drivers go. 
Lucchetti. Luca Agnew is already trying to get back through down the inside. Takes third place back. Good move there by Luca Agnew. These next couple of laps are absolutely crucial for Luca Agnew if he wants to win this race. The Army Cadet winner in the Irish Cart GP 12 months ago. A very accomplished driver. His presence at the World Finals uh, at Adria last year. James Wood, driver who's not had that much experience. Uh, at the junior level. He's definitely got the speed here. You can already see the gap though. This is this is the crucial phase of the race for Agnew. He's got to clear Connor Grant as quickly as possible. So James Wood has already got well at last check check and he's got through. He's got the move done on Connor Grant, but look at the gap that has already emerged to James Wood ahead. I would put out it's probably about 1.2 1.3 seconds it was 0.7 uh, last time around it may even be more than maybe more like one and a half plus seconds here we go and it is 1.3 1.3 seconds then for James Wood over the rest of the field he's got to keep his emotions in check as well I want to throw this away this is a very good position for James Wood to be in If you're Luke Agnew, this is a the race winning side of things, a very difficult situation to be in. I don't think he's necessarily going to have any help from behind. Conor Grant's going to keep running his pace. He's been, as I say, comfortably third across the course of the weekend. CJ Bennis is there in fourth. He's got a good start as well for Nadine Kavanagh. He's up to fifth place. Adam Holmes is down to seventh behind Holly Dunyon. There is your race leader, James Wood. Cross start finish to complete lap number three. Oh, that's a very good response, though, from Luke Agnew. Luke Agnew has just gone and put in a 57-0 and taken half a second out of James Wood. Well, that has changed the complexion of this race now because that kind of pace would indicate to me that Luke Agnew can catch James Wood and him. Conor Grant is not too far away also in the number 54. Similarly being pulled along at the moment, 57-3 last time around for Conor Grant. Very good pace indeed. Can James Wood respond? I'm sure he's got some help from uh, the sidelines to indicate that uh, Agnew has been closing. And the pace needs to be increased. Hold that gap out. It's 0.6 of a second now. Another couple of tenths has gone. It's a new PB from James Wood. He gets down to 57-0 himself. But Luke Agnew, it was a 56.8 from Luke Agnew. That is a fastest lap of the final so far. You can see just by his body language how determined Luke Agnew is. He will have been furious at himself about that poor start and leaving himself with so much to do in this final. We're already past four minutes in this final. We're in half of the race on time. But he's giving himself a chance here. For these past couple of laps, he's closed in that gap that was up around 1.3 seconds. He's halved that. He's got the time to continue closing the gap. Here is your race leader. And there is second place. Check the gap one start once again. 0.5 is now the gap. Another new fastest lap of the race. 56.737 for Agnew. I've got to say with James Wood, he is able to respond. Each time Agnew puts a lap time in, Wood is able to match it. The trouble is Agnew just keeps getting faster and faster and faster. And the closer he gets, the more, especially on the long straights here at Nuts Corner, those power sections of the circuit. He's going to start get a get. He's going to start getting a bigger and better uh, advantage from a bit of slipstream. He's pushing hard though. Lost a touch through uh, the run over the top of the hill there. Through the horseshoe complex. 
through the final corner. Five minutes and 40 seconds to go. Still time for both of these drivers to win or lose this uh, Junior X30 Irish Car GP final. 0.3 of a second is now the gap. 56.6 for Agnew, 56.8 for Wood. You see they're differing lines as well through turn number two. It's been a feature of the day so far. But now it gets really tough for Luke Agnew. I know we've talked a lot about how he fell back and he came back through and he's now caught up to James Wood. How does he find a way through? Because James Wood so far this weekend from three of the heats. He's been very, very good in this kind of situation. Very consistent. I'm going to say that in this final as well. He hasn't put a foot wrong so far. hasn't made any mistakes. He hasn't quite had the pace of Agnew through this middle phase of the race. But has he just been holding something in reserve for this station now? With one minute and 15 to go. 56.7 for Wood. 56.686. Another purple lap time for Agnew. He's, been, he's put in about four, maybe five of those in a row. He's closer than he's ever been in this race. Conor Grant's still there in third place. CJ Bennett running well in fourth. Nadine Kavanagh fifth. And that was the first check over the shoulder from James Wood. He knows how close Luke Agnew is now. Good drive through the dip there for James Wood. Not many laps to go now. Seven and a half minutes on the clock. There'll be two more laps after this one. What has Luke Agnew got left in the locker? Gap is now holding, I reckon, at about 0.3. Yeah, 0.329. And for the first time uh, in quite a few laps, it was Wood who was quicker. Only just. We're talking a couple of hundredths here or there, but he was quicker. Has Luke Agnew taken too much out of his tyres? Has he taken too much out of himself after this mammoth effort to get onto the back of James Wood? James Wood will maybe be a little bit fresher at this of the race. In control of things. He's got track position. It's going to need to be an almighty move from Luke Agnew to win this race. Time has, time has expired. Last lap board is about to be shown after these two corners. What has been a really tense squabble between these two drivers across the course of this weekend. One more lap for them to complete. James Wood leads still that gap of 0.3 of a second. James Wood just seems to be able to hold it at that. Through turn two, through turn three. Turn four, arguably the best opportunity to overtake on this circuit. And Agnew's not there. Agnew's not close enough. James Wood has just got to get it over the top of the hill, through the dipper, down the hill, through the horseshoe and round the final corner to become Junior X30 champion for the in Irish Kart GP in 2022. Agnew is not close enough again. Two more corners for James Wood. Has led from pole position, got a mega start through the gauntlet down to Luke Agnew to take the battle to him, which he did. But in 2022, it's James Wood, who is your winner in Junior X30 at the Irish Kart GP. Luke Agnew finishes a very strong, very commendable second after a brilliant drive from a difficult start. Third place for Connor Grant. Fourth for CJ Bennett. Fifth for Adam Holmes. Sixth will be and is Nadine Kavanagh. And seventh for Holly Dunyan. Well, there we go. Gone pole position. And uh, on reflection, that start was the crucial moment for James Wood. Got that lead. Luke Agnew gave it everything in that race. Oh, you see how spent he is. That is, that is a driver who has left everything out in the circuit. And you've got to, you've got to give him a round for that because... Uh, I doubted him. I doubted him after that start. I thought, well, surely this is James Woods now quite comfortably. But he came back and he made James Wood 
push very, very hard himself to uh, to take that race victory. Conor Grant as well has been brilliant this weekend. There in third place. There is the champion in Junior X30, James Wood, cart number 58. The uh, former BMX uh, rider shakes the hand there of Luke Agnew to say, well done, great race. And uh, he will be very, very pleased uh, with that result. There we go. That is Junior X30 and their Irish Kart GP done for 2022. James Wood is your winner. Luke Agnew second, Conor Grant third. Well done to all of our drivers. X30 will move on to our next junior category. Junior Rotax Max are out next. Let's have a look at the grid then for our third final here for the 40th anniversary Irish Kart GP. It is our Junior Rotax Max final. Joseph McMahon has pole position alongside him. On the front row is Jack Murta, Joe Gardner and Gavin Dewitt are there. On the second row of the grid, Bobby Joe McFall and Carter Kelly go from row number three. Peter Gilliland and James Robertson start this race from row number four. James Greer and Adam McGiven complete the 10 cart entry for this, the Junior Max final sponsored uh, very kindly by KKC Cart Components. The carts released from Dummy Grid then. And uh, again, this one's a really difficult one to call, I feel. President Marn. Yes, did have a good chunk of points more than the rest of the competition. But hasn't been unfallible this weekend. Hasn't had uh, you know, a run like we saw in the previous race and constantly being top twos. There's been some mixed results in there. And uh, as is often the case with the GP event, this final, it's a one-off race. Doesn't really matter that much what's come before. It's what happens over the course of the next 10 minutes. Eight minutes plus one lap then for Junior Rotax Max. Cart to number 33, Joseph McMahon will start from pole position there with the black suit. Jack Murta in second place will be buoyed by the fact that uh, it was Jack Murta who took the Heat 5 victory before the lunch break. Is that going to be something playing on the mind of the rest of the competition as we go then for eight minutes plus one lap in the junior rotax max final away we go good even start for those at the front of the grid but it does look like Joseph McMahon has led into the early stages yes he has Joe Gardner has got through into second place as well at least over the last couple of races it's been starting on the inside that has been the advantageous place to be and we've been racing out on the racing line on the outside the number 72 of Gavin Dewitt's having a good scrap there for I think, fifth place. A clean start for the Junior Rotax Max drivers. McMahon leads. Gone there in second place or fighting for second place. It's all very busy behind as well. In fact, no, there's been a change for second place. Murta has got back through. So Jack Murta back into second place. of a calmer start to this junior category compared to uh, the one that we saw before. So James Greer the back of the pack there in ninth place. So here's second and third place, Jack Murta, the, uh, the red, blue and white suit with the white helmet. Got back past Joe Gardner. Uh, on that first lap, Kevin Dewitt confirmed in fourth, and Peter Gilliland up to fifth place. Now, of course, Peter Gilliland uh, it could argue he was out of position, very much so, uh, from the qualifying heats because he had two heats where it didn't go so well for him. It's either gone very well or not well at all. Does he have the speed to pull his way through onto the podium, perhaps? Definitely in the talking. Uh, regards it. it was less than two seconds off the lead 
last time around, but it is still Joseph McMahon controlling this race quite nicely. Here comes the number 15 of James Robinson, looking down the inside, very close indeed, and off the road goes the number 34 of Peter Gilliland. Well, just as we said today, it's either, well, this weekend, it's either gone very, very well or not well at all. And well, in that moment, it's another one of those races where it's not gone well at all. James Robinson will argue that there was a gap there. He went for it. Peter Gilliland will say he was forced out wide there. Either way, the result is that Peter Gilliland has got a lot of work to do now to get back onto the podium. Here is the first, second, third place carts. McMahon still leading. Murta second. Joe Gardner in third place. Joe Gardner hasn't taken a race win so far this weekend. And I think at this stage, that doesn't really matter. He is there. Adjustment on the radiator flat for Jack Murta. turn two and into turn three and this play from Joseph McMahon we have seen before uh, we saw it in heat number four. Oh, it's down the inside goes Joe Gardner goes for the move for second place very nicely done very nicely done indeed from Joe Gardner Jack Murta didn't fight it too hard that was, uh, in, a, in a respectful manner just said yep that's a good move carry on through Joe Gardner. And now Joe Gardner is setting about Joseph McMahon. I was just about to say how McMahon has had this, this feel of just holding off any competition. We saw it in heat number four and about three or four tenths a second. Each lap in that range where the in just cannot get through. It's been a, a hundreds warning for James Robinson. So that will be in for uh, the moment with Peter Gilliland a lap or so ago. And it's it coming into this very nicely. It's just set to 57.6 flat, which is uh, faster than anybody else in the race so far. Down the inside there, uh, that was uh, Adam McGiven trying to get past uh, Bobby Joe McFall. Over the top of the hill they go. Joseph McMahon has responded big time here. He's pulled out that gap. Well, we just sensed that Gardner was on the charge. Again, this is what we've seen McMahon do across the weekend consistently. The race management has been very good. Joseph McMahon has put him in this position. He's doing likewise again. That was a 57.5. 57.5 for both of the lead two. Uh, in fact, Stewart's in the 57.5s as well. But a touch off the pace at the moment. Still there in third. Five minutes of the race gone. Three to go and then the additional lap after time has expired. It's McMahon from Gardner. Murta, Stewart. Carter Kelly up to fifth place now. James Robinson in sixth. Peter Gilliland in seventh. Ahead of uh, Bobby Joe McFall, James Greer now down to ninth place. It's all oh, down the inside goes Stewart, takes third place. Not seen too many moves through there today. Gavin Stewart got that absolutely spot on. Now he's got to push forward because they have lost uh, the rear bump with Joe Gardner. Gavin Stewart's got to prove now to Jack Mercer that his rear bump is the best place to be. To close back up to Joe Gardner. Otherwise, I feel that Joe uh, Murta will try and get back through in third place. Sees that gap growing. Six minutes gone. At the moment, it's hard to look past Joseph McMahon there. Part number 33 from winning this race. It's three quarters of a second clear of Joe Gardner behind. It's around a similar gap. Uh, back down to Gavin Dewitt's. As I say, he's just taken third place away from Jack Murta. No other changes of position to talk about. James Robinson trying to close in, though, on Carter Kelly for fifth place. The 14 and the 15. That time's looking good for McMahon still. Second is the lead. 
1.5 seconds back from the leader is Gavin Dewitt. So Dewitt is closing in on Gardner now. Exactly uh, what he would have wanted and in a way what Jack Murta would have wanted seeing Dewitt going by, getting up the road, trying to get up to Joe Gardner. Close him down and then eventually overtake. Well, we've seen the strong form from Gardner in this race already. To be honest, Jack Murta is losing that rear bumper now. Has he got enough left in the tyres and the carton himself to uh, replicate that form that we saw in heat number five? Not long in this race to go. 30 seconds on the clock, two more laps. As the race leader, Joseph McMahon, comes over the line. One point two and a half, well, one and a quarter seconds now for McMahon over Gardner. Dewitt sets another new fastest lap of the race, 57.424. Eight minutes up for the drivers. You've got to feel that uh, by a disaster, Joseph McMahon has got this one won. He's in control of the Junior Rotax Max final for the Irish Kart GP 2022. Joe Gardner will be knowing that as well. He may have to start defending in a moment to stop Gavin Dewitt getting too close and going for an attack for his second place. Last lap board about to come out then for what has been a very good drive so far for Joseph McMahon. In very good conditions here at Nuts Corner. It's been a sunny, sunny day here in Northern Ireland and it's about to be a very sunny race result for Joseph McMahon. Gavin Dewitt is really getting close now. He's going to try and set a move up for turn four, you'd imagine. For second place on Joe Gardner. Joe Gardner will be wise to it, though. Will close off that tight entry. Actually got a very good run out of turn number three. Seemed to taking that slightly wider line. Wanted to get a good run over the top of the hill and through the dipper. No concerns, though, for Joseph McMahon. Bringing this one home, 1 1.4 seconds clear of Gardner and Dewitt. There he is, into the horseshoe for the final time then. It's been a hard weekend, it's been a testing weekend, but it's been a weekend where Joseph McMahon has come out on top. Joseph McMahon wins in Junior Rotax Max here at the Irish Kart GP for 2022. And he wins by 1.7 seconds, clear of Joe Gardner in second. Gavin Dewitt completes the podium there in third. Jack Murta finishes in fourth. Carter Kelly inside the top five in fifth. James Robinson finishes in sixth place ahead of Peter Gilliland in seventh. Bobby Joe McFall is uh, your finisher in eighth place ahead of James Greer and Aidan McGibbon. But a very, very well put together final by Joseph McMahon. Once again, the early stages of that race key and uh, did as he has done in a number of the heats so far this weekend or across the course of this weekend got that gap and just gave none of the other drivers a chance even thinking about going for the lead in that race handshake with Joe Gardner there in second place Joe will be happy for, with that from the second row of the grid likewise for Gavin Dewitt great scrap between them at the end of that race it is Gardner who finishes in second place ahead of Gavin Dewitt. But there's your winner, Joseph McMahon, cart number 33. His fourth appearance here at the Irish Cart GP. 13-year-old from Lisbon is your winner for the Junior Max category here at the Irish Cart GP for 2022. Well, we've got uh, another Rotax category coming up next. Next final out and circuit here at Nuts Corner will be Rotax 177. Here at Nuts Corner, it is time for our next final, which is the Rotax 177 final. Let's have a look through the grid. Ben McDowell has pole position. Daniel Burgoyne 
uh, is due to start on the front row. Sean Spratt and uh, Gareth Greer start on row two. Kevin Shine and Johnny McCarthy on row three. And then we've got Mark Vasey and Brian Cherry on row four. Richard Malcolmson and Samuel Allen on row five. Now, of course, this was the category that earlier on today we did have uh, an incident between uh, Burgoyne and uh, Sam Allen. And uh, this will be the first time we see whether those drivers are back out on circuit. And I can't confirm that neither of them are out. So this is an eight cart final. Ben McDowell will take them from pole position. And yes, I think they are actually already racing. So away we go then for the final here in Rotax 177. It's going to be a bit of a tall order, I think, based on the form so far this weekend for any driver except Ben McDowell to win this race. Ben McDowell has already got a 1.1 second lead ahead of Sean Spratt. Uh, and Gareth Greer. It's going to be a great battle for that second place. Spratt, Greer, Shine uh, and Malcolmson. It's a great start actually for Richard Malcolmson. Started uh, where will that have been? That'll have been from eighth place on the grid. And uh, it's already up to fifth. Uh, followed through did uh, Johnny McCarthy in sixth. Mark Basie in seventh place and Brian Cherry in eighth. I do hope that uh, both Dan Bergeron and Samuel Allen uh, it, uh, the boat, both make recoveries for themselves uh, and their equipment and you can see them again racing very very soon if, uh, if you missed it earlier it was quite a substantial incident between those two that uh, brought the red flag out in heat number five Ben McDowell leads though 2.2 seconds ahead of this group here we have got a scrap as if this is for the race win now Sean Spratt number 45 Qualified well through the heats, been consistent, putting in those 18s and 16s and 15s in terms of points. He's got to fight hard for uh, this one. He's got Gareth Greer just behind him. Returning to action this weekend, and down the inside there goes Kevin Shine. That was a good move uh, from Kevin Shine in that number 40 car. We'll see him later as well in the uh, 125cc gearbox race. Three minutes gone already in this final. Ben McDowell comfortably leading at the moment by 3.6 seconds. John Spratt still there in second place. A bit of breathing room now uh, for Spratt. It's uh, due to Kevin Shine's move there on Gareth Greer, opening that gap. About four tenths of a second at the moment. So Greer, who we mentioned earlier, back in karting after over a decade away so more used to uh, motorsport formats more than anything but tarmac but has been uh, on very good form so far this weekend and has a chance here with, with the podium that's all oh, bit of a mistake there from shine and he's and yes has let uh, Greer through big snap of oversteer for, uh, for Shine, I think he just got out of the groove and off the road as well. I think is, uh, is that the number 69? Yes, it is. So Malcolmson has had a moment. That will be a thing now, especially towards the end of this weekend. Lots of racing uh, completed already round this short course version of Nuts Corner. And if you get out the groove, get off that tarmac, uh, well, that rubbered in line of the tarmac, I think that's exactly what happened to Kevin Shine has got a snap of Oversteer, did very well to hold on to that one. So that is, that is a, a fast corner. Not much margin for error, but he's got to get back on the horse now. And get back on it. Mark Vasey's not too far behind. Four minutes and fifth is completed then. Six seconds is now the lead for Ben McDowell who is very much in control of this race there is the uh, 133 Johnny McCarthy and Brian Cherry just behind as well 
Charles Pratt still holding on very nicely here. More than holding on, actually. Running his race. Very quickly at the front of this second group. But, oh, here comes Gareth Greer looking down the inside. Not enough of an overlap. You really do need to be fully alongside. And front wheel to front wheel. You're going to overtake through there. But the pressure now building for the second place driver, Sean Spratt. And cheered on by quite a few people in the comments, I can see. Thank you for getting in touch with us. Okay, John has got back on the pace here. Uh, yeah, yeah, 57, 6, 8, 3 last time around. A couple of tenths quicker than Sean Spratt. Still time remaining. Six minutes gone, two to go, and the plus one lap afterwards. Gareth Greer. I think he well, he's very quick over the top here last time around. Is he going to have a chance again? He's got... Yeah, it's that middle part of the straight where you feel like he's right on the cusp of being able to slip it down the inside. He has got it down the inside. Oh, nearly. Nearly down the inside. Sean Spratt's just got to keep things calm. Keep the eyes forward. Don't try and drive too defensively here because there's some good speed there. He's going to go hard to drive his right, though. Down the inside this time goes Greer. And Greer has got through. So Gareth Greer into second place then. Well positioned from Gareth Greer. Had to think about... How to make that move stick. As all oh, well, wide goes Spratt. That's a mistake. And that's going to let Kevin Shard get underneath the third. He may lose more here as well because there's Mark Basie in the Tony Kart suits and, uh, and bodywork in fifth place. Richard Malcolmson's back in this as well at the back of the train in sixth. It's almost a bit similar to what we saw with Kevin Shine uh, in the early part of this race. Just getting out the groove, running wide. Again, did very well to hold on to it. Down through the last couple of corners of the lap then. End of lap number eight. And McDowell still leads this race. Leads it by nine seconds ahead of now Gareth Greer. Kevin Shine up to third. Sean Spratt there now in fourth place. Mark Basie, I think, will still... You know, be thinking about a challenge late on in this race. There's won categories here at the Irish Kart GP before. So now very much the pressure on Kevin Shine and whether he can hold on to this third place. Gareth Greer is looking more and more comfortable by each corner. Stretching out that gap probably over a second now. It was 0.8 at the last count. Leaders about to see the last lap board. Eight and a half minutes of this race have been completed. And there is Ben McDowell over start finish to start the final lap of uh, what I think will be one of the more straightforward victories here today. Now Greer is looking good for second place. Kevin Stein is still there in third place. And taking advantage of the issue for Sean Spratt through this corner. Turn number three here. Good line from Kevin Shine. No mistakes on his part. We'll just look to bring this one home. Leader, though, halfway round the final lap. Well, I think in some ways he uh, he would have preferred to see uh, Daniel Burgoyne in this race with him. There were some great scraps between McDowell and Burgoyne early on in the weekend. Uh, with the circumstances fallen upon this class, Ben McDowell done what he needed to do to take a dominant victory here. Ben McDowell wins in Rotax 177 here at the Irish Kart GP for 2022 in comfortable fashion ahead of Gareth Greer in second place who comes across the line. Now third will go to Kevin Shine, fourth for Sean Spratt, fifth for Mark Basie, sixth for Richard Malcolmson, seventh for Johnny McCarthy, eighth for Brian Cherry. Well, there is your winner, Ben McDowell, completes a very professional weekend. And uh, I'm sure it wasn't as easy as it looked.
especially to keep the focus, make sure the start was good. I'm sure the start for the, for the first attempt of heat number five would have been on the minds of some of the drivers. Uh, but there is your winner, Ben McDowell. And by 9.6 seconds in the end, uh, the, history book, uh, the history books will show. And a very good performance indeed as well from, uh, from not just McDowell, but Gareth Greer as well. That's a fight from the second row of the grid. You know, those positions and Kevin Shine as well. Seems like people from the second row of the grid are doing quite nicely in these finals. Let's go to the next race though. Iami Cadet are up next. Iami Cadet grid up next. Kenzie McNally has pole position. Jason Park alongside on the front row. Chad Lamon and James Logan on row two. Charlie Blair and Brogan McDonald on row three. Sophie Campbell and Andy Stewart go from row four. And then Johnston Stewart completes the nine cart entry. Away we go then for eight minutes plus one lap in I Army Cadet. Good start for Kenzie McNally into turn one. Jason Park has had a good start as well as has Chad Lamont. So Chad Lamont up to second place already. It's been these top three who've been fighting over the course of this weekend. James Logan there in fourth place as well. He's had some good moments across the course of the past few days. And down the inside looks Lamont for the lead. Takes the lead to Chad Lamont has taken the initiative in the early stages of this I-Army Cadet final. McNally coming back though. McNally back up alongside. Is he up alongside enough? Lamon leaves him room. And it does indeed look like McNally has got back through. Yes, he has. So McNally back into the lead then. Lamon in second place. Park in third. Fourth for Logan. Then everybody else filing into the horseshoe for the first time. Good response there from Kenzie McNally. If you were with us earlier on in the day, uh, heat four to an issue, a mechanical issue, and Kenzie McNally retired from that one. Apart from that, he's won three of the heats of the five held so far this weekend. And the uh, the other one that he did finish and didn't win, it was a second place. So Kenzie's very much been the driver to beat so far uh, this weekend. 2021 North Ireland uh, I Army Cadets champion. Jason Park knows this track very well, though. He's leading the Carts Club Championship uh, by a big margin at the moment. Definitely want to race this one well. Do it for his younger sister, who's five years of age this weekend. And especially in the cadets, this is where these longer races change the dynamic of uh, what's happening out there on circuit. Top three working together well, though. Park having a look at Lamont trying to get through into second place. We've got a 1.1 second gap. Oh, down the inside. That's a good one from Jason Park. He's got that absolutely inch perfect. Brilliant from Jason Park. Fair credit to Chad Lamon as well. Gave just enough room. And a fast corner entry for Jason Park to go down the inside and take second place. 1.1 seconds the gap between the first group and the second group. Jason Park is going along very nicely here. Now, we saw this situation, a similar situation, in, uh, in the fifth heat earlier on today. And Jason Park try to push Kenzie McNally along here in the effort to drop Chad Lamont. It looks like that is the plan at the moment for Jason Park. Look at that gap growing out to Chad Lamont behind. Yep, bump drafting down the start finish straight. 65.2 for McNally, 65.1 for Park, 65.3 for Lamont. A couple more laps like that, and it is going to be between these two for the race victory. Three and a half minutes gone so far. Not even halfway uh, through this race yet. There's a good scrap going on behind as well, I can tell you, between James Logan 
uh, Sophie Campbell and Charlie Blair. Here it is. And in fact, I think Sophie Campbell has got through into fourth place. Yes, she has. So Sophie Campbell, who had disappointment uh, earlier on today in heat number five, but a very strong four feet. She's fighting through again. Very, very good indeed. Brogan McDonald down the inside of Charlie Blair there. And McDonald takes that position. That's sixth place. For the, uh, the driver who won the Bambino category here at RGP three years ago. And his fourth appearance, rather nine years old from Lurgan. That's all wide, very wide there. As James Logan has managed to get it back on circuit without losing any positions. That was, uh, that was very well done, but also very lucky at the same time for James Logan. Big effort going in from the leaders just to uh, keep you aware of that situation. It's, oh, Blair down the inside. Takes two for the price of one. Brilliant stuff for Charlie Blair. Past both McDonald's and Logan. Early apex through turn four. Has been a, a very much a favourite for a lot of drivers to make a move through there because the natural driving line is down the inside again. Here comes... Uh, Brogan McDonald retakes that position. The natural, the natural racing line takes you out wide, sweep you in tight to a late apex to open up the next corner. You want to do that because it's a long, long run up the hill uh, to the next braking zone. But what it does do, it leaves a big gap on the inside for an overtaking driver to stick their cart down the inside and take that road position. Uh, but the news at the front, McNally and Park have pushed out a 3.5 and more gap to Chad Lamon. Chad Lamon has been completely dropped uh, in this battle for the race win. In fact, is now being caught by uh, Sophie Campbell behind. 1.2 seconds, the gap between Chad and uh, Sophie. So there is the gap. First and second together as two back to third place. Kenzie McNally can't be playing this one though. Not getting too ruffled by Jason Park being there right behind. Jason Park will probably give a little push again. Even though it's too early to attack. We'll just want to try and leave this to the last lap. I've seen him try it before. So a good attempt in heat number five, which McNally then came back with an even better uh, post around the outside to take the race victory. But we're not quite there yet. It's coming up to seven minutes through this race. Still a few laps to go. Keep an eye on the battle for third place as well. Sophie Campbell is continuing to close in to number 14 of Chad Lamon. One second uh, is the gap between them now. As the number 27 of uh, Logan McDonald just behind James Logan. So James Logan has got through on this lap. I think Charlie Blair has got through as well. Uh, the number 10 is down the inside again. Some great overtaking going on uh, from Brogan McDonald. Yeah, Charlie Blair has got back through. That's all changing around for fifth place. And the final corner becomes still McNally from Park. After sitting there on the rear bumper, Chad Lamon comes across the line at 5.69. And so Gamble is uh, now seven tenths back from Chad Lamon. So we've got potential battles for first, third, uh, and fifth place here as we go through eight minutes. Now Jason Park. Seen him do some moves over the top here. This isn't the last lap. He's still got one more after this for these drivers to sort this out in the I Army Cadet final for the 2022 Irish Kart GP. It's been an expertly put together race by both of these drivers. It's a shame that both of them can't win. But they're going on to the final lap now. Can Kenzie McNally hold on to this race victory? He's taken three heat victories so far this weekend. Jason Park 
took the heat win in heat four that started off the day here at Nuts Corner. Is he looking down the inside for that same move that he pulled on Lannan? Yes, he is. Oh, brilliant stuff from Jason Park. Tried that move, but successfully did it earlier in the race, and now he's done it again for the race lead, for the GP win. McNally's trying to get back through. They're going to go over the top of the hill in a short few moments' time. McNally has fought back from this position before. We saw this in heat number five. Difference was Jason Park hadn't attacked where he did. It. Park's trying to get the squeeze on there. McNally's up the inside. He's got back through. Great stuff from Kenzie McNally. Nothing Jason Park could do about that. McNally closes it off. That's where Park made the move in heat number five. McNally's going to go defensive into the horseshoe for the last time. What a race this has been. Park's going to try and go around the outside. Has McNally got it? Yes, Kenzie McNally has his sprint to the line. Jason Park's still not giving this up. Is it going to be side by side over the line? Yes, it is. Kenzie McNally wins the Irish Cup GP I Army Cadet title by 0.081 seconds. What a finish. Jason Parks finishes in second place. Chad Lamin is on the podium as well in third. Finishes half a tenth ahead of Sophie Campbell in fourth. Charlie Blair in fifth. Brogan McDonald sixth. James Logan seventh. Jonathan Stewart in eighth. And Andy Stewart in ninth. What a finish. What a pair of performances there from both Kenzie McNally and Jason Parker. There's a good bit of sportsmanship there between the two of them. Brilliantly done by them all weekend. But it is Kenzie McNally from Portadown, 12 years of age, who is your IARMY cadet champion. And uh, Chad Lamon in third. We're going to have to cut straight to our next race, though. Minimax are out next, but well done to all of our IARMY cadet winners. We'll see them again next year. Minimax are out on circuit now. Let's head to the grid then for the Minimax final. Scott Riley has pole position. Charlie Gardner alongside on the front row. Daniel Kilpatrick and Evan Purcell go from row two. Jamie Kidney and Cole McFadden Biggerstaff on row number three. Row four, we find Evan Johnston and Lewis Arthur. Scott McGiven and John O'Neill complete the 10 carts entering this, the Irish Cart GP 2022 Minimax final. Well, the two front row sitters were tied on points across the course of the five heats so far here this weekend. This could be a titanic duel here at Nuts Corner. Ready to go racing here for the Irish Cart GP Minimax final. Eight minutes on the clock and we are good and racing into the first couple of corners. The whole field has got through all ten runners running strongly at the moment through turn two and turn three. And it looks like it's Scott Riley who's got the early lead in this one. There's a little bit of debris being spread out to driver's right there. The number 66 of Charlie Garner already trying to find a way through as they go through turn number four. Don't count out uh, Daniel Kilpatrick there, the number 10. He's been strong so far this weekend. It's a good start for those at the front of the order. This, I feel, is going to be a very fast-paced race. Not going to be any or as much of the holding back, holding position, isolating style of racing that you sometimes see uh, in the junior uh, or the, the younger categories. As this has been a very competitive category, this is going to be more like a seniors race, I feel. Where it's going to be every driver for themselves. But end of lap number one then, Scott Riley leads. By a tenth of a second ahead of Charlie Gardner. Daniel Kilpatrick there in third place. Jane Kidney's had a good start. He's up to fourth place in cart number 21. He's got a head of Evan Purcell. And uh, Colin McFadden, bigger staff, completes the top six at the moment. And Scott Riley, 12 years of age. His uh, fourth appearance here in the Irish Cart GP. 66 there of uh, Charlie Gardner had a couple more uh, appearances it's not usually a driver who races uh, in Minimax has raced in juniors in the past uh, as well but is racing here in the Minimax category this weekend also 12 years of age uh, from Laan 
Good luck though there from Scott Riley. He's edged out by uh, a tenth as there's a mechanical flag to the number 22, which is Cole McFadden bigger staff. So unfortunately for Cole, that is going to be the end of uh, the race for cart number 22. Was in sixth place. Not sure what the problem is for Cole McFadden uh, bigger staff. I've seen a couple of loose bumpers be called in for mechanicals so far today. Not seen any contact involving carts number 22. I think, in fact, uh, Carl McFadden bigger stuff has already pulled in. So that is a real shame for uh, a driver who started in Bambinos at the age of seven and uh, will have hoped for more, having been well, is the uh, NI champ leader in. Mini Max at the moment, but sadly his Irish Kart GP journey ends there. Three minutes gone. Lap three completed. Scott Riley still leading this one from uh, Charlie Gardner. Here's the scrap for four. Amy Kidney and Evan Purcell going at it with a bit wide there through turn number three, clearly pushing hard. Kidney defending to the inside there. Might uh, be a bit of a thought here that the, the top three in this race can have just been a cut above the others across the course of this weekend. To the inside goes Evan Purcell. Now, once again, you've got to be, that is such a fast corner entry. You've got to be up alongside, wheel to wheel, front wheel, front axles or front axles have really stand any chance of getting through there safely. That's wide from Kidney. Feeling that... Uh, Attention from Evan Purcell behind at the moment. This uh, top three have been good way clear of the rest. And down the inside goes Evan Purcell for fourth. Right. I think they'll uh, probably fight for this position as uh, best of the rest. Riley, Gardner and Kilpatrick. There was nine points covering them. All of them took Heat's victories across the course of the day. Scott Riley, they're in good control of this race. Pretense clear at the last check ahead of Gardner, but Gardner has been throwing in some good pace uh, the last few laps. They started to increase it once again. I think it is starting to close in more towards two tenths behind Riley going into the second half of this race yeah indeed quarter of a second now is the gap between Riley and Gardner they start fighting as well Daniel Kilpatrick is not too far behind only 1.2 off the lead we've probably got to keep this pace up we've got to keep pushing it's a different style of race this is it's not as much of a, a working together and two engines versus one sort of final it is just a out and out push to the max kind of final just to make sure that it's uh, not a trio fighting for it at the end of the race but at the same time they're not pulling away from Daniel Kilpatrick at the moment Charlie Gardner won't want to just sit there in second place he will want to have a go and have an opportunity at taking the lead away from Scott Riley that could open the door for Daniel Kilpatrick to catch up and potentially take advantage of anything that should go on ahead of him. Quicker from Gardner again. Less than two tenths now the gap. Six minutes of the race gone. Two to go. Through turn two. And now turn three. This tricky left-hander. The cart just wants to do anything but turn left. It wants to scuttle off wide and into... Uh, the debris off two drivers right. We've seen a couple of drivers out there today. It's such a crucial, crucial corner to get the run up to turn four right. Charlie Gardner now is starting to really attack him. That's the first defensive move that we've seen out of Scott Riley. Riley defensive again. One and a half minutes of it to go. Oh, contact! Big contact on the bumpers. Bumpers locked together between Riley and Gardner. Both of them still running. Now, will that. It's hard to tell from this angle whether that has... No, I don't think it has. I don't think it has dropped the bumper uh, for Gardner. But that really will 
be uh, that'll be a good sight in a way to Daniel Kilpatrick that these two drivers aren't going to give each other an inch. There could be an opportunity here as we go into the last couple of minutes. We've gone through seven minutes. There'll be one more on the clock and three more laps, including the one that they are on. But Charlie Gardner looks at this stage of the race to be the quicker driver but doesn't have the track position. He's now got a very good run up the inside. No, but again, not far enough alongside Scott Riley to safely think about going for a move there. I wouldn't even have described that as a 51, given the speed uh, entry. That was close this time to Riley, and Kilpatrick is coming into this. Kilpatrick is gaining all the time. There's going to be two more laps. They're going to come across the line with about eight seconds on the clock. Kilpatrick took half a second out of them last time around. Gardner looking for a way through. Scott Riley defending really well at the moment. Great driving. But this is what we've wanted. This is what we've been thinking might happen throughout the day in Minimax. These three drivers, toe-to-toe-to-toe, -to -toe -to -toe, going into the last couple of laps in the Minimax final. It sure has delivered. Still Scott Riley leading ahead of Gardner and Kilpatrick. Evan Purcell is uh, comfortable in fourth place. Four seconds behind these, but 2.5 clear of Evan Johnston uh, behind in fifth. He's had a good race here. He's moved up two positions from uh, the starting place on the grid. Last lap board is about to come out. This has been a big lap from Scott Riley. Has got a gap as they go on to the final lap of the race. What can Charlie Gardner do? Well, he can close in a fair bit through turn number two. Must get a good run through turn three. Not going to be close enough to go for it through turn four. This is the part of the course where Gardner has been a touch stronger than Scott Riley over the past few laps. He's definitely got a good run here. Is there going to be a space? Riley goes defensive. Oh, that was nearly two moves. And here comes Kilpatrick down the inside of Gardner. Oh, there's contact and Kyle. Kilpatrick spins. Kilpatrick spins. Falls out of the running for the win. But all the while, it looks like Scott Riley is going to come through the, fast, the last couple of corners to take the race victory and become the 2022 Irish Karts GP winner in Minimax. It's a win for Scott Riley. Ahead of Charlie Gardner in second place by almost a second. Third is going to go to Kilpatrick on the line. He just holds on by less than a tenth ahead of Evan Purcell. Fifth for Evan Johnston. Sixth for Jamie Kidney. Seventh will be Lewis Arthur. Eighth for John O'Neill. Ninth for Scott McGiven. A retirement for Cole McFadden. Bigger staff. Scott Riley, though, holds on to it from pole position. And uh, that was a very fast charged race that had its moments. Scott Riley came under a lot of pressure. But the driver from Navan, 12 years of age, takes the win ahead of Charlie Gardner and Daniel Kilpatrick. My oh my, these uh, finals keep serving up some absolutely fantastic racing here today at Nuts Corner. We're going to get ready, though, for our next final heading out on circuit right now. It's Honda Cadets up on circuit next. Time for the Honda Cadet final for the 2022 Irish Kart GP. Ewan House has pole position, Declan Noble alongside on the front row. Archie Condy and Charlie Condy form up the second row of the grid. Conan Warnock and Noah McFarlane there on the third row of the grid. Row four will contain Harry McDowell and Max Colbert. Row five has got Ryan Arthur and Harry Montgomery on it. And in completing the 12 cart field on row six, you've got Gareth Winning and Travis Bailey. Well, it's been almost a perfect weekend so far for Ewan House, the S-plate holder from Dunblane in Scotland. 
but uh, all those heats, all that they've done is decide this grid for this one-off eight minutes plus one lap race. Who's going to take the Honda Cadet title for the Irish Karts GP for 2022? We're going to find out across the course of the next 10 minutes into turn one. Goes Ewan House, leads, nicely controlled start there by the pole sitter into turn two and turn three they go. Looks like Archie Conley's had a good start as well. Is up to second place through turn three. All clean so far for the Honda Cadets. That's what we like to see. But look at this challenge coming in from Conley. Well read by Ewan House. Declan Noble still in there as well. Bit of jostling in the second half of the field. But after that early attack, this is just what Ewan House would have been looking for. Hold the lead at the front. Again, like we've seen with a couple of races so far, these finals, the big difference is, is that it is a ranked grid. It's not random. It's not average grid positions across the course of a number of races. It is the performance order that we've seen across the five heats so far. So it will be harder in this race to lead from the front with the uh, faster drivers not that far behind. And the black number one then. 0.4 of a second is the lead for Ewan House. Now McFarlane has come through in second place. And it's the two Condies, Archie and Charlie, in third and fourth place. Declan Noble there in fifth place. Down the inside goes the number 17 of Charlie Condy. Gets through past Archie Condy for third. Conan Warnock's in there as well. In the green and black. Had some good races, especially at the start of today here at Hook's Corner. Heat number four, finished in second place. Two minutes of this race gone. Getting that characteristic Honda Cadet uh, groups forming up already. This uh, quartet could do something useful by working together. We need to, actually, because uh, Noah McFarlane is galloping away. This is a really strong start to the race for Noah McFarlane, who started in sixth place on the grid. It's an epic couple of first laps and uh, it's only half a second behind. It's down the inside, here comes Noble, trying to get past Condi on the inside for turn number two. Takes the position, Warnock's to the outside now and will be on the outside again through turn number three. Trying to switch back to the inside now on the approach to, to uh, turn number four. Loss of pace though, around the outside uh, comes the other Condi, Archie Condi getting involved there. And Noble, who we saw in good spirits before heat number five. Got that uh, front row grid slot he was looking for. Now try and set about catching up to Noah McFarlane. Comfortably in the lead there at the moment. Ewan House, half a second clear of Noah McFarlane. It's the S plate ahead of the 29. Declan Noble now in third. Charlie. Condy there with the white helmet and the black suit. Cart number 17 in fourth. And a big run there from Condy off of the last corner. This could be a chance down the inside into turn one for third place. Has got it. Great move by Charlie Condy. Confident running. Went for it. Backed himself. Executed it perfectly. Now. Can Charlie Condy lead this group back up towards Noah McFarlane? They do need to get themselves organised. And, uh, well, here's a scrap that uh, I don't think we were expecting. Noah McFarlane is really, really attacking Ewan House now. 0.3 of a second was the check at the last count. I think that's gone down now. Noah McFarlane well, did take. He's the only driver to beat Ewan House so far this weekend. That was in heat number one. Had a few problems since. Again, this is where the final races can be different when you've got that order. It's not that mix of uh, performance levels through the heats. Now McFarlane did have a, a no score to finish off his day yesterday. That's uh, the main reason why he was further down the order on the grid. Doesn't stop him being quick down the inside there of Warnock. Uh, was Archie Condy, so that's Archie Condy up to fifth place now. Halfway through this final for Honda Cadet. 
Ewan House continuing to lead, but under a lot of pressure from Noah McFar McFarlane behind. There's another set, number 17 of Charlie Condy. So this great scrap going on for third place. Declan Noble there. And the local driver lives not too far from here. Conor Warnock as well. We'll be hoping there's a bit of action ahead. He still has a chance here. Even though he's slipped down to, uh, down to sixth place. Five and a half minutes gone then. You <laughs> see that Declan Noble gesturing to say, come on, let's work together. I'll lead. You push along. And we'll catch the two ahead. Ewan House has responded to the attacks from Noah McFarlane. Has got the lead gap back up to 0.4 of a second. So they've got themselves organised. Archie Condy looking to the outside there of Charlie Condy, trying to find a way through. Out round now and on to the back straight. I just wonder, is that an area where Declan Noble's struggling a touch? That's why I just went defensive there to the inside. And Warnock's still there in sixth place. It's been a good race so far for uh, Travis Bailey as well. He is up to eighth place. Had started uh, in twelfth. It's good to see. He's got ahead of Max Colbert and Harry McDowell, Montgomery and Gareth winning uh, across the course of the race so far. And it's too far behind uh, Ryan Arthur as well. It's very much split into two groups now, two divisions, the front six and the uh, and the second six. And up to seven minutes on the clock. This group still noble from Condi. Condi have dropped. On a Warnock now. A bit of a push coming in there from Charlie Condy onto Declan Noble. Here's your leader though. Ewan House. Hasn't competed in this event before, but is used to these uh, one off, one day, two day events. That's why he's the S plate holder. Driver from Dunblane. That's a driver, as you would argue, could have cracked under that pressure, but has now got a 0.6 of a second lead over Noah McFarlane in second place, who's comfortably ahead uh, of this group, so looking good for second place. But this is, the, this is the fight for the last spot on the podium, and all three of these drivers want it. Declan Noble still holds on to it. They're in fourth place, Archie Condy in fifth. Charlie Condy has had good form this year. On the Celtic Cup round at Lark Hall earlier in 2022. Pushing again along Declan Noble. Time is now up. So the leaders come over the line. Last lap board will be out. Still, Ewan House leads by 0.6 of a second from Noah McFarlane. The big battle out on circuit at the moment. This one here on your screens. Fourth, third place. Declan Noble in the orange helmet still leading ahead of Charlie Condy in the white. Then Archie Condy in the yellow helmet. And uh, having watched a fair amount of Honda Cadet racing, I know not to predict uh, what could happen here between these three carts course of the last lap. They could make it in the exact same order that we might now. They could all not make it at all and end up everything else in between. On to the last lap to go. Big lap there from Ewan House. has got a 1.3 second lead now. He's just got to bring it home ahead of Noah McFarlane. Noah McFarlane likewise unlikely to be able to catch that kind of gap in the last uh, lap or so. Doesn't want to take any risks. He's got 2.5 seconds over this battle for third. Still with Declan Noble in the lead of it. Charlie Condy in fourth. Archie Condy in fifth. Ryan Arthur has got through into sixth place. has got past Conor Warnock, who unfortunately has just faded in the second half of this race. Noble defends to the inside. No attack from Charlie Condy over the top of the hill. He's going to have to defend, though, again. As Ewan House comes down the hill to take 
a very, very good victory. Four eight wins and a second place. Not quite the perfect weekend, but very, very close. And a win in the Irish Kart GP in Honda Cadet for Ewan House. What a champion. What a drive. Second goes to Noah McFarlane. Third does go to Declan Noble, who holds on. A great day here, especially his Sunday. He's put in some good drives. He'll be very happy with that podium. Charlie Condy fourth, fifth for Archie Condy, sixth for Ryan Arthur, seventh for Conan Warnock, eighth for Travis Bailey, ninth for Max Colbert, and rounding out the top ten there was Harry McDowell. But Ewan House is your winner and can add the RGP plate to the S plate and everything else that he's winning in Honda Cadet at the moment. A fist bump to Declan Noble there and uh, got to give it to Noah McFarlane as well. Noah McFarlane uh, put in a really, really stern test, especially in the first half of that race to Ewan House. But the pre-race favourite is your champion. Well done to Ewan House and all of our Honda Cadet drivers. Very good stuff indeed and entertaining racing as ever from Honda Cadet and uh, definitely if you've enjoyed that do make sure you subscribe to Alpha Live for more of the same. We're going to move on though to our next final and it's one of our highlight finals of the day. It is the final for F100. The F100 Frank Stewart Memorial Cup uh, Irish Kart GP final. Its grid looks a little bit like this. Alex Kobe has pole position. Noel Brennan alongside on the front row. Drew Stewart and Francis, son of Frank Stewart, the original founder of this, the Irish Grand Prix 40 years ago. They start on row two. Darren Mayer and Donald Regan start on the third row of the grid. Martin Brackenberry and Chris Hughes start on row four. Hughes being the first of those in the pre-95 category. Robert Key, the other pre-95 category runner, starts on row five alongside Mark Nugent and Gary Turkington due there on row six. So the top three drivers over the line all receive cash prizes. The winner of the race receives the Frank Stewart Memorial Cup. And big thanks to uh, our sponsors for this race, Stewart's Painting and Decorating. Big thanks to all of our sponsors here today. RPM Racing Engines for their support of Honda Cadet. Gardner Farm Equivalents for Minimax and KKC for iArmy Cadet. This should be quite a special one. Great grid of drivers formed up in some fantastic machinery from a bygone era. Turn up the noise on this one. This is uh, going to be a cacophony that uh, has been worth waiting for. Nine pre-2000s, two pre-1995s, ready to go. Alex Kirby, number 99, will take us from pole position for eight minutes plus one lap here at Nuts Corner for the F100 final for the Frank Stewart Memorial Cup at the Irish Kart GP 2022 into turn one we go. Kobe leads and going to try to go around the outside there. It's Donald Regan and that's going to be an off and out of the race stops before the end of the, the front of the barrier there that was a big moment that was all in from Donald Regan and it did not work number 14 of Noel Brennan's had a good start he's up into second place so they file through and onto the back straight this is the start that Alex Kirby would have wanted uh, as part of the pre-2000 pre-2000 category all with the yellow number boards the yellow backgrounds I should say on the number boards uh, the white backgrounds for the two pre-95s which I believe at the moment is led uh, by, by number 48 of Chris Hughes Alex Kobe has really grown across the course uh, in terms of performance, oh, it's around there and out. Is is that the number 73 of Brackenberry? Yes, it is. So Martin Brackenberry's had a, a spin there. Or some form of mechanical problem that's initiated him into that spin. And unfortunately, he has gone round there.
Good fight for second place going on now. Drew Stewart. Who uh, had problems at the start of heat number three. Closing in on Noel Brennan. Might be thinking here at the moment. It's just uh, perhaps wiser to push Brennan along or, or not put Brennan off because they are closing in on Alex Kobe. Number 99 cart still leads this race, but now only by oh, just more than 0.1 of a second. Noel Brennan. Had a heat win earlier on today in heat number two. Didn't have a good start at all to the weekend. Only scored 10 points in the uh, first heat. And it's uh, been something that we've seen across the course of this weekend. That uh, nobody's really dominated this F100 category. Of course, the other machinery needs a bit more love and care to make sure that it runs to the tip top condition. Good fight going on there between uh, the number 41 of Daumer and the 48 of Chris Hughes, I think it was. Chris Hughes leading in pre-95 at the moment by six seconds ahead of Robert Key. Oh, touch wide there from Kobe. May be under attack here from Noel Brennan. Down towards turn number one. Can Brennan get up alongside? He's going to go for the move down the inside into turn one. Did he get it done? Yes. Noel Brennan takes the lead then on lap number four. Three minutes of the race gone. Five to go. Number 99 looking over the shoulder there. Alex Kobe aware that Drew Stewart is there and Francis Stewart as well. And Francis is now the fastest driver on circuit. Oh, down the inside. Not seen too many moves there today. But Drew Stewart goes for it, takes second place. Francis Stewart is the fastest driver on circuit, though. 57.422 is now down the inside of Alex Kobe, and it's all going wrong at the moment. For the pole sitter, down to fourth place now. And how much would Francis Stewart love to win this race? At the event, his father originated some 40 years ago. And a big part of bringing the F100s over here to Nuts Corner for this event. We're in there in third place. Did have a heat win yesterday. Wasn't able to run in the second heat. Second in that. Oh, oh, out! Oh, it's the 48! Oh, it's the Chris Hughes number 48 that's been dominant in pre-95 all weekend. Will not see the final checkered flag. That is such a shame for Chris Hughes. Not quite sure what the cause of the retirement is, but that is Chris Hughes out of the race. Robert Key is now the sole pre-1995 runner left in the race. Meanwhile, though, at the front of this, the pre-2000 and overall battle, Noel Brennan stretching out that lead now, holding it a, a, above four-tenths of a second. Drew Stewart in second place, Francis Stewart in third. Fourth still, Alex Kobe. He's got back on top of the speed. It's... Uh, Starting to find something again. In fact, he's thrown it down the inside of Stewart while Stewart was making an adjustment. That was a brave attack from Kobe. I can see why he did it. Stewart was making a little adjustment. And Kobe thought whilst he was distracted, maybe go for the move. But Francis Stewart held it to the outside. And retains third position. Five and a half minutes gone. Two and a half plus the one lap to go. Noel Brennan still controlling this race. As he has done since he made that move on Alex Kobe into turn one. About three or four laps ago. Actually extended the lead to more than half a second. As uh, these wonderful F100 machines continue to sing out here at uh, Ulster Karting Club at Nuts Corner. Same pieces of kit that uh, so many uh, British and Irish drivers who uh, race to the top ends of motorsports you know, came through.
karting in the 80s and the 90s. Oh, down the inside goes Stewart. Francis Stewart gets past Drew Stewart there for second place. Alice Kobe's going to come in as well and try and get back into third place here. He's squeezing in there. Oh, and just about makes it work. Past Drew Stewart, who's now down to fourth place. Not long to go, though, in this final. You've got to feel that if, if Francis Stewart wants to win this race, big laps have got to come in now. 0.9 of a second is the gap to Noel Brennan. Brennan just needing to keep the eyes forward. Keep that Tony Kart flowing through the corner as well. Been in this position before in rounds of the F100 uh, UK Championship. Won at Kimbolton last year. Up over the top of the rise, they will go. This, this lap in particular will be very telling for what the pace difference between first and second is now. Alice Kobe is coming back into this. I just wonder, was it him holding some energy back for the latter stages of the race? Some tyre performance as well. All of these carts this uh, weekend running on Maxi Green Slicks. Two more laps to go. What is the lead gap? for Brennan, it's actually gone up 1.2 seconds, that is a big moment for Noel Brennan, two laps to go and he's got a gap to the rest of the field greater than one second, it's down to these two now, oh Francis Stewart runs a touch wide there for three, Alex Kobe's going to be attacking, into turn four Stewart's wise to it, sits to the inside, closes off that opportunity for Kobe to go up the inside on to the back straight now this is all good news, of course, for Noel Brennan because that gap keeps going out further and further as these two are now content to scrap it out for second place. Down the hill they come into the last sector. Oh, and yeah, it just looks at the front end of Francis Stewart's cart. The CRG chassis is struggling at the moment for a bit of grip. Touch of un understeer and oversteer as well through there. We're on to the final lap then. 1.3 seconds is the lead gap for Noel Brent Brennan to win the Frank Stewart Memorial Cup. Frank Stewart now in second place, Alex Kobe in third. At the moment, those will be your one, two, three, taking the cash prizes. And up the run they go. Oh, Kobe down the inside. Has he got the move done? Yes, he has. Through into second place. What a fight back this has been from Alex Kobe. But Noel Brennan has, uh, well, taken this one from P2. A strong middle of the race, got himself into the lead of the race and then just has not looked back. There he is. And uh, a great weekend for Noel Brennan. Didn't start in the best of fashions, but it doesn't matter because Noel Brennan is going to be the victor. Noel Brennan wins the Frank Stewart Memorial Cup and takes the title of F100 champion here at the 2022 Irish Kart GP. Second place goes to Alex Cobby. Uh, third place to Francis Stewart. Fourth for Drew Stewart. Fifth for Darren Mayer. Sixth for Donald Regan. Seventh place goes to Mark Nugent. And then retirements for Gary Turkington and Martin Brackenbury. That was your pre-2000. Uh, Result and pre-95, Robert Key finishes as your winner. And uh, Chris Hughes was a retirement. There is what a beautiful, beautiful piece of kit that is. And it is your victorious number 14 Tony Cart for Noel Brennan, who takes uh, the cash prize for winning and the Frank Stewart Memorial Cup on this 40th running of the, uh, the Irish Cart GP event created by Frank Stewart of course so uh, a very very emotional paddock and uh, hugs all round great weekend fantastic to have F100 here very much hope that it continues in the future right let's move on to our final final for the uh, non gearbox competition of the weekend next out on circuit it's the Bambinos
Time for our youngest drivers in the paddock to take centre stage for their final at the Irish Kart GP 2022. Here is your grid for the Bambino final. Lewis Hazlitt has pole position. Jack Harney alongside him on the front row of the grid. Ethan Robinson has improved through the course of the weekend. Starts on row two alongside Callum McBay. Ryan Armstrong and Amelia Dial start on row number three. And then completing the seven cart field will be Miles Purcell. Another very intriguing final, this, and the story leading into it. Lewis Hazlitt has started all of the races, all of the heats so far, uh, from second on the grid and has had great success from there. But what can he do from pole position? Similarly, Jack Harney has the issue that seemed apparent only on the exit of turn number three been fixed on the number 42 because it was costing him uh, especially in the fifth heat of, today, of the weekend held earlier today where uh, Arnie finished in fourth place it'll be standing start and eight minutes plus one lap Lewis Hazlitt Ulster Cart Club Championship leader wins so far this year at the Celtic Cup and the North West Plate. He's also trying his hand at uh, electric Bambino karting. Took second in the mighty Bambino Winter Cup at Wilton Mill last year. And talking to Wilton Mill, got coverage of the uh, British Car Championships round at Wilton Mill today as well here on Alpha Live. So once we've finished here at uh, Nuts Corner, do go and check that out if you've got a bit of time on your Sunday evening. Henry Bodet and Anthony Jordan taking you through the action at that one. But we're ready to go here at Nuts Corner for the Bambino final, the 2022 Irish Kart GP. We've seen today already several previous winners of this race move on into the cadets and the minis who's going to be our winner here in 2022 the 33 of lewis hazlitt will take us from pole position and away we go for the start of this one good start for everybody really all streaming down into turn one it's a good start for robinson already up to second place behind hazlitt and it looks like uh, callum mcveigh's challenging also number 42 of jack harney into third place 47 miles per cell, gaining at least one position past Amelia Dial there. Oh, bit of contact between uh, two of the cars, the number 66 of Brian Armstrong and Callum McVeigh, but everybody's still running in the race. All seven carts heading up towards turn number four. That was just the start that Lewis Haslitz wanted. argue again that uh, from second on the grid Jack Harney got a, a better initial start has held it well to the inside and was helped by Ethan Robinson uh, going down the inside as well in cart number 36 coming round to complete lap number one then Lewis Haslett leads the race from Ethan Robinson and straight away we could see a top two here working together to break away trying to drop Jack Harney who has taken two heat wins so far this weekend so Hazlitt from Robinson Harney Callum McVeigh in fourth place Miles Purcell in fifth Ryan Armstrong in sixth and Amelia Dial in seventh place Strong and Dial, the two novices. Uh, but, uh, they've never been to this circuit before. As number 33, though, of Lewis Hazlitt, second appearance uh, in this IGP event. The driver for uh, Port Glennon. Good work at the moment coming in from uh, Jack Harney there. Carts number 42. Slightly worried about the issues for the cart earlier. That looked like a move being done down the inside into second place. And yes, Harney got it done. Brave on the brakes there. And 
gets by Ethan Robinson and is up into third place. Particularly we're looking at turn three, the exit of turn three. Cart number 42 has been struggling there. It's got some good pace now. Down the pit straight. Is there going to be a chance for Jack Harney to take the lead here? To the inside? No. Well, around the outside goes uh, Lewis Hazlitt there. Holds up the position. Ethan Robinson there again. Through turn three. Let's have a look at this loop. Is it driving off the corner? Well, no, it's not. No, no. And once again, and once again, Ethan had to slow down. And uh, in fact, more problems. In fact, the 42 looks to be slowing. Oh, once again, more troubles. It looks like for Jack Harney not being able to get off the corners. Seems okay on the run up to the top end of the circuit. Robinson fights back, he takes second place. Very entertaining uh, race so far. But whilst all of this is going on, Lewis Hazlitt is galloping down the road. He's going to have a big, big lead now. Once again, just driving off the corner. We saw this in, uh, well, towards the back end of heat number four. And again, in heat number five. The number 42 just seems to struggle getting off the corners. 2.5 seconds is now the lead for Lewis Hazlitt. On this stage, it's looking very good. Well, let's look there. Here comes Amelia Dial trying to go down the inside of uh, Mars Personal. This is over sixth place. Down the inside, that's a beautiful move there by Amelia Dial. Been racing for a couple of years uh, now in Bambino competitions across, uh, across the UK. And uh, in fact, we'll be at Shennington next weekend uh, for the finale of the Super One Karting Championships, which if you want to follow that, here's the place to be on Alpha Live at Shennington. We'll have uh, all of the races from Sunday's round. Very much looking forward to that. What will be the season finale? Ryan Armstrong there, the number 66, is the next driver that uh, Amelia Dial is trying to get by there. So the number 27, uh, 47 Miles Purcell goes around the outside. That's a beautiful move once again. Uh, this time from Miles Purcell back up into sixth position. Around five and a half minutes gone then. Lewis Hazlitt continuing to lead the race. Three seconds is now the advantage over Ethan Robinson. Jack Carney dropping further back. Now 7.1 off the overall lead. Callum McVay may be closing in the number 75. Dial back down the inside of Miles Purcell. And once again takes that position of sixth place into turn number one. As, oh, round is McVeigh. McVeigh is round uh, on the exit of turn three. Now, I just wonder, is that another driver getting caught out by whatever's going on with the 42? We saw that happen, or, or an incident happened to Ethan Robinson in, uh, in heat number four, where the 42 didn't accelerate at uh, the rate expected by the driver behind, causing a bit of a bit of confusion and, and an off. I just wonder, is that uh, befallen Callum McVeigh this time? Amelia Dial trying to find a route past Ryan Armstrong now. Number 66. Heading towards the final third of this race now. Dial has uh, been able to do a couple of overtakes into turn one. Is there going to be another opportunity here? What you're looking for it is Amelia Dial, but that's where, once again, another characteristic we've seen today. Ryan Armstrong's number 66. It's very strong towards the, uh, the end of the straights, where that top end and that high speed uh, is a really good characteristic and attribute to have. Just having a look there at Ethan Robinson, still in second place. 3.8 seconds 
behind the leader Lewis Hazlitt but six seconds clear now of Jack Harney Twenty seconds on the clock remaining. Now we'll see whether the last lap board is going to come out for Lewis Hazlitt this time around. I think it will do. Still got a couple of corners to go as time ticks by on to eight minutes. This crap still going on. Fifth place as well. Armstrong, Dale and Purcell. There's your race lead though. Lewis Hazlitt. In the Lewis Hamilton helmet as well. Has been really strong all day and all weekend. No heat results worse than second place. It's more than enough to give Lewis the uh, pole position. Where might this young driver go in years to come? He's had a fantastic season so far. And it's just a mere number of corners away from adding the Irish Kart GP Bambino uh, winner's trophy to the uh, list of accolades this season. Up over the rise then for Lewis Hazlitt. Five seconds clear of Ethan Robinson now. And uh, may have thought coming into this race that the challenge would have been uh, more testing uh, problems for Jack Harney who's now trying to hold off Callum McVeigh means that it has been a very calm very assured very mature drive for such young uh, shoulders from Lewis Hazlitt round the final corner here at Nuts Corner to take the win at the Irish Kart GP in the Bambino category for 2022 Lewis Hazlitt wins ahead of Ethan Robinson in second place it's going to be third place on the line. It's going to be very, very close between Jack Harney and Callum McVeigh. And it is indeed going to be... Oh, they're very close on the line. It's McVeigh. McVeigh takes the final spot on the podium by two hundredths of a second ahead of Jack Harney. Fifth for Ryan Armstrong. Sixth for Amelia Dial. And seventh for Miles Purcell. But there's your winner. Cart number 33. Lewis Hazlitt is your winner here for the Bambino category at the 2022 Irish Art GP. Second place for Ethan Robinson. That's a really good result for Ethan Robinson. Back to back from disappointment earlier on in the weekend. And third place, what a run to the line that was from Callum McVeigh taking it on the line ahead of Jack Harney, uh, who you've got a feel for. And, uh, yeah, technical issues for the number 42, I think, has been plaguing that cart uh, since uh, the latter stages of heat number four. But sometimes that's racing, and Callum McVeigh takes that final spot on the podium. There we go. That is all of the non-gearbox classes done here today. Well done to all of our drivers there, uh, not just in the Bambino categories. Thank you to Unit Design, Quality Kitchens and Bedrooms for sponsoring it. Uh, we're going to move on to our final two races of the day, starting with the 125cc Gearbox Supercarts. One two five CC Supercart final here at uh, at Nuts Corner at Ulster Cart Club for 2022. Sponsored by Kennedy's uh, Nisa in Ballyboggy. Here is your grid. Dara Cormick starts on pole position. Danny Highland alongside on the front row. Ryan Magenis took a majestic uh, win in the fifth and final heat and is uh, rewarded with a second row start alongside Ross Witherow. And then you've got Ian Walsh and Kevin Shine on row three. Scott Greenaway and Mick Dunyon on row four. Peter Crossan starts the uh, on the ninth place on the grid on row number five. Drivers here racing for the Terry Wilkinson Memorial Trophy. And uh, big thanks as well once again to our uh, event sponsors, Pit Stop Motors uh, NI and Keith Wilkinson of Wilkinson Design for his sponsorship of both the Junior and Senior Driver of the Meeting Awards and uh, shout out as well to the chosen charity for this year's Irish Kart GP, Mary Curie. 
The ultimate race of the day then, and uh, if uh, the fifth heat of this competition is anything to go by, this could be very, very interesting indeed. Getting ready for the start of eight minutes plus one lap. Driver's just been told, let's get this in tram lines, get this race underway. Ready to go then, and away we go for the final in the 125cc gearbox supercarts. Dara Cormick, who uh, sat out in heat number five, starts from pole position, leads into the first corner. Looks like the 55 of Ross Witherow has had a good start as well. He's already up to second place. The wings and uh, blue bodywork on the number 55. Down the back straight they go for the first time, speeding towards uh, the rise. Is a good start for Dara Cormick, who took uh, heats one through four, already had pole position secured by the time he got to heat five, hence why he sat that one out on, uh, on a day where the racing has been so ferocious, so physical, you can absolutely understand that. Going for third place there uh, was Ian Walsh on Ryan Magenis. I think that has been done. Yes, it has. Uh, Ian Walsh in the number 39 up into third place there. Down the back straight they go once again. Dara Cormick in the red suit and the black helmet continuing to lead. Ross Witherow in second place. Witherow representation in both the 125 and 250 CC categories. This time the Genis looks like he's going to have a run on Ian Walsh down into turn number one. And Dara Cormick is not being allowed to get away with this. Peter Crossan's progressing as well. He's up to fifth place, having started from ninth. You see him in the back of shot there. 2.4 seconds behind the leader. And if it starts getting a little bit spicy up ahead, Crossan's going to be there. And Witherow's gone round the outside, side by side. Coming down the start straight. Cormick gets the drive, gets back into the... Look at Witherow here. And it's also been a warning to Cormick as well. But through change of lead, Ross Woodrow leads here at the Irish Car GP in the 125cc supercar. And what is Dara Cormick going to do about this? The race that he's taken part in has not been defeated so far this weekend. Ian Walsh and Ryan Magenis are still there as well. Ryan Magenis is the quickest driver out in circuit. 36.551 uh, is his personal best at the moment. Widrow, Cormac, Cormick, Walsh and Magenis. That is your 1, 2, 3, 4. Gap holding to Peter Cross and behind at 2.5. That's 2.5. Seven, I'd say. Nick Dunyan still there in sixth place. Annie Highland and Scott Greenaway completed the eight runners. Uh, unfortunately, just to mention, Kevin Shine uh, has not been able to take part in it. We did say that uh, the number 22 was having technical problems earlier, and uh, clearly they've not been able to fix it. And he's not been able to take the start here in the final. Oh, down the inside. Was that Magenis looking for a move? No, not quite able to do it. Not able to get through on Ian Walsh. Top four are pulling away further from Peter Crossan. I imagine it's going to be one of this four at the same time. Another one want to be off the uh, podium as well. Not all of them can get there. Ross Witherow continues to lead. We're not even halfway through uh, the time on this one. It's the 125cc gearbox final racing for... Terry Wilkinson Memorial Trophy and the honour of being the Irish Cart GP winner for 2022 in this category speed again as they come over the rise round the final corner tyres working so so hard Ross Witherow just continues to control this very nicely but here comes Dara Cormick up the inside having a look there trying to get through Witherow just about gives him enough room holds on to the position 
Ian Walsh is now the fastest driver out there. 36.491. Still sat there in third place. Ian Walsh, who had a, a sequence of second places through from heat two to heat four, didn't take part in uh, heat number five. Again, chose to save the cart, save the equipment for this final, this longer final, which we are now into the second half of it. Five minutes gone. Three minutes on the clock, plus one lap afterwards, and it's a short lap here at Nuts Corner. That's with about continue is just controlling this so so well. Is the 19-year-old current championship leader in the Ulster Kart Club standings for 125 CC gearbox carts. This is fourth pit here at the Irish Kart GP. Coming up against here a rapid Dara Cormick. As I mentioned again, has not been beaten in any race that he's taken part in so far this weekend. Five and a half minutes gone. Still a good number of laps to go here in this one. And Jenis looking to the outside once again uh, on Walsh. So evenly matched these four drivers. I feel that it's a, a mistake or a bit of genius to change the positions at the moment. Still plenty of time for that to happen. Peter Crossan still in uh, fourth place. And here comes Cormick again. This is a much better run this time from Dara Cormick towards the kink. Has he got it moved? Done. It's still side by side. <laughs> Witherow holds around the outside. Fantastic racing here in the supercarts. That time I th thought Dara Cormick had it done. But absolutely not, according to Ross Witherow. Still holding there in the lead. Six and a half minutes gone. The Jenis closing in on Walsh. Trying to go for third place, maybe. Over the start, finish the go once more. Witherow just continuing to hold the inside line. That's been an important tactic by him. Throughout the course of this race, not offering any opportunity into the first big braking zone to allow Cormick to get down the inside. If you're watching on live timing, you know there is uh, a little bit of a wobble for it at the moment, but I can assure you it is still with her out in the 55 ahead of the 49 and down the inside. Here comes Cormick. Going for the lead, he's got it. Oh, big move once again in the last corner. And this time it's Dara Cormick who's gone for it. Ian Walsh is going to go through as well into second place. But Jenny's trying to go around the outside for third. It's all gone wrong for Witherow. But it's not over yet. Witherow fighting back, trying to go around the outside for second place. Can he get back in? Yes, he can. What bravery from Ross Witherow. And he wants that lead back now. 20 seconds on the clock to go. Are they going to get across the line one more time? Is it going to be last lap this time round, or is it going to be two more? Witherow deep on the brakes there, trying to catch back up to Dara Cormick. We'll have the straight line now. They're going to get over the line. It's going to be very tight as to whether this is final lap or not. This is last lap. Last lap declared then. So this is the last chance for Ross Witherow. Oh, my goodness me. That is a huge accident for Ross Witherow has gone off at the first braking zone that is a really really big accident Dara Cormick is going to lead this race to the line Ian Walsh in second place Ryan Magenis in third place Peter Crossan is up into fourth place and on the final lap here at Knott's Corner I do hope that Ross Witherow is okay that was a very high speed accident but it's going to be Dara Cormick taking the race victory here in the 125 DC GB Supercart. And uh, Ian Walsh in second place, Ryan Magenis in third. Well, I do hope that Moss uh, Witherow is okay. That was, uh, that was a very, very high speed accident. And uh, obviously, we are, uh, we're not going to show any. Uh, shots down there until we know that everybody is okay and uh, we'll get ready then for the next race so there may be a bit of a pause in proceedings the last race of the weekend 250 cc supercarts final is next
Well, getting ready now for the final race of the weekend, the 250cc Gearbox Supercarts final here at the 2022 Irish Kart uh, GP, sponsored by Pitstop Motors NI. And this, the, uh, the 250 Gearbox final here is your grid, Alan Witherow on pole position, Colin Minnery alongside on the front row, Liam Fox and Brian Jones on row two, Colin Byrne and Warren Deary there on row number three. And Peter Deary and Colin Armstrong on row four. Richard Derrett uh, on row number five. And uh, this race, racing for the David Bell Memorial Trophy. Big thanks to uh, Fisher Motorsport, the Bell family, and Who's Your Tyres uh, for their uh, support. And uh, we should reflect as well. Well done to, uh, to Dara Cormick, who is the number 49, uh, the winner of the previous race, the 125. Uh, CC gearbox supercarts race comes the Irish kart GP uh, champion and uh, as soon as we know news uh, regards the uh, condition of the drivers involved and personnel involved in the incident on that last lap we will uh, let you know but, uh, naturally I think we can expect Slight pause in proceedings here before we get the 250 uh, race underway. There's a number 17 of Scott Greenaway, which uh, was meant to be in this. Uh, no, apologies. No, of course, is in the uh, in the 125s and uh, raced home to seventh place. There is your 250cc uh, grid. And uh, what a way to finish things off here this weekend uh, at uh, Nuts Corner. And also, what a way to uh, to raise some fantastic funds for uh, Marie Curie. I've just been uh, made aware that uh, £1,500 has been raised by everybody here at uh, Nuts Corner. So thank you very much for everyone uh, for your generosity and uh, raising £1,500 for Marie Curie. And if uh, you would like to donate as well, there are uh, the buckets and donation points uh, around the paddock that you can uh, pop your donations in. Thank you again for your continued support. And uh, also for you at home, if you enjoyed uh, the coverage, do make sure that you've given a subscribe to Alpha Life. More to come over the next few weeks. If you enjoyed the commentary, at Double Dash. MM across your social media uh, networks. And uh, yeah, big thanks to everyone who's uh, taken part this weekend. We've had 118 entrants competing over the last two days here at Nuts Corner. And uh, just joining us for the final race, just under a, a slight pause in proceedings here after uh, an incident at the end of the 125 cc gearbox supercarts race and uh, obviously just waiting until uh, everything is clear and safe to go before we uh, commence with the 250 uh, cc race there is the number 83 that we saw in great action earlier colin mcmaneri it's definitely going to be a factor uh, in this race the 65 year old from bangor liam fox as well multiple Irish champion and uh, multiple GP titles over the years. There's the number 16 of Peter Deary and the 18 of Warren Deary as well. Definitely tell those two together with the uh, yellow and red uh, liveries. Number 42 of Colin Byrne, three-time Irish 125cc champion, returning after a few years away here in 2022 driver from County Kildare, Brian Jones as well, he was very strong in the final heats before uh, this final, 34 year old, uh, based in Scarva, but uh, but taken both heats as I remind myself so far today, it was a 250 class winner here in the Irish Kart GP two years ago and has won two uh, a 125cc title, so he knows what these this race is about. And 
but uh, starting from fourth on the grid, I don't think we'll bother him too much based on the form that we've seen number 43 have so far today. Uh, just a reminder of the victories from the heat so far. Two for Brian Jones, both here today. Uh, heat number four and heat number five. Alan Witherow had two yesterday in heat number two and heat number three. Colin Maneri uh, took the other one, which was heat number one at the start of the weekend. The RGP cart at the front there of Alan Witherow. Liam Fox there in the number three. So Alan looking calm at the moment there. Looking to hold on to that plate and has a great opportunity to do so here from uh, pole position. Second in the uh, race earlier this afternoon for heat number five. Had an issue in heat number four. We know the pace is in that cart to win this race, which will be eight minutes plus one lap. Colin Byrne there. Again, that cart has had some good pace so far today. Hasn't always had the best of luck, but as we've been mentioning, these final races heats are all about setting the grid they don't influence the final result that all gets decided in this one-off race to uh to decide who will be the irish cart gp champion keep your uh, comments coming in hello to uh aaron who's uh cheering on some of our drivers here uh today as we say, as soon as we've uh, got any news here in the commentary position, uh, official news, obviously we don't want to uh, speculate uh, on things. We will let you know uh, how things are. We're just under pause here, uh, waiting for the tracks to be cleared, uh, ready to race. Preparations going on as well. It's final. Uh, oil mixture and fuel mixture being put in there do stick around for this race as I say we're just having this pause until uh, we've got things ready to go and uh, Seen some spectacular races from the 250s so far today. If you've uh, if you weren't around for them earlier, very much is a treat to be finishing uh, this brilliant Irish Kart GP 2022 race meeting this weekend. I do hope you've enjoyed it. It's great to be having the Alpha Live team here at Nuts Corner. And uh, we're going to have a short pause here and have a look at the driver parade from this morning.
Welcome back, everybody, to live coverage here at Nuts Corner for the 2022 Irish Kart GP. Very good news that I've heard uh, in my ear confirmed uh, from trackside that Ross Witherow walked away uh, from that huge, huge off that he had on the last lap of the 125cc uh, race. Walked away to one of our camera op positions, uh, has been uh, taken into the ambulance for uh, medical checks. Uh, but was able to walk away unassisted uh, from that incident, which, which is frankly remarkable, considering the uh, the speed that he went off. Testament to uh, the safety of these carts and also the circuit and the fast response by everyone here at uh, Nuts Corner. Big thanks to our marshals, of course. Could not go racing without them. And we have one more race to go here this weekend. It is the 250cc uh, Supercarts final. And once again, eight minutes plus one lap for the fastest machinery here this weekend. And uh, one race to decide who will be the 2022 Irish Kart GP champion in this category. We thanks to Fisher Motorsport, the Bell family and Hoosier Tires for their support. This race will also decide who wins the David Bell Memorial Trophy. And we are green and racing. Here we go, down into turn number one and it looks like Colin Maneri has got a very good start here takes the lead away from Alan Witherow on the first run down to uh, the first breaking zone Brian Jones has had a good start as well in fact Brian Jones is already on the attack and taking second place away from Alan Witherow well this is the form that we've seen Brian Jones in today has got through Brian Jones is down the inside going for the move for the lead has taken it oh what a move there by Brian Jones on the brakes but here comes Colin Maneri back round the outside what a start to this race Maneri retakes the lead down into the braking zone for lap number two round the outside oh my goodness me what a sequence of corners there for Brian Jones he very much is in the mood and the number 43 leads Well, this is what we saw in heat number five, that Brian Jones just stepped it up a notch, had to fight from the second row of the grid. Can anybody stop that number 43 cart now? Winner two years ago, mechanical flag out. Is that a mechanical flag out for Colin McNary? McNary, I think it was. I think the 83 was being shown the black and orange flag there and if that is the case that is going to be Colin Maneri out of this GP final trying to see what is wrong perhaps with the 83 God, to be honest they're going at such speed you can't uh, tell what is wrong if it was the 83 so maybe a little bit of damage to the rear wing perhaps at the start finish nothing that time but Brian Jones has just bolted away. He is gone. Two and a half seconds is the lead now for the champion from two years ago, looking to reclaim his title in 2022. Alan Witherow looking to try to get back through. We've seen some tight moves here so far this weekend. We saw contact between Maneri and Liam Fox on the run along the back straights in, uh, in one of the earlier heats. Two and a half minutes of this final to go. Or oh, two, two and a half minutes of the final gone, I should say. Liam Fox there in third place. Uh, looks like we've had problems for Warren Deary. I think Warren Deary is out of the race. Colin Armstrong has also not taken the start. Peter Deary and Colin Byrne are having a good scrap for fifth place. And oh, down the inside, big move from Alan Witherow, gets it stopped and gets by Colin, Ma Colin Maneri for second place. Liam Fox will have had a good sight of that. And away is the move that Liam Fox tried to do uh, earlier on in the heat and wasn't quite able to uh, successful off. But uh, big few, few laps now for Alan Witherow. 4.3 seconds is the gap to Brian Jones. Still a good number of minutes to go in this race. Alan Witherow, the current RGP plate holder, doesn't want to give that up. Four point two two eight 
that time around. The pace is pretty even. 34.1 for Brian Jones, 34.2 for Witherow. Still Maneri in third. I've not seen any repeat showing of the uh, mechanical flag. I'm wondering whether it was the 83. It might have been the 18. Because uh, we know that that car has been pulled in and off the road. I'm sure if there was some form of issue that uh, the number 83 did it's coming for, there will be a continuous showing uh, of such a signal. Alan Witherow continuing to circulate in second place. A tad quicker than Brian Jones last time around, but not to the kind of rate uh, that you would say that Brian Jones's lead would be under threat. Four and a half minutes gone as a check over to see where the competition is. Widerow has dropped uh, Maneri now. In Fox, not quite able to have the pace at the moment that we saw uh, in one of, in some of the earlier races. Gave him a trio of second places across the course of the weekend so far. Peter Deary and uh, Colin, Colin Burns still having... Oh, my goodness, was that a big moment there for Alan Witherow? I think he may well have been. Just about got it all uh, pulled up together. The speed that these carts go at, it is frightening at times. Uh, I, think, uh, I think our cameramen need a raise for uh, some of the shots that they've been able to get today. Especially a, a, an extra comfy seat on the, uh, on the, on the flight back from uh, Northern Ireland. There's Liam Fox, number three, in fourth place at the moment, though. Appeared in this race over 23 times, uh, has Liam Fox. Big back marker just being uh, lapped there. That was Peter Deary in the number 16. I think Colin Byrne's going to go down uh, a lap as well. Great to have Colin Byrne. Back racing here at Nuts Corner. Thumbs up there from uh, the number 42. It's not quite going to be Alan Burns' year. Over six minutes of this race gone. Brian Jones in full control of it. He's been holding the lead at over four seconds ahead of Alan Witherow. Now 4.2 seconds. Just needs to keep circulating. Not having any problems. And the body language of the car looking good, looking calm, looking composed. Had to bounce back from disappointment so far this weekend. There's a no score in race number one. Really had a lot of work to do uh, overnight. Not as many points on the board as Brian would have liked, but what a response it's been here on Sunday. Two heat wins so far. Into the final minute on time now. It's a three laps at most to go uh, for Brian Jones to reclaim his 250cc GP title. It'll be his fourth Irish Kart GP title across all the different classes. Second here in the 250s. 4.8 seconds now the gap for Jones ahead of Witherow. Maneri and Fox still going over third place. There is Maneri very briefly in the number 83. Witherow checking his own situation. See that he's comfortably in second place at the moment. With the gap up to Brian Jones. It's uh, probably not worth Going fully out for the attack here. Just checking whether it is the last lap here or not. Yes, it is. So Brian Jones. It's a mere 30 seconds or so from reclaiming that title, which he lost 12 months ago here in the 250cc gearbox race. It's retake the David Bell Memorial Trophy as well. What a Sunday. What a response after a difficult day yesterday in the final race here at the 2022 Irish Kart GP. It is Brian Jones who becomes a two-time winner 
in the 250cc gearbox supercars final reclaims his title and the david bell memorial trophy the record books will show a 7.86 second win over alan witherow uh, with a brave defense there from alan witherow in the end second place for the current igp on our former igp plate holder liam fox finishes uh, just behind Colin Maneri in the end. So Colin Maneri finishes in third, fourth for Liam Fox. Colin Byrne, Colin Byrne there in fifth place. Peter Deary in sixth. And Warren Deary was a retirement from that race. But there is your winner, Brian Jones, cart number 43, with a brilliant performance and a clean sweep here at Nuts Corner on Sunday. Three races, three victories, and uh, a return to P1 first time since 2020 shake of hands there congratulations well done to all of our 250 cc uh, gearbox drivers uh, a different breed uh, they are indeed and uh, fantastic to see them here at nuts corner no oh, well there uh, from uh, from alan witherow but i'm sure he'll be back for more racing in future years and with that brings an end to our racing coverage uh, and our racing action here today at Nuts Corner. Big thanks to Ulster uh, Karting Club for uh, all their efforts uh, in putting on this fantastic event. I do hope you've enjoyed it at home. Thank you to all of you at home for your support. Big thanks to Pit Stop Motors NI for uh, their overall uh, sponsoring of the competition and Wilkinson Design for uh, sponsoring the junior and senior drivers of the meeting to uh, check out the uh, Ulster Kart Club Facebook page with the details on that. And one last final time through uh, the run-through of all of our class sponsors, Unit Design, Quality Kitchens and Bedrooms, KKC Kart Components, RPM Racing Engines, Garden of Farm Equipment, James Irvine Monumental Sculptors, Nuts Corner Circuit, Ray Sawmills, Stewart's Painting and Decorating, Kennedy's Nisa Ballyboggy, and the Bell Fisher and Hoosier Tyre company along with Fisher Motorsport. Big thanks to the Alpha Live crew and all of their uh, efforts and hard work bringing the kit and everything over from uh, England into Northern Ireland this weekend. And uh, that's about it. Do give us a subscribe at Alpha Live if you enjoyed the coverage at Double Dash MM if you enjoyed the commentary. And uh, next weekend we'll be at Shennington for the finale of the Super One Karting Championship. Do hope you can join us for that. For now, though, thank you for joining us and enjoy the rest of your Sunday. Bye-bye.